Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you so much. Great. Um, let us begin with uh, expectations for this meeting. What are your expectations? What do you expect? What are you expecting from our meeting today? Praise the Lord, Senior Bishop. Amen. Oh, well, I'm expecting to mm. get today. I'm really expecting to find solutions to my questions that have that have really been disturbing me for quite a long time now. That is why I requested for the specific topics that okay. you missed. Yes. Yeah, so. Amen. Thank you so much. <laughs> so you are eagerly looking forward to answers to your questions yeah that is powerful that is very powerful great thank you so much uh-huh that is uh see uh that is uh alice not alice eunice yeah that is eunice okay thank you so much eunice uh-huh anybody else who wants to share their expectations for today Me too, Pastor. Mm -hmm. um, I expect to get answers to those questions as well because I've wanted to know for a while mm -hmm. and uh, to gain knowledge on the other areas as well. Amen. Amen. So you can't wait to get into those topics and get some uh, answers and understanding, yeah? Yes, Bishop. That is Marjorie. All right. Marjorie, you are in uh, Toronto, is that correct? Brampton, Ontario. Yeah? I can't hear you. Uh, okay. All right, thank you so Brampton, much. Alice Ontario, and yeah. Marjorie. Uh, Meke, what are your expectations today? Mr. Meke? I mean, like to share with us your expectations. I mean, Senior Bishop, I'm just looking forward to hear what is going to be said today. And I wanted to ask, uh, are we allowed to suggest the now or maybe later after the fellowship? What would you like to suggest? I wanted to suggest if maybe we can discuss on the challenges that the youth are facing and maybe how to overcome it if it's possible challenges faced by that, the youth right? yeah that the youth are facing and how to overcome perhaps you can discuss it one of the good days okay how to overcome challenges faced by the youth all right thank you so much that's a good one let's see i hope yes. we, we can have uh, time to, to 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 get into that how to overcome yes uh are there uh, is there any particular challenge um that you have in mind or you want people to have the opportunity to share their particular challenge, challenges? No, I, I just want as you, we as youth mm -hmm. to, uh, to point out maybe the challenges that we are facing and how to overcome it. It's just a suggestion. All right, thank you so much. All right, not a problem at all. Mm -hmm. Not a problem at all. All suggestions are welcome. If we have time, we delve into it. If we don't have time, uh, then we can schedule it for the next fellowship. That's not a problem. Yes, Senior all. Bishop, we can do it one of the days. Not today's topic, we can do it one of the days. Amen. All right. Thank you mm -hmm. so much uh, for your input. Uh, Pastor Richard, do you have any suggestions for, I mean, not suggestion, but expectation? I hope you can hear me. Justina, did you want to speak? Okay, let me welcome Sister Esther Blessing, Nape Oshali, and Pastor Saki uh, for joining us. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Blessed Senior Bishop. Amen. We have just begun and we are sharing our expectations. In the next few minutes, we are just sharing our expectations for our meeting today. What do you, what are you looking forward to in our fellowship today? So feel free.
feel free to share with us. Don't leave me hanging here on my own. This is our fellowship. Uh, please share with us, Sister Esther Blessing, if you have any. Saki Feresiano, welcome. Do you have any expectations to share? All right. You are all leaving me alone here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yes, Sister Justina. Yes, Blessed Bishop. I'm ready to hear what you are going to run today. Amen. <laughs> Good. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. So our topics for today. Uh, our topics for today are, as we have said on the group, uh, according to the suggestion for from uh, Eunice, is that we handle number one. Let's see here. Eunice suggested we handle number one. Um, how children out of wedlock affect marriage. Yeah. And then number two, that is family planning in marriage. And number three, how do I know whom to marry? And number four, properties and marriage. Yeah. Okay, so let us begin with um the first one, how children out of wedlock affect marriage. Let me see. Does anybody have a question that you want us to handle in this, um, in this topic for the next uh, hour or so on children out of wedlock and how they affect marriage? Is there one particular issue concerning this topic you want us to discuss before we, we begin? Anybody? Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't be afraid. Well, uh -huh. I said, okay, I don't know, but uh, uh -huh. maybe you can consider if maybe a child is sick or they're suffering from a certain deficiency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. Okay. So when a child is when a child is ill, has a certain illness, or born with a certain congenital condition, yeah, deficiency, whether it's yeah cleft leaf palate or heart disease or lung disease or autoimmune disease or whatever. All right. Okay. I think uh, cerebral, palsy. Or cerebral palsy, that's right. That's right. And I think if we are going to, 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 to do justice to the, to the topic on how um, children out of wedlock affect marriage, and, and, and you know, we are now handling this topic as um, as singles, right? And I'm handling this topic as singles before we get into marriage, correct? So we are not discussing it as married couples who are already in, uh, in holy matrimony. So we are discussing this as singles from the outset and see how, uh, what are the projections? How does it look like? <clears throat> or what are the things that we need to consider when, uh, when we are thinking of, um, should we encounter ourselves being in a, should, should we find ourselves in a, in a relationship where uh, the, the person we are going to marry is having children or probably uh, you yourself have children? Yeah. So two, two angles there. Uh, what if my uh, future husband or future wife is the one who has children? How should I approach this situation? Or uh, what if I am the one who has children? How should I approach this situation or on the other hand probably you are not yet in a relationship and the person who's pursuing you already has children out of wedlock yeah uh, or probably you are the one pursuing somebody and you are the one who has children out of wedlock so how do we uh, handle uh, this how do we approach this situation and to really get a, a good understanding of that or for us to to, to carefully approach this topic we should first deal with uh, the, the effects of sexual immorality, yeah? How sexual immorality affects 
marriage. Yeah, sexual immorality out of out of wedlock before marriage. I mean, not that there should be sexual immorality in marriage, but just uh, how sexual, uh, how being uh, sexually, um, what's the word, active before marriage affects your future marriage. And with that, uh, we will look at uh, the book of uh, Thessalonians. The book of Thess Thessalonians. And as I go to the book of Thessalonians, I have a question for you guys. All right. I hope you are not going to be quiet on me today. I hope. No, 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 please. Yeah, because we are here to fellowship. Please go ahead, uh, Blessed Senior Bishop. Yes, we are here to fellowship. Uh, Amen. I'll, I'll be very much happy to, to speak by myself, but I don't want to do that. I want us to fellowship so that we can uh, have a is it dialogue. Let us have a dialogue. Amen. Okay, so the first question is. Uh, to you, what are the what do you think are the dangers of sexual immorality? Uh, when when singles engage in sexual immorality, sex before marriage, what do you think are those uh, are the dangers of of sex before marriage? There you go. What do you think are the dangers of sex before marriage? And anybody, please. Well, um, uh, according to me, I think mm -hmm. sexual immorality leads to, um, you know, when you find yourself in immorality, then the Lord withdraws his, all his goodness from you. Mm -hmm. And um, the second one can be, um, you can be prone to so many diseases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the HIV and AIDS, yeah, the STIs. And, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So you are saying that... Um there is risk of uh, sexually transmitted diseases. And what was yeah. the first point? The Lord withdraws his goodness mm -hmm. from you. Amen. Yeah. The Lord withdraws his goodness from, that's very true. Mm -hmm. Anybody else who want to contribute to that? Or if you want to add more uh, to expound on that, uh, Sister Eunice. You are uh, prone to soul ties. Sorry? You are prone to soul ties. Yes, prone to soul ties. That's right. Uh huh. Yes, and, please continue. Oh, uh -huh. Catherine, are you continuing? Yes. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so with soul ties, um, you basically inherit all his characters, okay. attributes that he has in him. Mm -hmm. So, whether good or bad, mm -hmm. you carry them on mm -hmm. with you, and then you'll have to undergo deliverance yeah and obviously if you have engaged in sex before marriage mm -hmm. um as I, is it Eunice who has stated that you know we we know from david's story mm -hmm. the heavens close on you yeah and then you have soul ties on top of that mm -hmm. um so and the diseases but yeah soul ties i find is the major yes. disruption of like your whole life that's right and 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 you say you you you, you inherit it's like you you, you load yourself yeah yeah you <laughs> basically loading take, yourself with the uh -huh. you basically take everything about mm -hmm. that person you know yeah. um so whether he has anger issues he has mm -hmm. his bipolar <laughs> i don't know all these um evil characters that he has just gets deposited into you probably someone someone is trying to is struggling with understanding how mm -hmm. is it that um, uh, engaging in sexual intimacy before marriage uh, leads to such a very <laughs> uh, complicated scenario where you are inheriting i mean you are you're, you're drawing from somebody else uh, their persona character mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Would you, would you like to get a bit deeper into that? I mean, or somebody. Uh, let's explore that aspect uh, because that's that's something that is. Uh -huh. Sorry, is that Eunice speaking? Yes. Okay. Another effect of sexual yes. morality in some cases it it leads to unwanted pregnancies in marriage. Mm -hmm. Unwanted pregnancies. 
Now, children are not a curse, isn't it? It's not a curse to have a child, yeah? No, but yeah. to have children outside of the covenant of marriage, that is, that is not God's design. That's not God's will for us, yeah? It's not God's will for us. So, yes, sexual, immor sexual immorality, sex before marriage, is a violation of God's covenant. It's a violation of God's plan. It's a violation of God's desire for humanity. And as we talked about the other time concerning uh, our identity, we said at the very core of our identity as human beings, uh, the way God created us, uh, he designed that we be male and female. And you see that when we violate, when we violate um, that, 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 that identity, when we violate our identity, we do it by engaging in things like sexual immorality. It's really an assault against God's nature, against God's creation, against God's design, against the image of God. Because as, as men, as human beings, we carry the divine image of God in us, right? And so engaging in sexual immorality, we are violating that. And scripture says, and the two shall become one. And part of that oneness that the Bible talks about is this physical oneness, this becoming uh, one in body and one in spirit. And, and it is true when, you, when one engages in sexual immorality or sex before marriage, and then they find that's where this uh, idea of soul ties come in because now you are tying yourself to this person. You are becoming one with this person. Second Corinthians chapter 6 says, um, when you, when, you, when you engage in sexual activity with a prostitute, it's like becoming one with the prostitute. Yeah? And that's why enhance the dangers of, of building all these soul ties. So when you sleep with this person, you sleep with the other person, uh, you are tying yourself to them spiritually, and then they, 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 they violate that purity, that honor, that sacredness about you that God had initially uh, created. Hallelujah. I think uh, Kathleen wanted to say something. She, she had not finished the point, yeah? Pastor Catherine. I don't even know where I was now. <laughs> you're talking about um, soul ties and you're talking about um, uh, withdrawing, withdrawing, being withdrawn from the goodness of the Lord. No, I think the goodness of the Lord was Eunice's point. But um, mm -hmm. I know you have closed heavens. We learned that yeah. from David's example mm -hmm. um, that when he engaged in, you know, sexual sin, mm -hmm. The Lord literally just stopped talking to him, stopped communicating yeah. from with him. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when everything, above everything, as a Christian, if you have closed heavens, then mm -hmm. you're literally in the devil's field. <laughs> That's it. To be utilized as he wishes. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I think soul ties is just the the way you have said that. You know, when one sleeps with another before mm -hmm. marriage, you become one. So yeah. you basically just inherit all his attributes, his character, and they mess you up. <laughs> that, that's right. And, 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 you know, when, when a woman, when a young girl, or even, a, yeah, when a young girl is molested by whoever, parents or siblings or strangers, you realize that in medicine, there is such a phenomenon that when a young girl is molested at a young age, uh, it affects her so deeply, she will never have a normal life again, and except intervention, except she seeks intervention, if, except if she seeks help. Yeah? Uh, it disturbs her so much. Some people try to, um, uh, to, to bring it together with uh, fibromyalgia, which is... Uh, pain of unknown etiology that some women experience. Uh, it is said that probably that is one of the result of, um, uh, of molestation during childhood. So there are just a lot of, uh, because the, the soul is so violated, it's so uh, destroyed, uh, the woman's experience is never ever the same again. Some of them suffer from, uh, it is said, they try to black out the, uh, the experience and in trying to do that, then it leads them to a place of um, 
denial and trying to bury all these experiences that they had gone through. But then eventually it ends up affecting them uh, in, a, in a way where they don't know why they are behaving in a certain manner uh, that, that is so um, destructive, very destructive ways. Uh, but it's because of that deep-seated hurt and violation that they had experienced prior. And, and really, uh, whether sexual encounter was, was uh, willful or not willful, it does violate the spirit. And, and you never walk away the same again. There is this experience that remains with you uh, of, uh, of having encountered all these people that uh, you, uh, uh, you, you had come into contact with. And it will affect every future relationship that you have, except, as uh, Pastor Kerthin said, you seek, uh, except the Lord delivers you, except you are delivered from, from it. And, and we see that the world's, the world's uh, ways are such that they encourage a lot of indulgence, uh, people to do whatever they want uh, in hope that, uh, just a moment. Mm -hmm. In hope that people get whatever they want. So they think by getting whatever you want, doing whatever you want, it's true freedom, but it is not. Uh, sexual immorality is not freedom. It's actually, you're really just tying yourself, tying yourself and uh, loading yourself with so much baggage. And when you get into marriage, it, it will be too, it's very complicated too. It'll be very, very complicated to untangle. Um, and your husband will, as a, as a woman, your husband will be definitely uh, uh, affected. Or as a, as, a, as a man, your wife will definitely be affected, even though you think it's just things that happened in the past. Okay, I wanted to read this scripture for 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, from verse 3. It says, it is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God, and that in this manner no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins as we told you and warned you before. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. And so we see that God's initial design, God's will, God's desire for mankind uh, is that we be pure sexually. Amen? God wants us to be pure sexually, unviolated, undisturbed, uh, holy, righteous in our uh, 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 being, physically and spiritually, right? And that's why you find that in Genesis chapter 2, or is it Genesis chapter 1, uh, when the Lord says, uh, men and women were naked and unashamed, when we go there, let's go there quickly, it says, Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Let me read it here. All right. Then the, then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united. Uh, other scripture says cleave uh, or cling to his wife, and they became, they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. So here's a question for you guys. What do you think the Bible means when it says, and they felt no shame? What do you think is included in that shame? What shame is the Bible talking about? What shame, that's a question, what shame is Genesis 2, Lust. 25 talking about mm -hmm. last, okay. And perversion, yes. Thank you so much. That's Sister Abby. Uh huh. What shame is Genesis? <clears throat> you said last perversion, all right. Anybody else to add to this? Come on, guys. 
last per version you know um anytime you you are naked you are embarrassed mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> you have been exposed mm -hmm. so it's like there's a covering you know mm -hmm. yes when you are within the covenant of god so mm -hmm. you don't feel that embarrassment or shame yes i don't so I, i'm trying to look for the word in my head <laughs> please do find it do find it find it find it <laughs> So you're saying there is no embarrassment? Mm -hmm. It's embarrassment and shame. Um, yes. Emba embarrassment about what? We want to get to that uh, question to understand. Uh -huh. Sorry? You are naked. So that brings um, shame and embarrassment. Uh -huh. And now we, are, we, we want to find out why, why, why would it be, why, why would there be circumstances what are those circumstances that would lead to embarrassment? What is it that could cause an embarrassment? We can talk of guilt. Shame. Huh? Guilt? We can talk guilt, yeah. Okay, guilty about what, for example? <laughs> about, uh, no, about what you've done, the wrong thing that you've done. Like what? Taking five cents <laughs> from the shop? Or eating mommy's sweets, or what? what the guilt they about like, what? They sinned against God, and so they mm -hmm. you are they're literally they were they're supposed to be you know feeling ashamed of what they did, and um, yeah. What are yeah, some of those things? What are some of those things that can result in guilt and shame and embarrassment? <laughs> disobedience. Yes, disobedience. In matters of disobedience, in matters of because we see that he says they were naked and unashamed, meaning they were exposed. Yeah, the, the covering was off. Yeah, and here is Adam and Eve in intimacy. Intimacy, they see into each other, they are knowing one another. Bible says. The Bible uses the word um, intimacy to describe uh, sexual intercourse. The Bible uses the word um, uh, uh, knowledge. It says, and Adam knew his wife to describe uh, the, 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 this knowledge of, uh, yeah, of, uh, of, of intercourse. And, and so you see the cover is taken off, as uh, Pastor Catherine was saying. So the, the only covering the head, of course, was the glory of the Lord. But here they are, naked before one another, and they are not ashamed. They are not embarrassed, right? They are not feeling guilty. They are not, uh, uh, yes, they are not feeling exposed. They are exposed, but they don't feel the shame of exposure. And then, and then my question was, what shame is that? What shame, what embarrassment is it? What is it that one can do that Adam and Eve could have done would lead them to feeling ashamed, embarrassed, guilty, and somebody said, "Well, disobedience um, could lead okay. to." Uh -huh. Yes, please. Amen. Amen. Yes, can I? Can I? Can I? Uh, I believe it can yes. also be. Uh, since Bishop just clarified that question, magnified that question even better, mm -hmm. sexual sin. You see mm -hmm. that if you have sexual sin with a different person, with another partner, and then you come to your original partner now, yes. um, and then if you if you two have to unmask or get into intimacy, mm -hmm. there will be that guilt and that shame mm -hmm. um, due to the fact that I have done sexual immoral uh, activities with another person yeah. now coming here to my partner now again we are exposing each other or vice versa whereby you expose your body to somebody that is not your significant other or you are not married to or you yes. are not uh, in, in 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 unity unified by god with so mm -hmm. you feel that shame yes and and and, and, and I, don't, I, I just don't know how to put them in bullet points now i i hear you saying sexual immorality uh, yes, it's, 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 uh, it's the one thing that leads to 
leads to shame, yeah, and embarrassment because you have uh, violated the the covenant of uh, exclusivity. Is that is that right? That according to God's yes. design, it should be a man and his wife in holy matrimony, right? Mm -hmm. One man, one woman, not one man, two women, or one woman and three men, or such things, because then in, in that sense, you find you are not exclusive. There is no exclusivity. You sleep with one person, and then you're going to sleep with another person, and then you're going to sleep with another person, and as it were, your heart is divided. There is no exclusivity. Of course, there is no commitment. Yeah? And, and, and there is shame in that. There is shame. It is a shameful act. It is a shameful thing because then that is equated to uh, idolatry. The Bible uses uh, yeah. sexual immorality to describe idolatry because they, they, they operate on the same level. Idolatry leads to immorality. Immorality is the heart of idolatry. Can I say something, please? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you just asked. Uh, maybe you've like, for example, I've fallen. No, I don't want to use my example. Someone has fallen into sexual sin, yes. and uh, they're supposed to be feeling ashamed. Okay. So you're asking, what is it that should make them feel ashamed? Uh, right. I'm, I'm saying, what is the source of that shame? Oh, the source of that shame. Yes, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm not saying that we should uh, shame people who are involved in sexual immorality. No, I'm saying when you look at the scriptures and it's saying that Adam and Eve were not ashamed, then the question is, why would they be ashamed? In other words, what is it that could lead somebody to being ashamed? Yeah, when you are naked. Uh, with your spouse in holy matrimony. And so we are grappling with the question to understand what are those things that we could then avoid, that we should then avoid in, in order to avoid uh, shame in, uh, uh, in, in holy matrimony, in marriage, right? So we are just assessing, analyzing, uh, and understanding the scripture and not saying that uh, people must be uh, ne necessarily be ashamed and um, we know that the blood of Jesus is has come to deliver us to save us from sin wipe our sins away uh, wash us clean give us a new plate and allow us to move beyond our sins yeah? to overcome our sins to be triumphant uh, to help us to glorify God uh, that, is, that is well established uh, but unless, until you come there, until you come to that place where the, the, where, where the Lord Jesus has saved you and delivered you, then the acts, there are acts that uh, one does that lead to what the Bible calls uh, shame. All right. So we were examining Genesis chapter 2, verse 25, the shame that... Uh, comes as a result of um, or the shame, the, 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 what, the, the, the activities that could lead to shame in marriage, that could lead to uh, shame and embarrassment, as somebody put it, had put it. Okay, what does uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 say? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, we are still answering the question of our children uh, out of wedlock. But we just want first to look at the issue of uh, sexual immorality before we then uh, go over to the issue of uh, sex before, I mean, uh, children outside of wedlock, um, so that that can help us to navigate ourselves well. I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, verse 9, yeah? Uh, right. From 18. Mm -hmm. Sexual immorality. Okay. It actually starts from verse 12. Yes. Okay. We'll start from verse um, uh, 9. Right. Okay. Brother uh, Pastor Saki, do you mind to read for us um, from verse 8 here? Second, First Corinthians chapter 6, from verse 8 to the end.
Can you hear me? Yes, it is show. So we start from verse, verse eight, yeah? Yeah. Instead, you yourselves, you yourselves cheat and do wrong. And you do this to your brothers and sisters. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor slanderers, nor uh, swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. It's 11. Mm -hmm. And that is what some of you were, but you were washed. You were sanctified, you were uh, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. Sexual immorality, verse 12. I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything but I will not be mastered by anything. You say, food for the stomach and stomach for the food. And God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead. And he will rise us all also. Do you... Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Verse 18, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are, a temple, are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at the price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Amen. 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 So, so you can see the, 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 the source of the shame that, uh, that would lead to one being ashamed because if, if we, when, when a person engages in sexual immorality, then look here, it says, you are uniting yourself with somebody else, <clears throat> right? Divided heart, of course. That is the definition of uh, idolatry. And then sinning against one's body because God designed that we be holy, pure, righteous uh, in our bodies and in our spirits. And engaging in sexual immorality is then going against that, against the design of the creator. Um, and then he says, uh, there is no kingdom of God for such a person, for such a, a human being. And, that is, and the Bible has quite so many uh, descriptions, uh, has so much to say about uh, the different descriptions on sexual immorality. The Bible describes it in very, very many terms. You find um, sexual immorality uh, can be described as impurity, also as debauchery. Um, and then orgies, uh, and those are all different descriptions of uh, sexual immorality. And the Lord says we should flee from this. We should be separate from this. Hallelujah. The dangers of sexual immorality. Now we know that if we do not uh, separate from those, then uh, the result of sexual immorality is death. However, Christ Jesus came in so that we do not have to die, but instead we can take his sacrifice, we can believe in him, and then his sacrificial death on the cross would pay for 
our sins. Yet, the warning still remains, flee from sexual immorality because the dangers of sexual immorality uh, are still the same. Death and violation against God's uh, righteousness, against the holiness of God. Okay. How, what does this have to do with children? Now, you see, having children uh, is not uh, uh, the problems that one would experience in marriage as a result of having children. Children are not the, are not, is not the place where the problems begin. Amen? Uh, children are not the source of the problem or the challenge that any one person is going to experience in marriage when they marry somebody who has children or when you are the one who has children and you are marrying somebody who doesn't have children. So children are not the place where the problems are going to begin. The problem begins with immorality. Amen? I hope you guys uh, understand the point I'm making there. That there will be issues to grapple with, to struggle with, to handle when you get married. Should you marry somebody who uh, has children out of uh, wedlock? But just remember the problems, the, 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 the crooks of the problems that you are going to, that, that any one person is going to experience in marriage. The problem will not or does not begin with the children because children are just a result. They are just a consequence of activities, of the sexual activities that the, that, 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 that the party that has children has been involved in. Now, there are different parties, yeah? Somebody can have children uh, out of um, uh, an incident of uh, you know, rape, right? Somebody can have children out of an incident of uh, marriage. Maybe they were divorced before and then their spouses have died. Or uh, their spouses have died uh, before they didn't divorce. They had a very good marriage and their spouses have died. And now uh, you happen, somebody happens now to, uh, to, 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 to be espoused to this person. Of course, of course in such a situation, uh, the, the spouse or the, the woman whose husband has died and is now getting married to somebody else, those children are out of, out of immorality. Right, so there are, there are different scenarios. There are, the situations are different. Um, uh, so for one who has been married, the spouse has died, and now you are about to marry somebody else. Uh, there is no, there is no immorality there. There is no foul play. Uh, but it and that's different, of course, from somebody who has uh, been engaged in orgies and parties, wild parties, one night stands, and all these things. Uh, brother from church uh, invited you for coffee, and then you ended up. In sexual immorality. Those are those are different uh, situations. Uh, and what are some of those uh, um, uh, challenges then? What are some of those challenges then that one would experience if uh, the, the person that they want to marry has children? If the person they want to marry has children. Before I give my two cents on that, let me ask your input. What do you think are the challenges? Uh, some of the challenges of having a blended marriage. They call it a blended marriage. When you have, um, when you are marrying somebody who already has children, it's called a blended marriage. All right. So, what do you think? Maybe some of us were born in blended marriages. Um, but uh, what what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? What have you seen? Are the challenges that some friends and colleagues and siblings have uh, fallen into, have found themselves in when they married people with children? Anybody? Neglection. Um, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry? I think there's neglection to the child and sometimes even to the mother. I don't know. <laughs> neglect, neglect of children? Yeah. Uh-huh. That's true. Uh-huh. Anybody else? Yes, would you like to add to that? Neglect of children. Um, this is this is sister 
Yes, Sister Monica, Paulina. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this, yeah, just a quick disclaimer. This yes. is Sister Paulina and Monica. We're using Paulina's device and we left to use Mendapoa's PC. Amen. <laughs> oh, so I think I think one problem that can be caused by having children out of wedlock can be um the partner that uh, one partner can blame the other partner who came with children for, for example, financial problems. They would say, uh, we are experiencing problems because if you couldn't have these children out of wedlock, we wouldn't be experiencing these problems. You could only be having two children. Mm -hmm. Now you brought three more children. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. So there's a sort of blame shifting game going on, yeah? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh huh. Thank you so much. That's uh, Paulina. Thank you so much, Paulina. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Who was that? That is. Amen. That is. Yes, Sister Esther. Amen, Sina Bishop. Uh -huh. Esther blessing. Yes. To me, I I think like when you've had children with someone, there has to always be some connection, uh -huh. despite of the fact that maybe you get married to another person. Mm -hmm. It will only take the grace of God mm -hmm. and uh, because there is that connection that will be there between the two of you. So it's Continue. only the Lord mm -hmm. that can really, that can really help you. Yeah, yes. I think there is always some connection with you because of the child. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's... You always have to talk to this person. Yeah. Yes. Th that's very Thank true. You. And... Uh, and it's uh, one thing that you can hardly ignore, yeah? Probably will never be able to ignore because uh, the, the, the father of the child, the mother of the child would need to see their children if you are not living in some European countries where uh, they can deny you seeing your children. <laughs> so yes, it's very, very, very true that uh, there will always be that connection. Somebody wants to find out how are my children doing? I want to come and see my children. I want my children to come over and see me and all these things. I want to send money for my children. Things, but, such things. Uh -huh. I feel like in those kind of circumstances, I, from what I've seen just in general, mm -hmm. is that there's more resentment towards the partner you left. Mm. Very few couples yeah. that you see that they have this um, yeah. um, common yeah. ground where they um they just say okay we focus on the child it's not about me or you mm -hmm. it's just our child mm -hmm. some some of them feel disgruntled that oh you left me for this other woman mm. um, now now the other woman has to raise my child or something of the sort um, yeah. so you're saying uh, resentment against if you are, if if a, if a man is married to the mother of the children, then against the other person, <laughs> or, or resentment between the two people who were who had children, right? Yes, 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 yes. between uh -huh. the parents of the children. Yes, uh huh. And also, uh, resentment. There could also be resentment between the new sp Spouse. uh, spouses. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Because uh, you'll find if it so happens that the one who does not have children in this marriage, right? Let's say the man is the one who has children, right? Has mm. come into, uh, got, got married to a woman. He's the one who had children out of wedlock. And then the adventure, uh, they are not able to have children. Mm. Now they are not able to have children. He's not able to have children with his new wife or with his wife. Then there could be resentment in the sense of maybe the wife is thinking, why are you not giving me children when you have children with the other woman? Right? Mm -hmm. Or the other way around. The man could feel like I should have married the other one who, <laughs> <laughs> who is fertile than, marrying, than, than <laughs> having married this one who cannot give me children. <laughs> you see that. <laughs> yes, such such uh, situations can also play out uh, where yeah. you find the new father or the new mother is resenting the spouse 
for having children with somebody else before marriage. Yeah, uh-huh. I think I think yeah, we can also talk about this well, yeah. by yeah. Either if it's the woman was the child, then you know the child able to receive love from his or her mother, mm-hmm. but not from the other one. Maybe yes. no. Yeah, or the man can just be loving his own children and stopping and failing to show love to the other child. Yes, stingy. Stinginess towards the children out of wedlock, out from outside, yeah. You you'd find stepmoms or stepdads are usually harsh. Is that what you're saying? Harsh towards the children who are not your own. Mm-hmm. It happens. Very very common. Very very common. Can I say something, please? Yes, please. Yes. Um, I had this thought that, for example, like someone has given birth to a child mm-hmm. and maybe one or two and now gets married mm-hmm. and does not want more children or like just wants to add one. And then the mm-hmm. other partner sees the other one has, has no child, yeah. maybe one, three kids for you already have two. You say, I don't want, you know, they are already your children and you cannot deny them. Yes. So they would, they would come some difference there because yes. this one wants two kids. This one is saying I already have one. Maybe I can just add one. The other one still wants two more. Mm-hmm. So they can they can they can be a very big uh, conflict there. Yeah, Thank conflict you. over how many more children to have. Yes. Because because the the one spouse may not really feel like these are my children. Yeah. <laughs> they are somebody else's children. That's right. But I think for somebody who has children or has a woman who has children, they should have this discussion before they get married. Definitely. Definitely. Because you can evade all these questions. You know, you you have to ask all these hard questions before you get married. Or what's the word? Pre-adventure that you had gotten married before you have these questions. Then if you're in the Lord, I guess the Lord can help you. Um, but it is, you know, the, the things that you have stated here, they can be very painful. Very. Um, especially when your spouse treats his children better <laughs> than your child that you, you brought. Definitely. That's uh, favoritism. Or maybe, it's maybe mm-hmm. he doesn't think he's treating them differently. Mm-hmm. But it's because you are the mother and you're, you you feel like he's treating them differently. But yeah. if you confront him, you be like, but how am I treating him differently or her? Yeah. Because I give him money, um, like the rest, but yeah. maybe it's the affection that is, you know, mm-hmm. upset. The affection yeah. that he displays towards his own children mm-hmm. is different from the... Um, affection he shows to the child that has come into the family. Yes. So the sort of prejudice, yeah. You 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 second guess. You you don't have a benefit of doubt. One spouse may not have the benefit of the doubt towards their uh, spouse who have children. Yeah. You think uh, they have ill motives towards your children. Yeah. You think they are. You, you become overly critical. That's that's very true. Uh, or even in terms of this, yeah. and, and, and also, and yes. also just, uh, just, just to add, and also just pressure, pressure yeah. from uh, not only by the parents but from the, you know, these kids, mm-hmm. these children, they, they eventually grow up. You know, they grow up into understanding and into knowledge as well of what's what's going on. And uh, by either one of the parents trying to discipline these children, you know, yeah. fairly, one can stand up and say that, you know, this emotional, uh, emotionally blackmail you to say that you're not even my real dad or you're not even my real mother, mm, you know, yeah. uh, all this kind of pressure upon you. So it's, it's, it's really emotionally draining. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It's the parents. Emotional blackmail, yeah? Mm-hmm. What I've also noticed is... Can I say um, something, Senior Bishop? 
yes, let, 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 let's let, let's allow Pastor Catherine to speak and then and then you can jump in, and then you can help. One one thing I've noticed, okay, in, in African culture, I've noticed sometimes when the woman comes with a child into the family, mm -hmm. the the father can discipline, like I think I'm just adding on to what Saki was saying. The 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 father will discipline the child that he's not his own more harshly. Yeah. In comparison to his own children. Yeah. And I've seen it so lately, like they can, they discipline in such a way, it's almost like robbery. <laughs> you know, you're beating the child because of robbery or, you know, it's not like the way you would do it to your own child is like, oh, don't do that again. Or you give them the smack, but it's not the smack of death, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's smack of, I love you. I don't want you to do this anymore. Um, so the emotional blackmail, obviously, you know, children will be children. Mm -hmm. discipline you have to discipline them but the, the the parents have to discuss who's going to discipline that child mm. in terms of how far do you go you know yeah. and, and 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 that's now a, a reflection of the re, of the of the resentment isn't it between the, the stepfather or the step the step parents and the children yeah mm. because of this anger probably because of the anger that you know that this woman had slept with somebody somebody else before uh, before marriage and that anger that resentment uh, that displeasure then comes out through such means as uh, discipline yeah mm. uh, harsh uh, inflicting more harsher dis discipline here or being more stingy towards the children not giving them enough money for what or um, when they need something you ignore them or things like that that's 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 right yeah. Uh, Esther Blessing, you wanted to add, to add something? Yes, I wanted to talk about something. Can I say it's like presumptions? Maybe you're going through your challenges and mm -hmm. like there is this thought that comes. And maybe it's because I have children, you know, you can say in, in the heart. And it yeah. was not about children, but you always have that thing. That maybe is it because I have a child out of wedlock, mm. something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's now, um, how do we call this? Where you are now guilt, is that it? Guilt and... Yes, I think so. And most of uh, presumption. And self-condemnation, yeah. yeah. Yeah, guilt and self-condemnation, that's right. Or maybe thinking that something happens because it's God judging you for having a child out of wedlock. Yes. Or, or maybe other people are saying that to you, that yeah, no wonder this is happening to you because your children are of wedlock. I think it's the most people telling you about it, and then you start meditating on it, and like but, maybe it's true. Maybe yeah. these things are happening to me is because you know mm -hmm. I had a child out of wedlock, so that's why everything is going downhill. That's it. That's it. And 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 the, and the consequences are quite. Uh, and, and this is not; these are not easy things to handle, by the way. These are not easy things to go through. Uh, being a child in a marriage, in, in a family where your, your step parent does not accept you, uh, even that coming to terms as a as a stepfather, stepmother, coming to terms with having somebody raising someone else's child, or learning to treat this child as if he or she was your own, is not an easy thing. Yeah? It's not an easy thing. Not at all. Now, for those, for, 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 for a single person, now, here you are, single person, uh, what then should you look out for? Yeah? When somebody comes and wants to, let's say you're a woman, is trying to, to seek your hand in marriage, or you are a man, you want to seek somebody's hand, a woman's hand in marriage, then what are some of those important questions to ask to find out whether this person has children, or this person does not have children, and to ascertain the to, to assess your your the situation, to assess your situation and find out um, the level of uh, of, uh, of your, the spiritual level of this person or the spiritual maturity, or find out whether it will be the right choice to make to marry this person with children or not. What are some of those important questions to uh, to ask? 
important question is to ask. Do you have children? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how is your relationship with the father or the mother? Mm -hmm. um, but you see, sometimes, in, I guess, in the beginning, people can shy away from speaking the truth mm -hmm. because they might feel that if they say the truth, then you might leave them. Mm -hmm. um, so, but these things are things that should be addressed uh -huh. before commitment. You're so saying, if, uh -huh. if the the person with the child is embarrassed or is not able to disclose that they have children, yes, that's already a red flag. You don't mm -hmm. want to um, enter into marriage, mm -hmm. then find out um, mm -hmm. the person has children because mm -hmm. children. Can never be, you know, be what's called locked away <laughs> or mm. hidden. Yeah. So these are all the important questions. Like, do you have children? Yeah. And even yeah. the relationship with the other partner that they had doesn't mm -hmm. really matter as long as this person is grounded. Mm -hmm. They love the Lord and they have let go and they have just asked the Lord to help them move mm -hmm. on to raise their children. Mm -hmm. And if the other spouse or, or the other partner mm -hmm. is willing to provide anything, mm -hmm. um, how do they handle it? Or how would you handle it if he does not provide for the children? Yes. You know? Yes. I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. Will you have resentment towards him or you just let go? Yes. And, and that's a very important question too. Are you prepared? Are you willing? Are you ready to marry somebody who as children out of wedlock yeah mm. are you ready to grapple with these um complicated issues of um that to uh, to be able to overcome all this resentment and, and whatever yeah are you ready to marry somebody who has uh, or willing willing and ready to marry somebody who has children and and to ask them do they have children um uh, and find out information about the children yeah and find out whether they are trying to hide information. It is a red flag. It will be a red flag if uh, somebody does not want to tell the truth about the children they have out of wedlock. Especially men, because men can be able to hide much more than women. <laughs> women are the ones who will always carry the child 99% uh -huh. of the time. It's yes. the women who are left to the children. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. men are the ones who you cannot be able to tell by mm -hmm. meeting him mm -hmm. you know he can play stupid and say i don't know <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm like well, have you been uh, engaging in sexual activities yes <laughs> he says i don't know yeah or you know we are using protection but i'm like you know I, yeah so That's... the men are the ones who actually mm -hmm. have to really open up mm -hmm. To say how many women, how many children do you have? Yes. Have you been roaming around town or the country? Yes. Very true. Um, but for the very woman, true. I believe it's very hard. Like she can hide, but I guess you can find out. You know. It is easier to find out. It will be easier to find out because where is her money going? Where yeah. does she spend most of her time? It's uh -huh. going to be easy to find out. If you don't find out, then you're not really, you know, doing your duty due diligence upon her you know yeah because or either she's a good liar or the man is not paying attention <laughs> you don't visit her you don't you know yeah because how do you hide children it's very hard to hide you know it, it, very, very, you yeah. sent down to the countryside to live with your mother if your mother lives down the countryside mm -hmm. yeah it is not easy for the woman to hide how many children they have had but, but now brothers why is it why is it difficult why is it that men hide how many children they have had they had unless they are asked <laughs> brothers why do you think it's difficult for a man to come clean concerning how many children they have we have some people that joined us veronica welcome rauna awene welcome please ifo you're most welcome julius keep to god ash you are welcome. It's good to have you here. You're blessed to have you. Uh, who else joins us? All right. Galaxy Node 9. 
you're also welcome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so why why do men find it difficult? Um, yes, to reveal how many okay. to reveal their past. Uh -huh. They feel responsibility. Some of them fear responsibility. Are you they saying fear to be rejected? <laughs> they fear to be rejected. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, go ahead, my brother. Oh, thank you. So, somebody just, uh, I don't know, the previous speaker just actually ended on, on, on the point that I wanted to end. Mm -hmm. But uh, speaking on, the, on, on men's behalf, I think since men are always, okay, not always, mostly to be known as uh, the chasers, you know, like the, the ones that go out today and then look for the women. So, since they are also scared of rejection, since they are already in the hunting season, like uh, courting or looking for uh, uh, this woman, courting this woman, mm -hmm. men will try by all means to, to hide anything that might chase her even further away mm. from, uh, from, 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 from getting her. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe, see, I don't have children, so I speak on a point <laughs> of correction. Or, uh -huh. <laughs> so I believe... Uh, they end up hiding uh, the number of children that they have until a certain stage of um, courtship or until they get this woman to like them too. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they lose this woman into liking them, and yeah. then they start exposing everything uh, and, and, and re uh, revealing everything about them, mm -hmm. hoping that at least now she has a better end of me. She mm -hmm. might not be the chance that she might see. Mm -hmm. compared to when she doesn't know me at all and just finding out that I have children and then boom, she runs away. Yes. <laughs> so it will be easier to, to trap her when he tells her later, not at the beginning. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. I think he's the one who went. Uh, yes, there's a bishop. So you're saying that if he tells... Probably, if he if he reveals later, then it will be difficult for the woman to reject him. <laughs> I'll still walk away. <laughs> I, I believe so. That's <laughs> I know that a lot of guys are very good. Men are very good at lying. Yeah. Yeah. Very Men good. are very very good at lying, uh, and. And, 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 it, and it has to do, of course, as he says, part of it is fear of rejection and boasting. <laughs> I find a man who, who comes and tells you he has a child mm -hmm. and that mechanism. Uh -huh. he's, um, he says his responsibilities, that's a grown-up man. Uh -huh. <laughs> the one who can come clean, huh? Yeah, in comparison to the man who you find out later, I think if I find out later, I'm walking. Mm. No matter how long I've known you, I will walk. <laughs> you say you walk out. It just shows there's something there, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't care your reason of I. I thought you're going to leave me or oh, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. You know, take owning up to your responsibility. You know, yes. you're the one who got that person pregnant. Mm -hmm. They did not get pregnant on their own. You find so some, live, some of them live. are saying mm. that she threw herself on me. Would you believe such a lie? Nonsense. <laughs> um, the, if, he, if he went and he slept with a girl, mm. he should own up to the responsibility. I know men says like, are you sure it is mine? Are you mm -hmm. sure you did not sleep with other men? You know, they all blame shifting all the time, you know, so that they can get away from their responsibility. Yes. And I know I've, I've been seeing this thing online where men are like, oh, um, I was so excited that it's going to be my child and then only to find out that I've been raising somebody else's child. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, those ones are not even usually in marriage. They do things the backside. Those are, yes. Outside. The back way around. Um, but uh, those kind of men who are just, you know, blame shifting or um, not taking responsibility they should not be taken serious irresponsibility that's right now talking about irresponsibility you remind me there are some guys who are in the habit of uh, 
they they waste their lives out in the clubs, nightclubs, uh, in the universities. And then when they think they are ready for marriage, that's the time they go to church to look for a church girl. Because they know that church girls are not wild like the nightclub girls that they have been wasting their lives with. And, and so they end up having children all around. And now they are coming to you. Actually, they are ready now for marriage. Go away. They are looking for some. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you pray to the Lord, the one who, the woman who's coming to look for a man, oh. and the man who's looking for a woman, they find each other. Yes. And leave the ones who have been waiting on the Lord. <laughs> That is wickedness of the highest order to come in church to look for a wife <laughs> when you have wasted your life and, and, and you know spilled your they say they, they must test the waters <laughs> <laughs> that is that is evil that is wickedness and they will find their own wickedness let them not come and the rest of of the Definitely. people who have been keeping themselves. And that's why the women have to be prayerful and the men in the church, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is a very, very think, important. Yes, yes, Pastor Saki. I think I think it, it goes uh, to it's a two-way street here, Mr. Mm. Bishop. You know, you find you find men as well, the brothers that are in church, mm -hmm. you know, um, but then you find the sisters that are out clubbing, and then when they decide that, oh, they've been played around by old men, and they've tasted the clubs and all these things, and then they, uh, that's also where they get, uh, they might end up also falling pregnant, then they decide that, okay, you know, I'm done with the world. Um, mm. I, I, I'm done. Let me go to, let me go and look for a brother, you know, a good brother in church. Mm -hmm. You see, so it's kind of a two-way street. Both genders just need to pray. Definitely. Yeah, it's true. There's women and there's men who come to get the good girl or the good guy. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was saying, let them find each other. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that are trying to scam the system. Yeah. Let them, <laughs> let them, let them uh, reap their own... Uh, benefits. <clears throat> yes, they benefits could... of their actions. Unless, you know, obviously we know that people can genuinely come um seeking god and that's why i was saying you have to be prayerful yes so that the lord will actually lead you mm -hmm. you just don't see this guy has come and you're like oh my gosh he's the one i've been waiting for did, did you even did you even pray to find out what his motive you know? we, we once we, we once talked about uh the infatuation <clears throat> and it yeah. and it is one of those things that lead people uh to to thinking like that yeah oh i found the one and not caring about whether this person had children or not it is a very very important question does this person have children why why is it important to know because how the, the time frame along which this person has children can tell you so much about their character yeah if somebody says to you I had two, I have children, and number one, if they are, if they don't want to tell you whether they have children or not, then uh, that's already a big red flag, isn't it? And even when you say plural, children, <laughs> so it's not one, it's not once, it's <laughs> oh my gosh, oh. <laughs> having children, having children out of wedlock is a burden for a married couple. There is no question about that. There is, it's, it's not an easy thing. It's not yeah. an easy thing at all. And so when you are in church, <clears throat> you're a sister who doesn't have children, a brother who does not have children, and a man comes approaching you to ask for your hand in marriage, you need to know, do you have a child? Do you have children? Especially in this wicked world that we live in. <clears throat> yeah. Especially, and don't say, no, the person has been in church for the past five years. <laughs> Or 10 years. Those are the most dangerous ones, especially. Yeah, they're most wicked. <laughs> <laughs> and so you need to know. And if they have children, if the one has a child or children, then you need to find out, okay, uh, how many children do you have? 
I have one, or I have five, or I have six, or I have two. Okay. And how old are they? This is a very important question to ask. How old are they? If you hear the youngest one is one month old, then I think that's a red flag. Yeah. But will this... he tell you about the one month old baby? <laughs> Or, or he can say, I do, I'm not sure. <laughs> or he says, I just said I'm pregnant. Wait, wait. Or he says, the youngest one, the youngest one is still in the mother's womb. It's not yet born. <laughs> <laughs> that person is not ready to move on you. <laughs> and if he has had those children with one woman, uh -huh. then that's. um. I, I should just give him a gift and say, go take that woman. Yes. Repent and marry yeah. that woman. <laughs> so those, those are huge red flags. Very, very huge. Senior Bishop. Yes. Yes, Sister Meke. Senior Bishop, and we need also to find out if these men or these women find, uh, get these kids before she or he got, got born again or Yes, How? that's it. Yes, yes. That's it. If he says the youngest one is, is still nine months in the mother's womb, then that's a very good question. So when did you become born again? How long have you been born again? Because <laughs> if he says I've been born again five years, very then... good <laughs> five years yeah, you've been born again and you have impregnated somebody in the last nine months and now you want to marry. No. That means that person is not born again at all. Yeah, it's definitely. It's question like two years old. Sorry? You come and say you want to get married and you have a kid of two years. I think that also is questionable. The, 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 it's it's, it's uh -huh. reason. That's no reason. <laughs> it, raises a, it raises a flag and it prompts even more questions, okay? So, and then what happened between those two years? Are you still, how close are you with the, with the father's child or with the mother's child? Are you still in contact? Um. Uh, uh, because two years, it is possible the other person has is not living with them. But have they have they broken off the relationship? Yeah? One year old child, two years old child. You need to know: have they broken off the relationship? Under what circumstances have they broken off the relationship? Did the person leave because you are born again now? Did the person leave because you said I'm tired of this immorality, or did the person leave because you are misunderstanding each other? Misunderstanding. And you know one thing we have to realize, it's soul ties are very much alive. Mm -hmm. That if the person does not get deliverance from this person, mm -hmm. they have a 99% chance of falling into sexual immorality with the partner yes. or the partners that mm -hmm. they've had in their life. Yeah. So when somebody just comes into the church, you can even tell by their character. You know, people can pretend, but... There's so much you can pretend when somebody is actually we truly seeking the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So they even the way they approach you just raises red flags. Mm -hmm. You know, they have not known you very well, and they have just come to ask for your hand in marriage. That is also a red flag. You know, Definitely. I think I stated before. Um, and even if they have known you for a long time, and then they, you know. Mm -hmm. have not really been delivered they can also still go back yeah to their partner because soul ties you know it is for life unless it's broken you know unless Getting there is married does not change the soul tie <laughs> definitely you know, the soul tie is still there and it's still active and it's going to work given the yes. opportunity only only so, the spiritual deliverance can set one free yes. definitely yes and, so that's why you hear people have fallen into idolatry. Um, yeah, it's adultery. because those soul ties have not been handled, you know. Well, Getting uh -huh. marriage will not help you evade sexual immorality. No, not know? at all. Not at all. It's not an marriage is not an antidote to sexual sin. Yeah. <laughs> if you enter marriage as an, an immoral person, it will just amplify your immorality. It will not, it will not solve your immorality. You will still find yourself going away to look for, for more gratification. Yeah, definitely. Who's that one? Uh, uh, Blessed Bishop, I have a question. Yeah. Like I keep wondering how 
uh, do the people in the world, how do they, how do they, since uh, without being delivered from their previous sexual partners, you know, like people in the world get married. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, I just keep wondering, like what keeps them um, committed to their partner, knowing, uh, knowing for a fact that they are soul ties and these soul ties are really real, you know, like very, very real as uh, Sister Catherine just said there. But now without deliverance, how do they cope? I just been wondering this um, thing. It just keeps playing in my mind. The the story is, the story is beautiful. There is not much to write home about. What do I mean? Um, a lot of uh, such people end up in divorce. Obviously, there's a lot of divorce. The divorce rate is high. Divorce rate is high. Fifty percent of uh, married people. And, and you can tell there is, there is the reason why, because of the immorality that is so pervasive <clears throat> uh, in, amongst the youth. So these people get married and the divorce rate is 50% for those that uh, are married for the first time. For those that are married for the second time, the divorce rate is 60%. For those that are married three times, for the third time, the divorce rate is 70%. And, and it keeps going higher the more they remarry. So they're not having it easy. For those that are not divorced, uh, it's it's just trying to, you know, sweeping things under the carpet. Very few seek help. Very very few seek help uh, uh, from multiple sources. Very very few seek help. But the majority, they just try to 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 sweep things under the carpet or just hope that things will pass by. Because a lot of a lot of people, especially talking about people that are in the world, they don't seek counseling. And because they don't seek counseling, when issues come, they handle it as they best know how to. And so they seek, uh, if, if, they are, if their spouses are giving them trouble, some of them have what you call, um, they have um, threesome. They allow their spouses to go and have sex outside of marriage and come back to find fulfillment outside and then come back. Or together, they look for husband and wife, they both look for, 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 for somebody else to come into their marriage <laughs> to commit, you know, they are committing adultery in agreement as husband and wife. So they have other people coming into their marriage to engage in sexual activity and all those people go out uh, <clears throat> and then they, are, they remain with their marriage. Uh, case in point, we have, um, uh, allow me to use these names here. We have the, the issue of uh, Will Smith and his wife, for example. They look so uh, perfect from the outside, but then you have a, a marriage that is troubled. So the wife, at one point, goes off and starts a relationship with a young musician and then comes back because the husband allows her to do that. So they don't want to break their marriage, but the husband allows the wife to go and have a, a sexual relationship outside with the, with, with the agreement that she'll still come back and they're not going to destroy their marriage. So very, very crazy things go on there. It's not, it's not, <laughs> uh, it's, it's not easy out there without, without this kind of help that we have in the church. Yeah. And, and some, they just bury themselves in their jobs. Coronavirus has brought, has increased the rate of divorce. Why? Because for the first time, a majority of couples can, are finally forced to stay together 24 hours in a day. They are forced to stay home together for 24 hours, something that they have not done, that they have not been doing for the first five years of their marriage, for the first 10 years of their marriage. And now because they are spending a lot of time together and they have not learned how to, how to solve their conflicts, they have not learned how to sort out their differences, now they are having all these 10 years of issues. Corona forced them now to deal with 10 years of marital issues and, and they cannot handle it. A majority divorce rate went up, shot up really. Some of them, they persevere for the first 20 years, 30 years, even 40 years. <laughs> and then in their, in their 60s, when they are 60 years old, 70 years old, they decide ah, it's too much, I'm going to divorce. They divorce one another when they are in their 60s and 70s. I know, it's so shocking. <laughs> It's not easy. 
they keep these things hidden. They try to suppress them. And then later on, the, the pressure becomes too much. They try to act the perfect family. That's it. They, and they do it so well. You know? They put on a powerful mask. Very, very powerful. They smile, they smile, and, and they laugh, and they go to movies, and they go wherever, and, and they post pictures on Facebook, wherever, not knowing that there is, that, 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 that there is an undercurrent uh, that, is, that the marriage is troubled. Some of them, they even just, you know, online. Some yeah. of them, it might not necessarily just pornographic, but just other small, simple photos. Maybe we call it simple, but it's not simple, you know? Definitely. Just to help fill that void. <laughs> some, some, they separate. They just separate, but yeah. no divorce. They just separate without divorce. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a sad story. Very, very sad story. If, if you dig deeper into these things, you'll be, you'll be devastated. <laughs> a lot of people uh, are suffering in their marriages because there is, even though help is there, they don't know. They don't know that help is available. And, and others, are, they just don't want anything to do with God yeah? because they think they can do it all by, by themselves. And if you look at the way some of, a lot of these marriages began, it's purely out of you know, immorality. They began as, a, as, an immoral, as an immoral relationship and they never learned how to go beyond that immorality, how to sort out that immorality in their marriage so yeah. that they can really have a, a, a marriage that is truly satisfying. And that's why um, physical attraction is so important to them. You have to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, you have to look a certain way. It's all about appearances. Mm. Um, but um, that's why Christian marriages are more fulfilling when people have really truly submitted to the Lord. Yes. This is Not the only place where... Compromised relationships we see of Christian. And the Christians one, it's no difference. The, some of the Christians who, um, their marriages, they also began in immorality. Mm -hmm. So they also have difficulty in their yeah. marriage. Yeah. But I think you're the one who said that there's like a very high rate of um, divorces in Christian marriages. It is said that it's on the same par as the world, 50%. And that's because of the immorality that has invaded the church. <laughs> it's no surprise. When the world invades the church, the, the church takes on the form of the world, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we begin to look like each other. Yeah, because of dating. There's even uh, Christian dating sites. Mm -hmm, website for dating. They don't really talk about, um, like I remember in our church um, before, um, people would be living together, cohabitating, and it was not really an issue. Yeah. Pastor is afraid to rebuke because if you rebuke then. I don't even if I don't even think they are afraid. They just consider it okay. If you have, if you have made up your mind, both of you, why not? I'm like, um, <laughs> you are not married. You once, know? once a friend told me that a girl that was going to church that was in Namibia was shocked to find out that uh, she's not supposed to be living with her boyfriend. She was shocked because she lives with a boyfriend. She calls herself born again. And, uh, and, 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 and it was breaking news to her ears that living yeah. with a boyfriend, cohabiting is, is sin. That's one thing that it's not even that the pastor is afraid to rebuke. They don't even talk about it. It's, it is like you have to date in yeah. order to get married, you know? Just drive, they say. Yeah, so it's like, how will you know who to marry if you don't live with them? And I'm like, okay, so you mean you get into marriage without actually coming before God? And then if you find she's the right one, now you marry her? I'm like, but you've already married her yes, without the Lord. And now you want to come before the Lord after you've committed immorality and it's now say that we are compatible. It's oh. a big mess. A huge and and, and, and this, this very important uh, point that um, Eiffel raised, you find somebody has children, not with one woman, but two, three, four, or five women. Yeah? Psychopath. And, <laughs> that is, you, that's a huge red flag. That is, a, I don't care how, uh, I mean, how spiritual this person sounds. That is a huge red flag. 
Yeah. Very, very huge red flag. Um, uh, and 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 for this for your for, for your for your sake for the sake of your salvation and your sanity, you will do well to reject this person. Absolutely. Uh, or or ensure that <laughs> the Lord has truly delivered them. It has really been years, and the Lord has truly delivered them. Otherwise. I, I don't know. <laughs> five, five, six children. Uh-uh, no. But you see, it is God's design that we be pure. We enter marriage pure yeah. and free from immorality, free from all these children. That's why uh, it, it, it will not, that's why, that's why it's such a, we have to take extra caution. People, have, people in church, we have different backgrounds. Yeah? So you have to be very, very thorough in your um, in your questioning, yeah? how many children do you have? Uh, are those with the same mother or with different mothers? And how old is the, the oldest child? How old is the youngest child? How far apart have you been having these women? Just to find out what pattern has this person been jumping from one woman to another? How I do don't you even know? think I have time to ask all those questions. <laughs> if I just hear a few, I'm like, <laughs> okay, you might as well stay celibate from now on. Just seek the Lord and pursue his will for your life because you are a bit messed up. <laughs> and the question comes now. Now, what if somebody here is in such a scenario? What if you are the one? What if a believer is the one now, somebody is born again, and they want to find help? How can I then move on? How, what should I do? Um, I have three children. Each one has a different mother. <laughs> different mother or different father? I mean, different father. <laughs> I don't think marriage. <laughs> like when you have that many children, I think your focus first is more your relationship with God, more than you should run into marriage. That's um, a very powerful one. So, because honestly, after having one kid, how can you run from this person to another, to the third, to the fourth? It's, it's, I can it's understand kind of... why you do have more children because you're feeling you have a longing in, within your heart that you want to be loved. So you go for this particular one that you have your first child with. Maybe the the one you had your first child, it was like your one night, not one night stand, but it was your first time. Mm. So you have the child in your naiveness. And yeah. So now you come and you meet somebody else who says, I love you. I'll take care of you. Blah, blah, blah. You have a child and then this person changes and then you split. Mm. You know? And then now you are broken and then you now you go into another relationship and the other person now begins to promise you all the wonderful things. The moon and the stars. And then you get pregnant again. And then things change. You know, like it's a re repetitive pattern that is formed you know with every relationship you're going into because you are seeking um, you're seeking Validation. to be loved mm -hmm. you're seeking to belong not necessarily by everybody but you just want somebody have a home you know mm -hmm. you want to have a home with your children you know husband and wife and the children mm -hmm. so you, you keep just falling into this pattern not that you had planned but it just seems to be happening to you you know the first, the first one could be tied to wanting somebody to love you. I mean, not, not just that. In the, 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 the foolishness of youth is this. As a young boy, young girl, in your early 20s, whatever, you feel you are master of the world, isn't it? You can get any man you want. You can get any woman you want because of your beauty, your handsomeness. Mm. And then, lo and behold, sexual immorality, and then you have a child. That is devastating, very devastating. Uh, it leaves you guilt, uh, worthless, feeling worthless, feeling very guilty, especially if you are born again. Um, and, and, and you see the hardship that comes with being a single parent. Mm. Uh, and, and you begin, because of that worthlessness that you feel, you feel like you don't deserve somebody that uh, is uh, pure, somebody that has not, you don't deserve goodness. You don't deserve a man that is faithful. Yeah. And, and it will be very a big shocker if a man comes and <clears throat> that looks Prince Charming. Prince Charming comes al along. He looks so beautiful, so handsome. He, he says all the right words. 
and, and he says he loves you and your child and he says he loves you and your child uh he takes advantage of that mm-hmm. and then you fall for that trap now this one will 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 deal with you an even heavier blow yeah as a woman it will do deal you an even heavier blow, blow to the to the extent where you don't see yourself anymore as master of the universe or miss universe anymore <laughs> and and it can lead you to a place of desperation if you now get to that age of your early 30s 40s there it's so desperate now like you know as long as you can have a man to as long as there is a man who can say <clears throat> you know i love you or as long as somebody can come around it doesn't have to be mr universe and then desperation out of desperation uh the enemy takes advantage of you again so it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a it's a sp- downhill so to say spiraling path mm. that uh, uh that that really damages you in many 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 places so, so i think a woman who has three to four children they should not even be seeking a relationship at that moment you know they should actually just take time seek the lord have a relationship with the lord have this love you know the love of god fill their hearts that they will not feel the need to have um a man come and occupy them like their lives in order for them to feel loved or worthy because once you have the affirmation that the lord loves you and you want to serve the lord then you are you'll be more content you will not no, you will no longer seek the love of somebody else you know definitely so, for the person who has that many children you actually don't need a man you need the lord you know because it seems like there's a void within you that you have been trying to fill and all these men have just been disappointing you but it's only because you have not allowed the lord to occupy your heart they take advantage and, mm-hmm. and really another man would come and it is going to repeat that same cycle it's not going to change until you yourself change you set the lord as your focal point and you say for me i just want a relationship with the lord and if the lord has not deal with me i will not jump into another bandwagon you know definitely um definitely. so for those ones like even if it's for the man mm-hmm. also it's it also applies for the man because definitely for the man too as he has to take care of the children you know you're not going to be giving ch- women children there and then just ab- abandon them you know you have your responsibility those children have their needs mm-hmm. and when they get to a school going age you also have to contribute it's not all dumped on the mother mm-hmm. so for him also it's not like okay now i want to move on i want to start a family no <laughs> you also mm-hmm. have to seek the lord and then you also going to have to plan how you're going to look after those children those children Definitely. didn't bring themselves into this world so you can't be running and saying i want to start a family and you have a family that you have just neglected mm. so there is no um clear you know you know because the men it's they can, they think it's easier to move on mm-hmm. but if he cannot look after the children that he has already there's no guarantee that he'll actually look after you exactly so that's already a flaw in his life you know i want to i want to start a family what about the family that you have already mm-hmm. you know stop you know giving um cotton candy you know you, you cannot you cannot take care of the more children if you cannot take care of one uh, yeah indeed, the same goes for men you cannot be jumping from one woman to another and hope that you finally find the woman who is going to complete you or who's going to whatever uh, yeah it's it's not true uh if one finds themselves you are a believer you have one child you have two children three children then it's time to seek the lord really yeah and yeah. and it's time to repent before the lord and ask the lord to really help you to deliver you number one and to help you to seek him above all else yeah and to not seek fulfillment in any man in any man and to repent for getting all those women pregnant <laughs> definitely you have to repent you, you know break down before the lord seek seek a uh, help mm. uh 
uh, when, when you have children and you don't get help, you know, it leaves you with a lot of scars. There are a lot of scars, a lot of damage is done to you. And not only do you need the law to deliver you, but you also need to be well advised yeah, on how to, yes, as you said, take care of your children, how to take better care of yourself, how to avoid falling into the traps of another man coming and then leaving you pregnant again. Mm. Yeah. And you know, the enemy is very, very cunning. He can come and try to take advantage of your, your, your single motherness, being a single mother. He can take very, very good. Uh, uh, he can play. He can play very well. He can come to try and support you and support your children. You know, he can come and try to be that sort of. Um, and we already said here on this platform that it is not advisable. You should not be giving money to, to a woman or a man that you are not married to. Yeah. Mm. But then the enemy comes with such a, with such cunning, with such cunningness because he can see that you're struggling, young girl, very handsome. I mean, very beautiful, but you're struggling financially. And so he comes and he tries to fill that void. Uh, there is this case, there is this case of, uh, uh, the, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard Ravi Zacharias, the famous apologist, um, mm. when he would travel around the world uh, doing his Christian apologetic ministry, uh, he was also getting massage from some uh, women. What? <laughs> he would go to the massage uh, <laughs> therapist to, to get some massage. And while these women are massaging him, then he would try to make advances. No, he's a married man. He's married, he has children. And, and then he will try to uh, use his father figureness, his trustworthiness to support these women. You know, he steps in to help these women financially. And then in that, and then when he does that, he establishes a relationship with them. And then he asks for sexual favors to sleep with them. It has been a big news recently. So he does that. He goes to this place, finds a woman. In fact, his, his Christian organization is, should we even call it a, yes, a Christian organization. So his organization came up with a special fund, special fund with a very beautiful name for giving money. His design was this, to give money to these women that he was making advances on. To give them money, to take them to school, to learn certain skills on how to do more massaging and to open up more massage <laughs> shops and, and to support them financially. And so he was using that as a way of getting them. Some of them were single parents. Wow. Yep. The enemy is not playing. <laughs> the enemy does not play. Okay, Eiffel has a question. I have a question. If someone gets born again and he or she has a child, by the chance... And by chance, the other spouse also gets born again. So can they marry since both of them are born again? Now, when you look at the Bible, as I answer your question, Brother Eiffel, uh, you find that the Bible says, the Bible honors, the, uh, honors marriage so much to the extent that he says that um, if a man impregnates a woman, he must pay the bride price, right? Pay the parents for the bride price as if he had married her. But, but not married her yet because he has violated her. He has taken away her virginity. And then he says, and, it, and he should also marry her. The Bible encourages that because you have already started this business, just finish it. And, and we're talking about soul ties here. Uh, that if, if, if you have slept with somebody, impregnated somebody, uh, uh, and now you want to go and uh, uh, find somebody else then just go and finish what you have started there you know uh, ideally it should be like that uh, so if a person impregnates somebody in the world and then that person also becomes born again uh, it will be better by my understanding for those for those for the for those two people to be to, to get married yeah it will be better in so many ways. <laughs> uh, they also need help. They need help, but it will be much better than finding somebody. Yes, in good terms. <laughs> yeah, they have to reconcile. 
we have to repent. And it usually just saves a lot of drama and um, a lot of a lot of drama, a lot of stuff. It's mm-hmm. it's it's the child that is born out of um, well, okay, not that, but it saves uh, for another parent to come and raise this child. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, and it's actually more beneficial to the child, yeah. you know, being raised by both um, uh, his or her parents. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Now, children, children are a gift from the Lord, yeah irrespective of how they come into the world. So mm. we, 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 we are not saying children are demons or whatever. Children are a gift from the Lord. Whether they came through uh, rape or they came through, you know, uh, consensual sexual immorality outside of wedlock, the problem is not the children. <laughs> yeah? The children did not ask to, to, to come into this world. Uh, it is the parents that need to to get their acts right. The children need to be loved. The children need to be supported. God still cares for such children. God still uh, has a plan for such children. It is the parents who have a problem that must be seriously handled. The ones who need to repent. The ones who need to seek the Lord. Yeah? I had a childhood friend who was raped and then the, the guy later comes back and he's like, Will you marry me? I'm like <laughs> <laughs> more questions. <laughs> what did she say? Even forget. <laughs> I was like, how did they get married? Huh? Did they marry? Did they get married? I don't know. Like, I think for me, I almost questioned, like, did he rape you? Because the audacity, mm. you know, you rape. You get a child, and then you're coming to say you marry me. Hey, <laughs> that's a good question. So, what do you guys think? Is that a bad thing? Now, I don't know ah. if those people are born again. If those people are not born again, but let's say, uh, suppose, let us give you the scenario. Suppose now these people are in church; they are both born again. Is will that be a bad thing or a good thing? What do you guys it, think? It is rape. It is not consensual. Mm-hmm. Karasho, Karasho, eh? I'm, I'm, I want the other guys to, let's say, Pastor Saki. What do you think? <laughs> okay, what, what the, let me understand this question very well. Let's <laughs> repeat the question again. The girl has been raped by a gentleman. He goes to prison for six months for, for raping her. Uh huh. And then? He yeah. comes, he comes from, he's released, yeah? Mm hmm. And um, he comes and asks for her hand in marriage. So there is no relationship with them except rape. She has a baby, by the way, I'm saying. Yes. So he, he raped her. She falls she pregnant. pregnant. Yeah. But they don't have a relationship. They That's don't have a... You know, this girl, now I almost <laughs> feel like, did she tell me the truth? <laughs> because I was thinking, how does the man get the audacity to come and ask for your hand in marriage after sexually abusing you. Yeah, that is uh, that, that almost sounds like manipulation indeed. So uh, I'm like, how do you expect me to say yes to such a stupid question from what you did? So they don't know each other. They don't have any friendship. And he comes straight out of prison asking for her hand in marriage. That's why oh. I'm, I'm wondering if my friend told me the truth. Because I'm like, <laughs> how does he just... And then I remember she commented, he's handsome. I was like, hi, okay. It happens. I've heard of something like that. But so, that sounds like... Mm-hmm. No, no, no. The way she was telling me didn't sound like it was almost rape. Because now you're telling me, oh, he's, he's handsome. I'm like, he raped you. Julius, keep... <laughs> <laughs> now, if, if uh, the, 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 there are questions to ask, what are his motives? Yeah? Yeah. Why didn't he ask her before? Why rape? Yeah. Why rape first and then come to ask for, for marriage for marriage later? Are you born what again? What kind of man are you? Like, how do I trust you to be my husband? That's that's a good question. <laughs> how can I trust? Uh, can I say something? Uh huh. I, I think maybe when when he went to jail, uh, jail transformed him. <laughs> <laughs> so. He changed, and now you can you can give the benefit of doubt that he's 
is different. But I'm saying in terms of the woman, he violated you. I don't mm-hmm. care if you went and you had remission you know, in the prison and you come back changed. The fact is, he raped you. You have become pregnant. You know, she was still going to school, you know. So you have raped somebody. School has stopped. You know, when you have pregnancy, you cannot say, I'll continue, you know. Mm-hmm. Baby has come. And I remember at that time, her parents were like, do you want us to go to the clinic and have the baby removed? Abortion. You know? Yeah, and she was like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to do abortion. I'll, I'll, I'll go through the pregnancy. So you have been raped. Then you carry the baby for nine months. And now you come and ask me such a stupid question. If you truly cared, then you could have not raped me in the first place. <laughs> now, now it, it, it seems you know, to me the most responsible, yes, the most responsible thing a man can do, you know, the most responsible thing he could have done is to come and apologize, ask for forgiveness, rather than coming to ask for someone's hand in marriage that you have raped, mm-hmm. is come and show your remorse, your yeah. repentance, yeah, that mm-hmm. you are sorry mm-hmm. for what you have done and you need forgiveness. But yeah. to just come straight and ask for hand in marriage as if you are entitled to marrying her, even though, uh, 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 the bio, the, even though it would be better to, you know, to marry somebody that you have. Uh, my thought was this. But that's, that's not. Mm-hmm. My thought was that by him coming to do that, it was almost coming to downplay the fact that he raped her. Yeah. Because he's going to say, look, she accepted my marriage proposal, meaning I did not do the rape. You know, maybe she was doing this out of spitefulness, mm-hmm. you know? So I was like, I could, I could almost sense a bit of arrogance. It's like, oh, why don't you marry me? You know? Mm-hmm. So when you marry your rapist, people will be like, are you sure? Are you actually sure that person raped you? Mm-hmm. Or you are just disgruntled. You are, you are angry. So you just said he raped you, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Because this this was a court case. Yeah. He was sent to prison for raping you. And he comes and he says, will you marry me? Mm. If you marry that person, it will seem like you are just being disgruntled and you oh, were, wanted good. revenge. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and then he's going to come. You don't even know what he's going to do by having you marry him. He's going to yeah. tell you to go to court and overrule that report that you took the police that I raped you. Hmm. Very important point there. Pastor Saiki, what are you saying? Yeah, no, this is, this is uh, I agree with Pastor uh, Catherine. You know, this is a very interesting situation here. And it is, I try to look at it from two sides, you know. Mm-hmm. The, the, this, this man is definitely, it's, it's, it's guilty. It's, I don't agree with him as well. And probably for him to ask the ladies hand in marriage, probably want to continue having, uh, as we spoke about shame uh, um, in, the, in, in uh, Genesis, he probably wants to continue having um, <clears throat> what sexual activities with this woman without feeling any remorse or without having to use force or without uh, shame, you know? Mm-hmm. And the other thing as well, it might be that uh, this man, it, it, that is just insane, actually. I, I, I just deleted the other thought now. I wanted to cover, <laughs> to back him up with certain things, but having to think about it, it doesn't make sense, actually. No. You, you, it leaves us with a lot of questions that must be answered to understand the motives mm. and the goals. What are you trying to achieve? Mm. Yeah. And mm. you have good intentions. And yeah. Are you trying to manipulate this person? Uh, was rape your way of trying to get her? <laughs> hey! hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so lots of questions to be asked. Mm. Uh, now, marrying somebody who has a child uh, is not in and of itself a bad thing. No. Yeah? But you have to ask a lot of questions mm. because your burden is greater than that of people who are entering marriage without children. Mm. Yeah. 
and the, the, the behavior, the character surrounding these children. Yeah. Mm. Did you impregnate somebody and then before this one is born and then you impregnate another person oh. or, you know, one year apart? Oh. What are the circumstances surrounding these issues? Were you feeling so distraught after the previous relationship that you were seeking for some sort of comfort and then boom, then comes this other guy who comes now to leave another baby? You know, a lot of questions have to be asked to understand mm. where are you now? Mm. Are you really uh, in this relationship with, for the right reasons? Yeah. Uh, or are you just seeking for some sort of comfort, temporary uh, satisfaction uh, to soothe you, uh, to help you overcome your, uh, your trauma? Or, you know, or you are, you are troubled by having all these children and you want somebody to help you care for the children. Have you really been delivered? Have you really, are you really seeking the Lord or are you seeking man before? or woman before the Lord? So these are very, very important questions to be asked. I don't even think they want temporary. They want permanent. It's just that it <laughs> happens to be temporary, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and if you don't answer these questions honestly, and you don't seek help, then you are in for disaster. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a way uh, to find a way to reconcile, uh, to, to come to terms with the fact that I'm marrying somebody who has children. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a way to come to terms with that, to, to set good boundaries, to establish a good uh, blended marriage mm. uh, with God's help. But that comes with having sought the Lord's really deliverance, mm. receiving the necessary help that you need, and not rushing into marriage. And if you, and if you find yourself, you have a, a, a married man pursuing you, a married woman pursuing you, then just run away. Yeah? Uh, Marathon. Uh, <laughs> one who is divorced, I mean, yeah. Of course, you find some married man who doesn't want to tell you that he's married? <laughs> Wickedness shall never cease. <laughs> may the Lord, may the Lord, may the Lord help us. It shall cease soon. Wonders shall never cease. That's what I wanted to say. Mm. Uh, 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 you find, you know, these men, like one of these pastors recently, this pastor from Hillsong, he's married, he has children. Now he's pursuing a relationship with another woman. A pastor from Hillsong? Yeah. Oh, yes. Which hill song? London or Australia? New York. New York. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Carl Lentz. He's been making a lot of news recently. So then he, he gets it. He shows you these people are not born again. <laughs> I don't know which Bible they read. <laughs> so, so, so the man is married. That's why you also need to ask these questions. Have you ever been married before? Are you divorced? You know, uh, even how many relationships you have before? These are important questions to ask because if you don't ask them, then you may as well be playing dice with your life. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it turns out this man has children, has a, has a wife, and is a pastor of a church, but he's pursuing a woman who is Muslim, who is divorced, and he doesn't want to tell her that he's, <laughs> he's married. <laughs> and I'm he doesn't want to tell her he's a pastor. <laughs> the devil is in the church. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's why it's important to ask all these questions. Well, that's why it's important to discuss all these issues, isn't it? That's shocking. Yeah, really? very shocking. Very, very shocking. <laughs> it's, it's been making headlines. It's been making headlines recently. I don't know which headlines you look at. I've not seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pastor. Pastoring a church, married with children, and doesn't want to tell that he's a pastor, doesn't want to say he's married. And, uh, and it turns out this woman also is divorced. Basically, it's showing us what the message we received on Friday is that mm -hmm. there's a group following the Lord and there's a group following, they think they're following the Lord, but they're under Satan. Definitely. Literally, that's basically just a simple, you know, example. A pastor, he has a family and then he's pursuing a divorced Muslim woman. What nonsense. Oh my God. <laughs> that is the confusion the enemy has brought into the house of the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is the wickedness the Lord has. And that man is pastoring a church. You can imagine yeah. what kind of advice he's giving people. He's not just pastoring a church. He's pastoring a famous church. Yeah. And he appears on, on, on television promoting his books and promoting his message and promoting 
you know, the people that he's... Can imagine the impartation and the spirit from those books. Ah, Lord have mercy. Hmm. Lord imagine, have mercy. very true, this is very important what uh, 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 Sister Catherine just shared today mm -hmm. about the impartation. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, especially some pastors uh, <clears throat> that, that might, or teach, or whoever that might be involved in, in sexual immorality, and then they do these altar calls and, uh, and all these things. We, because sexual immorality gives these soul ties and spirits. Mm. Now, especially with the laying of hands. Hey. Oh, my goodness. That's the, they say, be very careful who you let or allow to lay a hand on you, especially during altar calls and everything. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But so so we, have to, to, uh, we have to take precaution. If you have children, there is the Lord can help you. Yeah. May the Lord really help you to really find that deliverance, that uh, uh, to seek the Lord first. To break those soul ties. And break those soul ties, yes. And break whatever curse that comes with those soul ties. Mm. Yeah? Uh, because if you don't deal with that, with that spiritual problem, mm. you'll find yourself in marriage, in a marriage with a man, you have your children, and you feel so insecure. Mm. You feel so insecure. You are wondering, does this man really love me? Maybe it's because I have children. Mm. Yeah. That this woman really loved me. Maybe it's because I have children, you know, and so many things. So, so many things. And you find you are arguing, you're having conflicts in your marriage because of your insecurity, because of your um, self-condemnation, all these things. Mm. So you really, really have to find uh, help. And if you are the one marrying somebody who's uh, uh, or pursuing somebody who has a child, may the Lord help you also. Because you also have to love that child. You have to love this child as, a, as your own. If you're not going to love that child, you might as well just leave that woman alone. Definitely. It's like adopting, you know? Mm -hmm. you yeah. know it's like those people who adopt children. So you have mm -hmm. to take it as, I'm adopting this child into my life. Yeah. That child is not a visitor. <laughs> no. That child is yours. Yours, you know? Mm -hmm. So whatever you would like to give to yourself, give to that child. Definitely. And if you are not capable of that, just leave that woman alone. Definitely. Just leave her alone. And it's very important, very, very important to pray. Eh? Because during the first stages of uh, either courtship, the, as we have been discussing in, the, in previous meetings about infatuation, mm -hmm. you, can, you can be so blown away that you just want to take everything in. To say yeah. that I accept with your child, I accept mm -hmm. with everything. Yeah. Um, we will be fine. It will be a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. And then finally, during the process of marriage, then you, you get married, mm -hmm. and then reality starts kicking in. You know about all this, uh, what you just discussed uh, here uh, and noted down the yeah. the, the, the tough uh, responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And then you snap, or you are out of your infatuation. Mm -hmm. And then you realize that ah, 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 this is not what I signed up for. Yes. I regret doing this. So it's very important that we actually pray over the infatuation moment or over those honeymoon phase um, to really know that you are taking up the responsibility here. Definitely. Well, of course, be, uh, as, 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 as singles, it is very easy to, to be caught up in that infatuation. He's so perfect. Yeah. And the same happens whether the person is a child or the person has been divorced. When you look at this person, your, your feelings, because of your naiveness you, 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 and, and your infatuation pumps you up so much, you don't see anything wrong. You don't see any fault. You are, you are ready. You are willing to do anything. <laughs> Bishop Julius, you just said divorced. I don't think we should be marrying divorced people. We should not be. And it is possible that some people are pursued by divorced people. And, yes. and we should we should be, uh, what? I guess not if you're naive. not married in the church, it's different because the Lord did not recognize the first marriage. But yeah. if, they were, if, they were, um, if they had the marriage in the church, Bible-believing church, under the Lord, and they get divorced, don't waste your time with such a person. The Lord does not recognize that marriage. De def definitely, Sister <clears throat> sister Catherine. And given the high rate of divorce and not knowing, you know, it's not so easy to ask people, 
and the first time you meet them, are you married or not? Especially if you don't see a ring on their fingers. Oh, it's easy for me to ask. <laughs> Wonderful. Some people find it difficult. <laughs> I think you have to be comfortable in asking those kind of questions so you can just, you know. Yeah. So the, the, the red flag is higher if you hear, if this person, if you find out this person is divorced. Yeah. Very, very high. Uh, you have to ask. Yeah. And run away. If this person is divorced, I would say just run away. Yeah. Stay away. You may find there's such a situation, the person was divorced, but then the wife has died. <laughs> it's a different situation, but even then still, the, the red flag is high. Yeah? If somebody has been divorced, uh, they come with a lot of baggage, a huge baggage uh, mm -hmm. on their shoulder, and a, a lot of insecurities too. So many, so many issues. They come with a lot of issues. Uh, and if they come together with children, now Lord help you also. Because even though the woman has died, but they, they, were, they were divorced, that's one issue. There are a lot of unresolved issues. And then now you have children also, <clears throat> which uh, you have to handle. And so you need, don't be ignorant, don't be naive, don't, don't let your infatuation take over and make you think, I can, I can handle this, I can do this by my own. Uh, I know the Lord will help me. Of course, the Lord helps us, but the Lord has also given us a brain to think mm -hmm. and to reason and to ask questions and to seek for answers. Yeah, so the Lord does not want to blindly enter relationships uh, in the name of the Lord will help me. Uh, ignorance. And, uh -huh. Yes, Brother Saki. So, uh, Bishop, you may proceed uh, before I, 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 I just share a, 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 uh -huh. a quick, quick story about what Bishop just said now. Yes, and, and I found there are three issues the enemy takes good uh, advantage of. He takes advantage of our naiveness, our ignorance, and our laziness. If you are lazy enough to ask, not to ask questions, if you are so lazy you don't want to ask questions, you don't want to do your homework, or you are naive, Naiveness and ignorance, they really go together because it's a state of, you know, lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, yeah? Lack of exposure, not really, <clears throat> not having ex exposed to a, a host of issues going on there, not being well informed, not really knowing the, the schemes of the enemy and how he traps people. If you don't understand these issues, it becomes so easy for the enemy to come and lie to you and take advantage of your feelings. Take advantage of your, of, your, of your weaknesses. Take advantage of your needs. Take advantage of your, of your, of your you know, um, of your naiveness. You, you don't know so much. And now here the enemy is, is trying to uh, involve you in his wicked schemes. So as the mighty prophet of the Lord was saying the other time, there is a war going on. And this is part of that war. If you don't know there, there is a war going on, if you don't know that the enemy is looking for young men and women to, as, as his trophy, then you become his prey. You become an easy prey because you don't know. You don't know how to protect yourself. You don't know how to watch out. You don't know how to be able to identify, how to discern the lies of the enemy and to, to, to discern whether what you are hearing is a lie or is it, or it's truth, whether this is from the Lord or it is not. Brother Saki. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Blessed Bishop. Just as... Uh... Um, as Bishop, uh, our senior bishop was saying about, as I quoted something there, um, of knowing also when to say uh, no, you know, like during infatuations and everything. There was a, a story that one of my friends told me, a, a true story about um, a, a man, he, I think he was in his 40s now, early 40s. So, and then the family, the man's family, where because the man is successful, he has his own house, you know, he's, he's well off and still single. So the family got a bit, started getting worried, like, you know, putting pressure upon this uh, man. Why are you not married yet? What's going on? Can you not find a woman? You know, what's happening? And then he keeps uh, telling them down that, no, I'm fine this way. Uh, I'm just not finding a right woman. So then the family decided to join ventures with each other while the man is in a different town. They decided to have a meeting with each other and then they, they started looking for a plan on how they can get a woman for this man. 
So then they discussed and then they found a woman uh, in the village, in their village where they are. Um, uh, and then they found a woman and they told the man that we found a woman for you. So, okay, then the man was like, okay, let us see what is happening here. And then they started talking with the women, they exchanged numbers, the family gave the numbers. So they started talking, you know, um, getting to know each other. So I think the man then was happy about the, the lady as well. Without them seeing each other, the, women, the ladies in the village and the, the men sit down. And then they decided upon one day that, okay, the family uh, is going to put the woman on the bus to send him off to the man in town. Then the men agreed, oh, fine. Every, every town where the woman is uh, driving into, within the bus, they call each other, how far, how far, you know? The story goes on, how far, now, how far? The men can't wait, eagerly can't wait. Okay. So, and then when the woman arrived, it was even in the night, during the night, the woman arrived at the service station, and then um, she, what the man was already there waiting. Are you the one that is uh, wearing what, what? I say, yes, this is me. Okay, then they go to meet. Just as the behind the woman uh, were, were seven, seven children. So the yeah. men looked at the woman. Okay. Yes, seven, seven with, with bag, with their bags and everything. Seven kids. So the men say, ah, Are these your kids? Hey, all of them. Then the woman said, Yes. That man said, Oh, no. He stopped, he stopped in the bus and then he put them, all of them back on the bus. He paid the bus driver and said, please take these people back. So I, I, it was a sad story, but he finally but said, you know, a true story. So it's very, very important. What I learned from this is very important that to, to also know who you are, know when to say no. Mm -hmm. And um, if you can't take up a responsibility, no matter the infatuation that you are going through, or no matter how pretty or uh, beautiful or handsome the man or the woman may be, mm -hmm. know your limits on what you can handle. And also us singles that still have no children, please, just, just, just don't, just stay away from sexual sin. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Indeed. Uh, that's that's a very important message out of this. Let us stay away from sexual immorality. For those of us that don't have children, please make sure uh, you maintain chastity and purity. Let us pursue purity. If you have a child, may the Lord, uh, <clears throat> the Lord can help you. The Lord will help you, but seek the Lord first. Mm. Uh, it is possible to marry somebody who doesn't have a child. I mean, who has a child out of wedlock, but you need a lot of, you need, it's a lot of work. Yeah? So, let us not be ignorant or naive or lazy about that or try to brush it off or mm. let our infatuation take over and make us think that uh, there is no consequence. All right. Um, what about family planning in marriage? Um, family planning in marriage. That's our next. Um... All right. Now, we have already said that immorality Sexual immorality, sex out of marriage is a total no. So no, we're no. not talking about we are not talking about <laughs> family planning before marriage. <laughs> okay, we are saying family planning in marriage. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I so think it should be allowed. Okay. You, you should not have more than you can bear. Okay. Otherwise, it will cause suffering to you and to the children. Um. Because. At the same time, you cannot have children as you wish, and then you start begging. <laughs> it does not reflect really good on the light of Christ, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. It's like, oh. I think this also has to play with your financial stability. Yeah. If you, if you can afford, and you can comfortably take them to school, you know, they don't just go to primary school. They go to secondary school and they go to university. Mm -hmm. So you cannot be having children thinking they're just going to go to nursery and then you're finished. <laughs> you know? Or you're not going to be having children thinking when they grow up, they're going to help me. You know? Mm -hmm. You have to have children that you can be able to meet their needs. You have to also 
know that children fall sick, mm -hmm. you know, you will need money to take them to the hospital. You need money for food. It's not just for one person. You need money for clothing. They're not going to be wearing the same clothes for like a number of years, you know? <laughs> Things wear off, you need to change. Shoes, their feet grow big, you need to buy new shoes. Mm -hmm. um, all these things, books. Hey, these days the books for school. <laughs> so you just have to budget yourself and just see what do you earn. Even if you're aspiring to, to get a better job, you also just have to know, you know, your, your means. What are you able to afford? Or you and your spouse, you know? Yes. There is um... a... Senior Bishop, I've come across people who say that it is sin, so I don't know. Okay. Some people call it a sin that you sin against the Lord. Okay, Sister Esther is saying some people say it's sin to have uh, to use um, contraception. What do you guys uh, it is. say? I think it's not up to you because um, people like people could even be on you know birth control, whatever um, it is, it, whatever if it's the the shot, uh, IUD, and they still get pregnant. It's it's, it's not up to us. So I, I understand what Pastor Catherine is saying about, you know, with financial wise, but it's just, I just think that it's, it's out of our place because we have to understand, like, there's a lot of people too that want to have children. And then we're here restricting our bodies, especially as women. We don't understand the science behind when we take birth control, the effect, the long-term effect, because even when you, when, if you do um, look into, you know, how, you know, baby is made, it is so, I, I just think it, it, it is meant to be because that one time when a woman ovulates, you know, it, and then someone, you know, you get pregnant, it's that, that one day, you know, um, when she's fertile. So we don't, I don't, I, I believe that, you know, this is like a controversial topic. I myself, don't agree with taking birth controls because um, the science behind it. And then you're just, you're just like trying to, you know, control, you're trying to control your life, okay. you know? So that's what I have to say. Okay, Sister Abby says, did, did you say it's a sin to use birth control or you say it's? Yes, yes. Okay. Because Sister. you're trying to control your life, like we're, we don't control our life. You don't even have to be on birth control and, mm -hmm. you know, you don't get pregnant. You could be on birth control and get pregnant. It's, it's not up to us. I've, I've seen, you know, a baby born with an IUD on its head. That's um, mm -hmm. that they, they put in the, um, the, the woman on, on its head. People so have been used... on birth control and got pregnant. So the mother People used the IUD. And yes, and still fell pregnant. The baby still, and the it was the baby was born with it on its head. I'm gonna send you the picture, blessed Bishop, and if I have time. Right. So it's not up to us. You could take all the birth control you need. If if it's if God's will, you have a child. Some people they're not on birth control and they can't get pregnant. They've been married for six years and they're just not having a baby because it takes. It takes that one day, that one night, you know, when the woman's ovulating, people's cycles are different. So it's so much. I don't believe that it's up to us. Like we should just stay out of it. Yes, I get it financial wise, but you're, you're just, you're trying to control yourself. Like we are not in control of ourselves at all. We should stay out of it. Can Pray to God, something? seek guidance. Point and hope of for the correction. Best. I never said taking birth control. Just to clarify that, please. Let me okay. just say something. Uh, 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 okay, okay, Sister Esther. Okay, so we, we want to hear, because we are fellowshipping, we want to hear what say you, right? I'll weigh in. I'll, I'll, I'll weigh yes, in. What, uh, uh, probably somebody is asking, what is the position of the ministry? Yeah. All right, so okay, for me, but, yes. I've come across people who have given birth to a kids, then kids, and like they, they are not able to take care of the kids. Mm -hmm. And so, and uh, in some case, I also heard that it's just good to talk to your doctor. 
Because the first thing to put in mind is that for a baby to be born, for a person to, to become a being, the Lord must be present. Mm -hmm. It's not anyone's will. So I don't think by using birth control or by going for family planning, you're disrupted or, or what, disrupted with the Lord's will. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, because of the world we are living in, and uh, there are a lot of things, people might, you, you can give birth to even 10 or 15 kids. And you're not ha you are not able to take care of them. You subject them to frustration, to a lot of stress. You're not able to serve the Lord. So I don't think the the thing is, um, I heard and I agree with it that you just talk with your doctor. There are different um, methods, and what is best for you, you use that. But I don't think it is sin because for a child or for a person to be born, the Lord must be present. Mm -hmm. And he must be the one forming the child. So I don't think you've disrupted in any way with the Lord's plan. And that is my take. That's my, my, my suggestion. That's my thought. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, can I also say, can I ask Kath, um, Pastor Catherine? So you said um, that you didn't say birth control. So what other, so what, what is family planning then? There's so many ways to do family planning. Yes, there are many ways. Yes. So, like, like what? Yes, by you counting your months. <laughs> by your what? Sorry. Counting the month, counting the days. Yes. Oh, okay. Counting There's the, so, so many the ways, and that's why you'd actually. I agree with Sister Esther. You have to go to your doctor and see what is suitable for you. For me, <laughs> I don't even like medicine, so I would not even think consider popping any pills in my body. <laughs> because of all the side effects that you can get as a woman. Uh -huh. um, but I would actually seek advice from the doctor on what you know is suitable that is not going to be so abrasive to the body. Uh -huh. um, but <clears throat> if, even as the Lord uh, has given us the mind to think, uh -huh. um, you don't want to do the pills because the pills is like it you actually are kind of already pregnant and then it kills the egg. Yeah, yeah. Kills, and the baby. Also, kills the fertilized egg. Yeah, so it it um, messes up. I know and there's other ones that they, there's a coil that people put in the body mm -hmm. and it messes up your hormones. Mm -hmm. um, in the patch. So, pardon? In the patch. There's also a patch that they put on the body, like on the skin somewhere in different areas. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I think it's just to seek the advice of the doctor, what could be suitable for you if it's not going to mess up your hormones, it's not going to make you, you know, mm -hmm. sick, all this stuff. But we have to have some sort of family planning because you can't just be having kids um, or even abstaining prayer fasting you have to do definitely something. that's i mean we're not supposed to be having sex all the time anyways as believers <laughs> i mean you know not even sleeping in the same bedroom like i mean look at the fast that we were just on that we are continued to be on you're not supposed to be really you know having sex with your spouse i mean it's up to you but that's you know in obedience to the lord so i mean i get what you're saying but my opinion i i would I wouldn't like, you know, do that. I mean, abstinence, yes, that is because um, we're not supposed to be having sex all the time anyways. Well, uh, the frequency is uh, it's not something the Bible says whether we should. Uh... <laughs> that is another question, yeah? That is another question, for, especially for premarital counseling. <laughs> but... What the Bible says, I remember, I don't know if it's Paul who said, do not deprive. Yes. So yes. you also have, you know, that's why we, we are born again Christians. We seek the guidance and the leading of the Lord. Of the Lord, yes. So, you know, as you're seeking the Lord, you know the time that you feel like, I have not been fasting, I need to fast, mm -hmm. you know? And if you're in tune with the Lord, you feel that urgency within you that I need seclusion i need time to myself with the lord in prayer with agreement with your husband mm -hmm. we need to take this time you know because it's that's why it's so important to get married with another believer who has the same values mm -hmm. so that you can be able to fast and pray together you know 
Yeah. But um, in terms of uh, abstaining, um, <coughs> you, have to, you know, you have to be in agreement because Paul said you cannot deprive one another because you don't want somebody to go outside. Um, and because we're still in the flesh, we need the Lord to help crucify the flesh and control us and navigate us the way we're supposed to go. Amen. Indeed. Um, let, let, I want us to look at this quickly. Uh, can you all read? Yeah. Who can read for us? I'll gladly read. No, I'll ask. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll ask you to read at the end. I'll ask. Um, who is this? Veronica. I'll ask Veronica to read for us. If she can hear me, I hope she's still here. I think I saw her. So. Okay. Otherwise, then let me ask uh, Esther Blessing to read. Yes, I can hear you, Bless Bishop. Okay, can you read for us here? Uh, Ministry of Repentance and Holiness. Uh -huh. Is it that one? Yes, yes. King's, uh, King's Outreach Church, uh -huh. Nairobi Main Altar. Uh -huh. Marriage and Counseling Manual mm -hmm. 2016. Yes. So, so I want us to read something from this manual. Okay. So this is, so you can now take this and say the ministry's position. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> somebody, somebody. Okay. Let's go to the end here. I'll ask uh, Pastor Catherine to read here. Let's see. I hope everybody can see you. Like, I must see you. Where we? Shall I read? No, zoom out a little bit, please. Mm -hmm. Just a bit more. A bit more. <laughs> yeah, please. Thank you. Welcome. Family planning. It is preserved for the couples. It is influenced it Bye. is influenced by uh, <laughs> by many factors like family income levels of education career career beliefs reality etc mm -hmm. couples should be able to bring forth children they are able to provide for in terms of food clothing shelter and good education hallelujah so that that is the final page page 20 you can go mm -hmm. to that okay so so this is the position of the ministry, you can say, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he says it's reserved for the couple, meaning uh, husband and wife can decide which method they are going to take, right? Uh, and as somebody said, of course, with good uh, doctor's advice, yeah, mm -hmm. seeking medical advice. Why? Why? Why should we seek medical advice? Because there are a lot of conditions that affect the body. Yeah. Gynecology conditions, as well as. Um, Urologic conditions that affect men, hmm. and uh, and as it says here, we need to be realistic, have realistic expectations hmm. uh, of uh, for the children we want to have. Mm -hmm. You know, if you watch on TV, there are some shows, yeah, family yeah. that that doesn't use you know family planning methods, and they just have children as they come. They are uh, no, there's another one very famous on, I don't know what channel is that. The one who had like 18 children. Something like that. Yeah. And, but they are, they are able to support their children. Yeah. They are able to afford to have many children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in some countries, the more children you have, the more money you get, money, the more money you get from the government. Yeah. Like uh, Europe. Yes. <laughs> like here Plus, where I am also. Uh -huh. Really? Uh, yes. Wow. People are giving birth seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and and then uh, in some in some countries like in Namibia, the more children you have, Suffer. the more you need to work, and yeah, the more it depends on you. The, nobody is going to give you any money. <laughs> yeah, Africa for you. <laughs> <laughs> There's no money to, to to apparently encourage you. Mm. Uh, in some places like the U.S., if I'm not mistaken, they will only give you money if 
if you are a single parent, you are a single parent, a single mother, and you have uh, children, then uh, yeah. I'll ask my auntie. Then uh, they call it the welfare state. So they will give you money. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, to give you money for, for the children that you have. Otherwise, if you are married and you have children, they don't give you money. If you have a husband. So there's have... no tax incentives. <laughs> I don't know so much. Maybe Abby will correct me on this. But I know that um, there is such a thing as uh, giving money to single parents. Okay. And now, those are the realities yeah, that we live in. Mm. <clears throat> um, couples should be able to bring forth uh, children that they can afford. Yeah. There are countries where it's so expensive. It's really expensive. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, as human beings, we are the only, we are the only uh, creatures that have to pay for our living. <laughs> mm. That have to pay for our living. Unlike all the other creatures. All the other creatures, they live for free. Yep. They and roam eat. around. They can breed. Eat and... grass. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have the same luxury of just having children as many as you have. You cannot just say, let them come and we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. There are real consequences, yeah? Yeah. Now, what are the different methods of family planning? Uh, somebody talked about the coil. There are two types of coils. There's copper, there's uh, hormone. You can really distill them down into two, hormonal methods and non-hormonal methods, right? Mm. The hormonal ones are the injection that you have to inject yourself every now and then. The patch that Pastor Sagi was talking about <clears throat> is hormone that is released periodically. And then the pill that is also hormonal. And also some IUDs that are hormonal. Right? And then there are some pills that you have to take uh, in, a, in, a, in a particular fashion. You must take them on exact dates. Mm. Uh, as prescribed. Mm. If you don't do that, then <clears throat> you end up harming yourself even more. Wow. Um, mm. Yes. And then there are those. The, 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 the and ones. all this contraception method as for the women only? Um, yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> apart from, uh, apart from <laughs> this, there is, there is one where they cut the tubes of the woman. And if they cut, then that means you'll never have children ever again. Yep. Close the shop. And it can and also happen in men. And well they also men. cut the, the what's for, for men, yeah. They also the vas deferens, they always, yeah, they do that for men too. The vas deferens, yes. And then they, yeah. there's the IUD that uses copper. It's not hormonal, but almost works in the same way, but not really, it's not hormonal. <clears throat> it acts locally by, by, by um, causing the, uh, the thickening of the isthmus of the oviduct, okay? Now. Scientific terms. <laughs> yes. I, I just have to say it's smooth because uh, uh, for you to get it perfectly, I will have to draw. It will take a while to draw, okay? Well, just give us a diagram that's already <laughs> drawn. There is a diagram that's already drawn. Let me see if you can understand my, my medical diagrams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, let me stop this. Okay, so there are hormonal and non-hormonal, right? For men, the only thing they do for men is two, of course, the, 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 uh, the condom and then the cutting the vast difference. The, the man can sacrifice on that also. Women would do too many things. There's too many things that you have to be done as a woman. <laughs> but if you're talking about surgery, you're talking about cutting, uh, it comes with... Mm -hmm. Permanent. Permanent, it comes with... Yes, it be permanent. Skin. We'll say we're finished. <laughs> now, now, when we are talking about the hormonal method, you need to, 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 before I show you the diagrams, there are some basic rules to establish. Number one, all hormonal methods are risky. Mm. All hormonal methods are risky. What do I mean? Hormonal methods, they use uh, progesterone, and estrogen, they, they increase what we call hypercoagulability. They, they, cause, they, they, they increase your blood's ability to clot. Uh. 
what is the what is the deal with blood clotting i mean you can get you can get breast cancer yes yeah it can also it increases the risk of breast cancer uh, and it also when you get bl blood clots blood clots are one of the one of the things as anybody nobody should ever 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 want to develop blood clots never yeah. because mm. it stops the blood going to the heart is it yeah, uh, is, is it that's stroke? It. But that's not that's that's not the the the, the bad the, the worst part. The worst part is this. Yes, shock. It can go to the brain. The clot starts in the in the legs, and then goes up to the brain. That's what we call a stroke. And yeah. uh, mm. <clears throat> that, or it can go to the lungs, and then it gets stuck in the lung. Mm. And then it gives you breathing problems. Wow. And you can. It can only be removed by two ways. Either you have a, a surgery to go in, surgery to go in and, and take out the clot, or they, they give you a lot of uh, blood thinners, which can increase your risk of bleeding, which can also kill you if not done well. So that one is out of the question. Next. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and when, when, your, when, your ability, when your blood's ability to cl clot has been increased, Mm. And then you fall pregnant. Pregnancy is also a state of hypercoagulability. Also, the blood also is a greater, has a greater chance of clotting. So you have your, uh, your, what, your, 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 your pills, and then you add pregnancy on top of that later. And then you're really um, increasing your chances. Far more, many more chances. Uh, your chance is far higher than an average woman who does not have that. Mm. Blood clots. Okay, um, and cancer, the risk of cancer, yeah, and also osteoporosis, meaning mm. causes your 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 bone to become weak. The bones mm. become weak and and becomes brittle, brittle, can mm. break easily. Uh, but how do they work? How do they prevent pregnancy? It is by um, by making sure that the the wall of the uterus does not get thick enough to accommodate the baby that is formed. Those are not the hormonal methods. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so according to the menstrual cycle, the wall of the uterus keeps going, keeps increasing, keeps increasing until now when you stand for menstruation and then it sloughs off. Yeah? Mm. That's why there is bleeding. But now these hormonal methods, now they prevent that. And because they prevent that, it increases your risk of getting cancer in the uterus and also the breast. This is uterus, uterine cancer and breast cancer. Uh, and now some women, they notice this, that when, when they use the, the pill, especially during the periods of, uh, for those that, that don't plan their weddings well, they try to save the day by using the pill. Uh, and then they find themselves, when they use the pill for those two weeks, when they stop using the pill, they become depressed, they, they have mood swings, and the bleeding becomes heavier, and, and it affects their, their relationship with their husband. Because, because, uh, it, mm. it messes up the hormonal balance of the body. Yes. Uh, and yes. So now when, when so, so as I was saying, so during menstruation, the wall becomes thicker and then sloughs off at the end of your cycle. And so it prevents that. The hormones prevent that from happening. And the more you, the more you prolong that, whenever you are going to stop, whenever you stop the pill, then there will be heavier bleeding, heavier bleeding. And they are essentially what we call aborticians. They cause abortion because... The baby does not get a chance to, um, to implant. Yeah. That's why, personally, I don't advocate for such methods. But let me give you a fun fact. Not fun fact. It's not fun. This is not a fun fact. Let me give you, um, what, do, what do you call it? Uh, additional information. Mm. Right? Additional info is this, that when uh, the, the blood, the, the, the hormonal methods, the, l l let me say this, contraception. I'm talking about contraceptive methods now. They were designed by what we call eugenics, by the eugenics. Eugenics, have you heard of the word eugenics? 
You guys heard of eugenics? Nope. Eugenics is a movement that tries to control world population. I'm just uh -huh. giving you the facts, okay? I'm just giving you the facts so you know what you're dealing with. Uh, eugenics, eugenics. They, they try to control world population, but part of their world population control is by raising a super breed of people. They want a special breed of human beings with special qualities and characteristics. Uh, when Hitler was um, exterminating the Jews, and exterminating the, the, the black population, his desire was so that the pure German breed will populate the earth. <laughs> will populate the earth and uh, and, and you only have black people in zoos, in a zoo like monkeys. Hey! hey. Oh, yes, yes. And and yeah. and part of and part of the mission now to achieve that, they had to. They were using, you know, they were advocating for abortion, <clears throat> and of course, killing people, killing all the lame people, all these, you know, somebody blind, kill them. Somebody who's crippled, kill them. The black people. These are all, you know, defiled people. They are considered defiled. They are not considered pure. Wow. So, uh, but then they work together with the American abortion industry uh, at that time to also the one that was pushing for abortion. Uh, Margaret Sang Margaret Sangers. Mar How do you write Margaret? Margaret. Margaret, yeah. <laughs> so if you look up for this name, this is the woman that started Planned Parenthood. The American Planned Parenthood. She is a eugenist. Planned Parenthood. Uh, she's, she's a eugenist. And uh, Planned Parenthood is the biggest provider of abortions. Abortion in the USA. And uh, together with the work of uh, uh, Mr. Bill Gates, uh, Gates and the Gates Foundation, and their foundation, uh, they are pushing for contraceptions into the African countries so that they decrease the population in Africa. They are saying the world population is growing so fast and we must start with Africa to stop that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are saying that Africa must be the target so that the world population can be decreased. And um, they don't want... Africa was the target for his vaccines. Now the pills, everything. And they've been doing this for a long time. You find this information on the internet. This is free. I mean, this is public. Internet. Yeah, yeah. I saw it on Instagram. Just that people are not uh, looking in the right place. Okay, so so they want to decrease population, and and so they came up now with uh, all these contraceptive methods. Um, to to do that. To achieve, to achieve um or to decrease world population, to decrease world population, right? Right? Um, yes. And so, but I don't, I don't advocate uh, uh, hormonal methods, not just because it's, it's part of the eugenics movement to uh, decrease world population and all these things, but because of the risk, health yeah. risks. Mm. Um, this one is already repugnant on its own, yeah? Mm. <clears throat> but uh, the, the uh, contraception has so been widely um, accepted that uh, when, when you hear a, a contraception, you don't hear eugenics, you don't hear world population. You just hear, uh, I need to have a right to my, my body and all these things, yeah? Or I need to uh, be able to support the people that I can afford, which is very true. One thing that I found also shocking is that they prescribe some pills to help with bleeding. Yeah. But. Okay. Huh? To help with bleeding, like during the menstrual cycle. Yeah, like I find they prescribe it to young girls and I'm like, why prescribe the pill to them? Um, <laughs> you know? So it, some. There is a condition called PCOS. So that the, one of the reasons why I need to see doctors is because there are some certain conditions that are treated with contraceptive pills. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Also, Bishop, can I say something? Yeah. 
there are other ways. Um, I don't know if it's proper, popular in the UK. Excuse me if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Um, naturopathic doctors, that's how you pronounce it? Which one? Naturopathic doctors. They go about like herbal like remedies. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. um, yes, you do have conditions like um, PCOS and they give you the birth control to, you know, regulate your period flow and, you know, um, mm -hmm. have the, the eggs ovulate because that's what the, the problem is if there's high testosterone in mm -hmm. the blood. But there are other herbal um, remedies like you have Vitex. Vitex is a, is a herb. Mm -hmm. it's, it's natural that, you know, it increases your progesterone level. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be um you know like medical like you know in you know medicine but here in america the naturopathic doctors they're not even really uh, to to say like they can like practice like everywhere in the state mm -hmm. that's how much you know like yeah medicine yeah it's weird it's because you would think the natural way people would want to go about that but they're they rather the birth control like that rather than um Vitex. Vitex is, is a natural herb. It's natural. It's a tree. Actually, so. there are trees like uh, the neem tree. Yeah. <clears throat> Some natural contraceptive methods. There is a neem tree and there is a... What, what's that? Another tree. Moringa. Yeah? But... Man, when you take those ones, they, they, it almost shoots to your head. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they are also abortificients. Really? Yes. I take Moringa in my smoothie. That's why it is not advised for a woman of childbearing age to take these because, <laughs> especially for somebody uh, who's married and wants to have children. The, mor the Moringa, you said? Yeah, Moringa and neem tree, yes. Moringa is high in protein. And yeah, you can take them, I guess, now when you're not married. But when you get married, then uh, you must be mindful of the fact that it's also an abortificient. They have good properties. Yes, they have lots of health properties. One of them, one of, the, one of their properties now is uh, they are ab abortificients. So they decrease fertility. And the neem, the neem oil, I find it so repugnant. Repugnant. Like repugnant. Yeah, repugnant. That I feel like smells like diesel. I've never like I, it I got it and I can't even use it. It just <laughs> goes. It it starts making me feel dizzy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, 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 the moringa doesn't taste so bad. I, it's, it's the leaves, yeah. Like for me, it shoot me. I put like a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. And it literally made me feel like I was going dizzy. Yeah, they say there are many, many, they say that it balances your blood glucose and all these wonderful things. But right. just be mindful that it can also do that. Uh, I don't know what other uh, herbal methods uh, that they use. Uh, some There's a lot of natural, them. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you have to- Fertility? Yeah. So you have to find out whether the, the, the natural contraceptive methods are abortificians. They work as abortificians, which is highly likely. <laughs> because as a woman, the only thing that controls your, 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 your fertility, the main thing that controls your fertility is your, um, your cycle. So if you can get something that can disturb your cycle, then it's going to affect your, uh, your fertility. But other things that affect your fertility is also infection, yeah? Um, infections like the pelvic inflammatory diseases and other things such as um, uh, strictures and, well, a lot of things. Um, the diadelphis, uterine diadelphis. I hope I spelled that right. Um, uh, Abby, uh, where you have two uterus. In the oh, I had that from... Uh, Dr. Jarrett, you know, when he was explaining about the uterus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why we need to, to, to contact the doctors. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not saying infections are treated with, uh, with contraceptives, or, but <clears throat> I'm just saying that uh, as part of your health check and health uh, assessment, uh, it is important to, as a married woman uh, and with your husband, 
see a doctor, get some wonderful tests done to identify what um, your condition is and seek medical advice. But I would say uh, the best method, of course, is that one of counting days because counting days, <clears throat> uh, that is the one that works best for, I think it's very, very safe. <laughs> Mm. Um, what about everybody. sorry right everybody. exactly that's what i was gonna say because this one. some people are irregular um yes. for, for those that are that have irregular cycles then that means you need a doctor's uh, checkup <laughs> yeah because if your if your if your if your periods are not if you're, they don't come on the same days they are either long or short then then that means there is a, a gynecologic issue that requires doctor's checkup. Yeah, talking about when you are married. And what are the causes of, of uh, being irregular? What uh, you we talked about uh, uh, here some infections, st strictures, uterine didelphis. We talked about um, PCOS. This is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Mm. That's the main type of one, and it um, depends maybe if it's a maybe adrenal is very common for the ladies, excuse me, um, blessed Bishop. Yeah. Um, fertility uh, um, to increase your fit. Vitex is good. And also CMOS mm -hmm. for anyone that, you know, when that time comes, so yeah. CMOS and Vitex. Definitely. Sorry. Oh, somebody, uh, Anton is asking, what's the topic? Well, we, we were discussing about, um, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> is it? I'll tell you, I'll tell you. This family is a, planning. We are talking about family planning now. We were talking about children out of wedlock. Now we are talking about family planning, brother Anton. He's a very good friend of mine from Vintuk. I'm not Vintuk, but he's in uh, Runtu now. Yes. Yeah, he came late. I saw him when he came in. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. It's all right. It's, it's good to ask. We are just laughing because um, uh, of the timing of the question. <laughs> but don't worry. Uh, is it okay to ask a woman if she's fertile before marriage? Hi. No, it's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not okay because, um, um, yeah, at, at times a woman may not even know that she's, she has a, a gyne gyne gynecology condition. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's not up to her, her fertility, unless if she's doing something to reduce her fertility, uh, uh, then you, you, otherwise you'll never know until she gets some medical help, until she gets a checkup. Weight, I want to talk about weight. If, if you have increased weight, overweight, uh, obese, whatever you call it, that can also decrease your fertility. Hey. It, 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 Yes. So for us who are skinny, we are doomed. <laughs> also, if you are underweight, if you are underweight, also it can affect your fertility. So I should just try and get lower than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so you should, be, you should be what we call, uh, what's that word? Um, it's a BMI, normal BMI. You must have a normal BMI. Aim for a normal BMI, body mass yes, index, definitely. body mass index. Yeah. Also for the health of the, of the baby, women that are overweight, obese, they give birth to very big babies, which can lead to trauma and tears of their uh, organs. Uh, mm -hmm. And women who are underweight, they give birth to small babies, anemic and babies that uh, may also be, they may also give birth to um, premature babies. So, hey, the Lord healed me of anemia. Amen. So, so you must aim for a normal BMI. Yeah. Normal BMI is somewhere between 18 to 20, 20? 25. 25. 18 to 25. Uh, kilograms per square meter. <laughs> yeah, per meter to the power of two. <laughs> All right. So, um, a lot of things affect fertility. Infections, pelvic inflammatory diseases caused by bacteria, caused by viruses, strictures um, that are caused by infections also. Uh, IUDs and IUD can also cause strictures. 
Here's oh, one thing about so it looks like structures, but you say strictures. Oh, sorry, three, three strictures. Sorry, I, it's, it's my spelling error. Um, ah, okay. I was like structures, strict, and then he's saying strictures. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. So this one can be associated with uh, with IUD and infections. Yeah, IUD and infections. Are you uh, going to put the full terms for us who are not scientific? Um, IUD means intrauterine de de device. Intrauterine device. I think I've been learning this because of all the miracles. <laughs> intrauterine. <laughs> PID means pelvic inflammatory disease or diseases. Yeah. Yes. Or Yes. At least now we understand. You know, if we use business terms and we just give you abbreviations, you just feel like <laughs> it is true. It is true. I'm trying to rush, you see, because our time is running out. There's so much to cover. <laughs> um, yes. So you'll never know whether a woman is 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 is, is um, as a woman, whether it's fertile or not. Yeah. And I think it's um it's not a fair question, really. Whether you love somebody or you don't love them, it's not a fair question to ask. Are you fertile? It's like <laughs> imagine, imagine if a woman is asking you as a man, "Are you fertile?" <laughs> because it goes both, it goes both ways. Yes, you know? yes, it's it's not fair. I think it's not fair and it's not wise. Yeah, um, because sometimes it's the man who has the problem. It's not even the that's woman. That's it. That's it. Uh, you you have African cultures that blame the woman for everything. Sometimes, mm. uh, no children. Problem with the, is the woman. The man is getting sick, the woman is to be blamed. Uh, <laughs> children are struggling, the woman must be blamed. Uh, <laughs> the neighbors don't like you, the wife is the problem. So, no, 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 no. Uh, we should not play such blame, blame shift game. Mm. You know, when you are pursuing somebody for marriage and you are asking the Lord if they are the one, then you must be ready also. What if this person does not give birth, cannot, is, is infertile for one reason or another? You must be ready to accept whatever God is bringing your way. Yeah. You can adopt. Yes, you can adopt, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you never know. Some, sometimes uh, 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 infertility can also be caused by, can also be caused by, look at this, um, uh, removal of the uterus. Hysterectomy. Hysterectomy because you have. Yeah. Maybe they had uterine fibroids. Yeah. Either a cancer or maybe they had. They fell pregnant and then there was a rupture of the uterus mm. um, or the uterus had uh, fibroids and that, that just needed to be removed because they are too much, too many. Uh, or maybe, yeah, some infections, some very putrid infections. There's uh, that, that disease called endometriosis. Endometriosis, yeah. Endometriosis. Uh, somebody is struggling. What is endometriosis? Just remember. <laughs> Just remember chocolate like cysts. That's all. <laughs> you're taking us back to biology. Uh, uh, Blessed Bishop, you're taking us back to biology. Huh? Yes, it is important. I didn't do biology. I did all business, man. Well done. Yes, no, I wish I did. <laughs> I wish I did. I this is very good. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, and I'm sure back in uh, high in high school high school you have done some uh, biology, Catherine. Huh? No, that's what I mean. Like here, yeah, you yeah. are allowed to choose from second year. So oh, I okay. chose music, uh -huh. business, and economics. So uh huh. I see. So you didn't do. There, there was no science. Uh -huh. I only did it in first year, but you know that is not enough to. No, no, no. There's so many things yeah. to grapple. With. Repetition is mother of all learning. So if you don't get to do it for a long yeah. time, then uh, you you will not understand much. Uh, if you are if you are if you have irregular menses, does that mean you are infertile? No, no. does not mean you are infertile. It does not mean you are infertile. Now somebody talked about it was Abby that uh, you have one shot at uh, uh, being pregnant in one cycle. Actually, the story is bigger than that. Uh, when you look at the menstrual cycle, the window of opportunity for not falling pregnant is about five to six days in a month, in one cycle. Wow. 
out yeah. of 28 days of a cycle, if a woman has 28 days of, one, of a cycle, then the only window of opportunity where you can say she will never fall pregnant is the first week after the end of your menstruation. Mm. Do they call that, is that what they call the safe period or what, what do they call that um, tissue? I didn't look well into that literature, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 uh, <laughs> yes, but, but probably we are referring to the same you thing. You mean uh, safe days? And yeah, something like that. So that's safe why you find, days. you find some of these, uh, un, uh, even born again people, they say it was just a one night stand and, the, and she was not on her uh, periods and not realizing that um, you are more, the God designed you as a woman, your cycle so much to accommodate pregnancy on two thirds of your, of your, of your periods. So two thirds of your periods is, um, uh, is a period of falling pregnant. Now I'm not going to draw the, the cycle here, maybe for another day. It's, it's going to take us, <laughs> it's going to take us time. Uh, but let me see, let me see if I have, if I have the diagram here. Okay, let me see if I have the diagram here. These are the things you're talking about. Uh, nope, not here. Okay, this is just some diagrams here. Okay, nope, not here. So another time, another time we'll look at it. But the safest method of contraception that I would, uh, that I think uh, would work for everybody if you don't have problems with your uh, uh, with your faculties with your members of your body and then if you don't have any issue if you don't have any medical condition then counting days will work very well i think for us the ladies the days always change um like first i think when you first start your menstrual periods they begin with the longest day then they reduce and then they reduce. <laughs> you, you can still work it out. But you see, the, yeah. the, 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 the what? The, the period that changes, obviously, is that period between the end of your cycle and ovulation, yeah? Mm. The period between the end of the cycle mm. and the ovulation, and then the other, the other period between the ovulation and the beginning, and the end of the cycle is always two weeks. Yes, it is true. Sometimes uh, the period we, we have, we call them the follicular phase and the um, mm -hmm. ovulatory phase. Yes, so the, the ovulatory phase is always two weeks. And then the follicular phase can range from two weeks to uh, two weeks to three weeks or months, uh, depending on what condition you have. That's true. But Unless, uh, but you see, there, there is, despite the buffering, if, if, despite the fluctuation, you'll be able to understand how your days go. And you'll be able to, to, mm. to measure well. I'm, I'm not going to go into details now, okay? But, uh, but if, uh, if, if, you get, if you get to have a premarital counseling with me, with your future husband or future wife, then we'll get more <laughs> into <laughs> into how to do this, how to work out well the issue of counting days, because- I'm telling you, majority of these things just fell on the woman. Uh, no, no, this is teamwork. This has to be teamwork. Mm. No, I mean, most of the things we have to go through. Yes, I understand. <laughs> you, there's a lot on your plate you have to handle, yeah? Uh, but this requires a lot of teamwork. Family planning requires teamwork. Mm. Uh, as a man, you should never just think to yourself that all I have to do is A, B, C, D, and then my wife takes care of the children, my wife takes care of what. You have to work together. Yeah? No, no, no. I mean in terms of the counting of days. <laughs> yes, if, yes. Mm -hmm. If the contraceptives, like when you go, you are the one mostly who's going to be, you know, being given what to happen for your body. Mm -hmm. As the men you said, it's the either condom or the snip. Vasectomy. So. Yeah, or vasectomy, or yeah, or 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 what? Or counting days. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder why they came up with more contraceptives for on, on for women 
uh, then for men, when it's um, men speaking under correction of what's happening in the world that uh, go around, like sleep more around. Um, so I don't understand. It. Now, to, 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 to probably, uh, there are different dimensions to understand that, isn't it? The one dimension is a spiritual one. The other one, of course, is the biological dimension, yeah? I mean, one, one is biological. Biologically speaking, um, the way men and women behave is totally different. The response, totally, totally different. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, what hormone could you give a man <laughs> to reduce his testosterone? <laughs> That has to do with blood flow too. The same way they keep up. The same way. A man, a man has no such thing as a cycle, as a as a monthly cycle. A man has nothing close I mean, to a monthly cycle that can be controlled to decrease his fertility. There is not even anything that a man can get to decrease his sperm production. If you if you do anything like that, then you are you are damaging yourself. The same way, <laughs> there is there is nothing that is ever there to decrease. Um, uh, ovulation. I mean, yeah, to decrease ovulation because when a woman is given contraceptive methods, it's not that ovulation stops. Ovulation does not stop. Ovulation continues. It's just mm -hmm. that what happens after ovulation and how the baby, whether the body is ready to receive the pregnancy or not. Yeah. So for a man, you cannot do anything practically apart from trying to put barrier method and, uh, uh, and cutting. So uh, but here's something mm -hmm. I wanted to say. Uh, there is a legend that says uh, uh, in, the, um, in, the, in the book of Joshua, the, the book that is uh, quoted in the book of, uh, uh, is that the book of Kings? That uh, when, the, when, when, the angels, when, the, when the angels saw the daughters of men were very beautiful and were coming in to, um, to lie with the daughters of men and have children with them, and <clears throat> then they gave birth to these giants. You know, a period came when people did not want to have children and they wanted to defy God's, uh, God's uh, plan, God's command to be fruitful and fill the earth. Mm -hmm. And so what they began to do before the flood, one of the issues that, the, that, that, that Enoch was rebuking, mm -hmm. one of the things they began to do was contraceptive methods. That was changing. That were changing women's bodies. That were changing their appearance, and uh, were afflicting women for the sole purpose of uh, preventing pregnancy, so that they did not have to give birth to children, and so that they could go on and indulge in immorality as much as they wanted. Uh, mm -hmm. So that I thought that's an an, an interesting uh, 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 point to raise there. That uh, yeah. back before the flood, they also indulged in, in, uh, in contraceptive methods and, and for them it was definitely uh, to, 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 to stand against God's command. All right, what is your take on condoms? We have discussed that, um, but uh, surprise. Sorry, I didn't hear. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the barrier method, the condoms apparently are also associated uh, with, uh, uh, with side effects. Uh, I was very surprised to learn that. And as Abby Wait, said, and as Abby said, side effects. <laughs> <laughs> Just know that whatever is not God's, whatever was not created by God but was made by man, has side effects. Is <laughs> harmful to <laughs> to your body. Okay, let me let me get. That. <laughs> what whatever was not created by God. And you try to employ it, just know that uh, there are some effects associated with it. That's the only thing the man can do. And <laughs> it has to be. Hey. So I think the best thing here is just to wait upon the five days or the six days of, 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 of a woman's free period, nothing else. It's, it's, it's more than just waiting, though, because the, the, it's not torture. These are. Uh, 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 counting days. It's not torture. It's not yeah. where the men just have to for the for the other twenty days, twenty four days, twenty three days. He just has to. <laughs> the, husband, the husband has just to suffer there 
and wait for the for the one try you can try no 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 it's not like that it's not like that as i said i'm not going to go into details now because we don't need to go into those details mm-hmm. just suffice it to say that uh, it's better um they say that um where is that information that uh, condoms are also associated with some side effects for uh, who the woman or the man <laughs> for the man i think i think the woman too both as abi said uh, just as it is with the uh, with with the pills the pills the pills the pills they, it is a well established phenomenon in medicine that when a woman comes to a hospital and she's saying doctor i have stomach pain the first question the doctor always asks is are you pregnant whether you say you are born again or not whether you <laughs> you say you you're on your periods or not if that's the first question always i don't think it's only when you come with stomach pain whenever you come to the hospital the doctor always has to establish whether you are pregnant or not as a woman you are having an x ray yes are you sure you are not pregnant before that's we it. do this x ray that's it and and if you say i use a pill then that that raises the alarm you say i'm on a pill i'm on a i'm, I'm on a hormonal method that that raises the alarm because a lot of women on pills they still end up falling pregnant and they don't know that they are pregnant they don't know they are pregnant because they think the pills should stop them from falling pregnant uh, but actually it, it, it's a loophole there's a loophole there that the uh, the skip- is just a crazy thing that messes up your hormones like crazy definitely the same thing with with condoms they burst and so they also associated with uh, falling pregnant so uh, these hormonal hormonal methods are not 100% uh, they don't work 100% they work but not 100% and uh, i would say uh, you don't you would want to stay away from that risk of uh, clots okay i think we have uh, covered this well uh, okay. if uh, was there a question by somebody here it was told condoms are not avoided are not advised I think we discussed the issue of condoms now. Uh this is more like life skills and it's interesting some something I can teach about at the center. Uh-huh. The women are blessed. <laughs> uh-huh. Um we, video of a man carrying a pregnancy instead of a woman. Uh that is the confusion the enemy is trying to bring now because you have homosexuals who have a uh, they are called they are called trans they have undergone a uh, surgery they have undergone hormonal therapy to change the woman is taking testosterone to change her body to grow a beard change her voice she's still a woman and she's still a woman yes and then you find she gets married to he gets married this man who, te- who this woman who took pills to look like a man gets married to a man who took medication to look like a woman nonsense <laughs> so so now the woman who looks like a man then falls pregnant and the man and the man who looks like a woman now appears to be the wife who impregnated <laughs> great abomination right? <laughs> that is abomination of the <laughs> <high order. laughs> I'm like you are supposed to be the man and she was supposed to be the woman. Yeah, so that is that is that is not a, a woman. That is not a man, it's just a woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a woman who looks like a man. <laughs> it's still a woman. Uh-huh. Um Onan knew his wife. Okay, what about Onan? The child, okay, Genesis chapter 38 verse 9. Judah, Judah had three sons. Uh, after joseph had been sent into egypt yeah and judah's son died leaving his wife without a child and according to the uh, now moses had not yet given his law the lord had not yet given the law through moses okay so this was before moses before egypt right so this one they were still operating by what you call uh, just the, the the teachings and the customs that they held within 
amongst themselves, amongst themselves, as, as the family of Abraham. So according to the custom, the wife should be taken up by the younger brother, or by the brother of the diseased man. The brother of the diseased man took up the, the wife, but then he had to have children with her for his brother's sake so that the brother can have an heir. That's some crazy stuff. And that is now inheriting wives, yeah? And so this guy refused. He said, no, I don't want to have children for my brother, but he still wanted to enjoy uh, sexual intercourse with her. And so because of that, the Lord struck him and he died. <clears throat> then the second boy now, Onan, I think it was Onan. Um, I think it was Onan the Lord struck. Uh, he, who, who said, I don't want to have children for my brother. And so he did the withdrawal method. So he was having intercourse with the wife, but he would withdraw. Withdrawal is different from counting days. And it's not a sustained method at all. <laughs> and you cannot <laughs> rely on it. <laughs> as, a, as a married couple, you cannot rely on it. So, so withdrawal is not contraception. Withdrawal is not. And the reason why the Lord killed him is because of his intention not to have children for his brother. He was literally trying to avoid the purpose for which he got the wife. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't know what's happening here. So his disobedience was not that he was trying to uh, limit the children he wanted to have for, with his wife, but yeah. he was trying to disobey the Lord. Uh, Sister Martha. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so he was willfully disobeying the Lord in order. So I, I would not advise anybody to, to do withdrawal method because it's not sustainable. Um, it's not sustainable. And also, um, not that I pry into other people's businesses, but... <laughs> 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 but knowing that you need a lot of teamwork you need a lot of teamwork uh, as, a, as a couple when it comes to sexual intimacy uh, withdrawal almost has an element of the man just wanting to be uh, satisfied to himself yeah um, and of course not wanting to have children that is the goal of uh, withdrawal yeah Mm -hmm. but doing withdrawal for all those 20, 20 days or whatever, or 28 mm -hmm. days, not 20, not 20, 25 days or 20 whatever days, it's, it's pain. Uh, and I'm not sure if there is any, any couple that really um, uh, <laughs> uses this as a re reliable method of contraception. But mm -hmm. I don't think it works because as a man, the, the, the man, can, you can never control yourself when it comes to um, uh, to ejaculation, so it's very difficult. Um, yeah, it's very difficult. And is God displeased with it? I don't know, apart from what we see in the scriptures, but probably, <laughs> probably, uh, what, the, the, the closest thing we have to withdraw our method is that scripture in Genesis 38. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, I wouldn't advise anybody to, 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 to perfect the withdrawal method. Maybe God will strike you again. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, God will strike. Yeah, he may strike you. He may not. I don't know. So don't say Bishop told me to, <laughs> to try it. I will not tell you, you to try it. You have time to say Bishop said. You're gone. <laughs> Yes, uh, but, uh, but uh, according to the design of God, sexual intimacy in marriage should be a fulfilling, satisfying experience. Yeah, both husband and wife should be, okay. should be satisfied, should, be, uh, should have a good experience. Yeah. Mm. It's, not, it's not a service to the men only and should work together. Uh, and it's one area uh, sexual intimacy is one area in marriage that you really want to protect to ensure that conflict does not arise as a result 
that you don't find yourself arguing about your sexual intimacy. Uh, yeah. So that's why premarital counseling is very important and get all the necessary advice on how to behave well in that respect. Mm. Okay, we move on, yeah? Yeah. We march on. Hallelujah. I think we have, uh, we have gone. We have... Said that one very well. <laughs> yes. Now, what about how do you, what, what was that third question? What was that third question? Uh, let me look for it here. How do you? What do you do? My Zoom is telling me that I have to upload to read message. To what? To up to download the latest app. No, don't download it. If you download it, will log you out. Just wait. <laughs> How do I know? How do I know how to make it? <laughs> <laughs> all right i hope that question was answered martha yo martha i hope i had answered your question <laughs> or is it sister Lisa? okay uh what about whom to marry now this is a big topic uh it's almost four hours uh it's almost four hours and i'm hesitant to go into this topic now okay uh, let, let me let me let's let's put that for ne for next week for next time. Uh, next but let week. me no not not next week. <laughs> next time is uh, is <laughs> that is the topic I really wanted so much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You see, I, yeah, guys, we, we do wait for another three weeks. No, 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 no. We we asked on the group <laughs> when when Sister Eunice asked, can we please start with. <laughs> The I last two, you people did not say anything. <laughs> I thought we would be able to budget the time and finish them all. Yes, yes. 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 Because yes. for, for real, this is the that. one I was most interested Even in as well. Me, okay. okay, let's jump in then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marjorie. And uh, Esther, blessing. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 for me here it's three o'clock uh, in the afternoon. I, I have, I have, I have three more hours of daylight. <laughs> so. Oh, summer makes it better. Oh. Yes, yes. So we jump into it. Yeah, we jump into it. So how do I know whom? When you see him, you will know. I'm joking. <laughs> I agree. You don't, you don't need to pray. You don't need to ask any advice. You don't need anything. You just open your eyes, and there he is, or there she is. <laughs> Is it? I wish oh. it was that simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you could read somebody's mind. <laughs> you see, Adam spoiled for us. You see how much Adam spoiled for us? <laughs> Let us blame Adam now. But then I think if we were in that same situation, because, you mm -hmm. know, people kind of say, oh, Adam, Adam, Eve. But I'm thinking like maybe if we were in that same position, we would have done the same thing. We would have done the same, really. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with you 100%. I agree with you because Adam is the epitome of human perfection. Yeah, I mean, with respect mm -hmm. to what God wanted to achieve. So uh, none of us would have been wiser than Adam. <laughs> yes. Uh, now we have to spend years in fasting and prayer. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, it's not but thank God, we actually can have this opportunity to fast and pray. We're not like the ignorant ones who don't want. Imagine. No. Imagine. You, mm. you, you see, whenever you see somebody who rush into marriage, who rush into a relationship, 140, they go like this, 140. They will always come out 140. Mm. Unless intervention. Unless they take, uh, um, what's the word? Deliberate action, mm. close the loopholes. Mm. Unless they do that, they will, they will find themselves threatened with divorce. Mm. Coming out 140. Or either divorce or the relationship will break up uh, prior to the wedding. Because... Uh, there's nothing that can ever, ever replace taking due diligence, making sure you take due diligence. But I would prefer it breaks before marriage. You don't waste my 
my hard earned mm. cash on everything and then you know we walk, we break off actually i had um um i think it was somebody who told me that there's a couple in this ministry yeah that got married for one month and then divorce in court lord have mercy i was Ooh. like that should be very like th- th- the reason it's so important to do all this ask oh. questions yeah know about the other person is so important yes one month have you even had an argument or you just had one argument and you're like i'm done i can't take this anymore i call it quits mm-hmm. the first is the last one yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then like i don't even understand them because are they not aware of the vows they said before god on that day mm-hmm. i mean what could have happened but what could have happened to jump straight to the boss one month one <laughs> hey oh. they really have got it so they just met and i got married those ones they went in 140 maybe 180 but <laughs> they got married in this ministry Yep. But you see the things we are discussing here they affect all these people. Yeah. Mm. They went without preparation. Yes. They went without knowing the other person or even trying to understand. Yes. When, when you think I am so spiritual, I'm so mature, I'm such an elder. I I'm I'm so advanced in years. I don't have time for somebody to tell me how to do this, how to do that. and then you you go with this woman or man that you think now is going to solve your problems or whatever you are lying to yourself <laughs> one yeah. man one yeah. wow you might as well have just made this decision before you got married at It's... least you'd have you know but now they can't marry you know you've gotten married before the lord god jehovah hey you're finished <laughs> very oh <laughs> unless you go back together you cannot marry again it is no. finished you cannot commit adultery and it will be shame it will be a shame to pray for the other spouse to die so that you can marry again eh uh, definitely that's another thing by the way <laughs> you're like patiently waiting for them to die they are yeah, so you can move on with life they are oh. not born again how can you pray such prayers maybe you are the one who should die so that you can't <laughs> you can't but i think um i think in i think in your mind it's it's there because it's like this person is the this person is the only roadblock to you finding someone else so mm-hmm. in the back of your mind you're thinking about it but then it's if even you, even say it out if you even think about like, oh, already committed oh, yes, oh. that's yeah that's why it's complicated if it's a thought by divorcing quickly would would save them Yeah well well they see the grass is greener the other side somebody yeah. else but they they don't know somebody said the grass is only greener the other side because the other people are taking care of their grass <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> so, So no matter how difficult you are not born again. I don't oh. know if they ever knew the Bible. Till death do us part is a very big thing. Very huge. <laughs> so they went through marriage counseling. I don't know if it was entering here exiting here. Mhm. Mm-hmm. One month of marriage. They didn't hear anything because they were rushing one eight years of bishop said. Now no, how do I would ask these questions. If somebody if I hear you tell me of people like that, I would ask the first question. How long did they have premarital counseling? How long have they known each other? Yeah. Mm. Um and where did they meet? Really? Hmm? In the church. And what are their intentions, their motives? Yeah. For for meeting and for deciding this is the person I want to marry. Uh, the Lord really speak But you see the, we are talking about infatuation and 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 it comes into play again how do i know whom to marry you you have to ask yourself how do i know uh <clears throat> the truth is you cannot know someone completely sorry the lord yes uh only the lord who can reveal the other person fully to you mm. now 
when you are single and you are you are a single man, you are a single woman, you are ready for marriage, uh, you have a job, you have your flat, you have your you have your fully furnished <laughs> house, flat, whatever. You are a man, you have your job, you have your car, you are you're impressing everybody. Okay, you have all those everybody. things, Bishop. Yes, yes, yes. I, I don't need to have a car. I don't. <laughs> well, just suppose you do. Now you feel ready. <laughs> mm. Car is a liability, by the way. Definitely. So if you don't oh. have a car, at least we know we have some money. <laughs> what do you think? I'm ready now. I'm ready. I've been disappointed by three women in the past. <laughs> I, think, oh. I think. I have one. I, oh. I was on Facebook. No, yeah. actually. Um, so this person, he asked for a friend request. I, I, I accepted. And then he comes, he, he comes, he writes me. He's like, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't really like people writing to me just, you know, randomly. Mm -hmm. So I just wrote to him and I was like, praise the Lord. How can I help you? He was like, <laughs> He was like, I didn't ask for your help. <laughs> Excuse me. I couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> okay. You didn't ask for your help. <laughs> and he unfriended me. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. I knew what he was coming for, you know. <laughs> So, Hallelujah. Praise I the just, Lord. How can I help I you? <laughs> I <don't, I> just... <laughs> he was that angry over how can I help you? <laughs> yeah, he was so, like, I just saw his ego, you mm -hmm. know, like, um, you know, like sometimes the way you'd answer a phone is like, oh, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. then he's actually in Dubai. I don't know if he's in the ministry, but mm -hmm. he seemed like he was in the ministry. And I was literally, I think I had even seen his post. Um, and he, he said like, oh, I've been searching. I've been asking so many women and they have been rejecting me. I can do, I will do anything. Um, I will do anything oh. until we get to the altar. And I was like, what kind of nonsense is this? He was posting that on social media. Yeah, he posted that on Facebook. So when he came for my inbox, I just was like, you're going you, to- You were on high alert. <laughs> now we are talking about we are now talking about not being ignorant and not being yeah. naive yeah because imagine if you if you are not aware of this and you didn't know that you know you didn't suspect some of these uh some of these behaviors then you you god only knows what what he would no. have done even if he just even if i was not aware all these men who have been coming to the inbox, they're just so irritating. Hallelujah. Hello? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> My sister. Yeah, don't even remember. I'm like, oh. <laughs> they, are speak they don't know how to speak. Eh? Or they are just... Now, here's the thing, too. Uh... <clears throat> to be honest, I would never give anybody a chance. On Facebook, they will write no, until no. they just turn red. No, no, no. Social media things. Mm. No, no, no. We said the other, we were saying the other day. It's like uh, we said if you start a, a relationship on the phone, there's a high chance it will end on the phone. Mm. Yeah. And I'll write you a text. It's over. <laughs> yeah. There, there are certain principles we have to set in place. As you have, it's over. if if a man is to ever come approach you. There must be honor and, and fear of God. Yeah? Amen. yeah, honor and respect. A man who's coming and is treating you like a prostitute or treating you like some common mm -hmm. girl out there, uh, then yeah. <clears throat> such men should uh, go back where he came from. <laughs> <laughs> should go back where he came from. Uh, mm. we, 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 <clears throat> as men, we need to learn how to respect and honor uh, women and uh, respect their spiritual authority. If a man is going to, to seek your hand in marriage, he must honor the spiritual authority over you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. 
and yes, you must respect that. You must recognize it, your spiritual authority, and even your parents. Assuming you have good relationship with your parents. A man who does not respect your parents, does not respect your, 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 your spiritual leadership, uh, is a man who is probably a control freak. Yeah? Or a man who's really going to lead you astray. Maybe he's going to lead you into some liberal liberalism where you end up making you do things you ought not to do. Mm -hmm. uh, as a woman, there is there's a story I, I watched of a young man. He married his wife, childhood, childhood friend. Childhood sweetheart. <laughs> That's it. Childhood sweetheart. But here's something strange. He he kidnapped her. Huh? <laughs> 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 he kidnapped her and then the police came to take the woman from him <laughs> from his house and then years later he asked for her hand in marriage <laughs> mm. <laughs> talking about <A> somebody <laughs> he, ca he came to seek for her hand in marriage to ask her to marry him on what account on the account that they have known each other for a long time. <laughs> and so was he arrested for the kidnapping? Uh I forgot this the full story. It's, it's a story I read a long time ago. I, I okay. saw I saw the story a long time ago. Where is it? In the US or Namibia? It's in the US. It's in the US. Everything happens in the US. <laughs> <laughs> so kidnap the woman when they were young. Then later on, he came to, to ask for her hand in marriage and she accepted him. And, 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 and it puzzled me, how can you say yes to somebody like that? Somebody who kidnapped you once. Okay. Then, shortly after their wedding, the man started asking her, his wife, to strip, to strip in the club because it apparently turns him on. <laughs> to sleep where? <laughs> Strip in the club. Strip I'm telling you, wickedness. Hmm? That's crazy. So you can see this man that came to 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 to, to, to what abduct you to, uh, to 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 snatch you away. What is the word that I used before? Yeah? Kidnap. Yeah. Kidnap, Kidnap you and abduct. looking for a hand in marriage. You can see this guy does not respect you. Yeah. This guy does not respect your parents. This guy does not respect, you know, there's no honor here. And so is it any wonder that in marriage, now he's asking her to strip? And she agreed. He's, yeah. She's trying to please her husband. <laughs> please her husband indeed. <laughs> Yeah, please him but, to but, but, but to what do you think? If it's mutual <laughs> agreement, I don't I don't know what to say now. If if she agrees. She agrees to wickedness. Of course, she agrees to wickedness. That is not uh you there is no there's no loophole in the scriptures that the, the wife should do everything the husband asks. It's these things of you find some men, there are some men in the church, they are saying, My wife, I want my wife to be pleasing to me. So uh, I want her to wear miniskirt so that I, I can feel uh, I can I can feel more attracted to her <laughs> hmm. in the church. Yeah. So so we need to be very careful. So a man that is going to come, you need to show respect. You need to show honor, <clears throat> recognize and respect and honor your authority, and um, and also respect you as a human being. Hmm. Yeah. So. And because, because of uh, the man usually has the high, is the one who approaches the woman to ask for her hand in marriage. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not, uh, and it's not so easy that for a woman, you would have the man that you are definitely praying for come ask for your hand in marriage. Yeah. It's, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't happen. So you find the, the, the brothers that are coming to you asking for, for your number, asking for, uh, they're saying, Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> These are people that you don't know. Yeah. And so when you're in a situation like that, you must remember, you must protect yourself. You must be, <clears throat> make sure to protect yourself. If you don't protect yourself, 
then nobody else is going to protect you. So don't leave anything to chance as a woman. Yeah? Mm. I'm saying as a woman, don't leave anything to chance. Somebody's writing hallelujah, praise the Lord. Uh, can I have your number? Or where do you stay? Yeah, you need to protect yourself. Who is this? Some sexual predator or what? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some, some manipulator or what? Okay. You need to learn to pray. There's nothing that can substitute prayer. Uh, as a woman, when a man comes, of course, uh, you don't just, you, you're not going to be rude to people. Yeah? And you have to also, you're you also wondering, um, you're trying to balance your age, you're trying to balance your, these are things going on in your mind, you're trying to balance your, your chances. I mean, who else would come and ask for my hand in marriage? Uh, I, you know, uh, but in whatever you do, uh, don't rely on your wisdom. Don't rely on your wisdom and don't, don't be afraid that uh, nobody is coming to ask for my hand in marriage uh, because we don't know. They all, <clears throat> if you try to uh, be seductive in a sense, to attract men to you, that's already going beyond uh, the boundaries of righteousness and holiness. Then you're doing something else. And we are not supposed to engage in such activities uh, as, uh, as children of God. So ours is to seek the Lord. Uh, I would say that um, uh, the, the one of the issues that as a woman has to have to watch out for when you are single is uh, independence. It is very important to be independent, protect yourself, uh, support yourself. But then when you get married, that independence can, uh, can bring friction. You need to learn how to transition, pr prepare yourself learn how to transition from my independence where I provide everything for myself uh, to having a husband who is now going to be your provider, your protector, and your um, husband, yeah, and your uh, authority. And part of the independence also, you do everything on your own. You make your own decision. Uh, you say no to this. You say yes to that. But when you become, when you get married, uh, you have to learn to to realize that a man has <clears throat> this desire for respect, is made for respect. And so if a man is with a wife, with a woman, who is going to speak to him as if she's commanding him because she's used to, to taking her own decisions, to making her own decisions, to say this, and then it goes, to say this, and then it doesn't go. Um, <laughs> and now you are speaking to your, your husband in, in such a fashion as you used to speak to other people before marriage, then you end up in conflict over the issue of respect. Your husband will feel disrespected. So, 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 so prepare yourself, I can say, that part of your preparation is to learn how to respect my husband. And the husband has to learn how to, I mean, the brothers have to learn how to, how can I truly love my wife? Yeah. Uh, because the Bible says, husbands, love your Can wife. I please add something before we go far? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please. Yes. Um, yeah, I want to build on the story of the Dubai men that Sister mm -hmm. Catherine just shared. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes we as singles, we have a responsibility to maintain a character that will keep away some men that mm -hmm. we consider not, not qualified to have us. Mm -hmm. Like the, the behaviors, the, the qualities that we portray, the pictures that we put out there mm -hmm. and all that. Because yeah. just imagine I'm in Namibia and then a man from Dubai is it's coming good. in my DM all of a sudden. You should have seen something. Good to ask, yeah. him, ask important question indeed. Uh, yes, make sure that your, make sure that your public uh, image, your public persona, your public character that you display on social media or wherever you are does not attract the wrong kind of people to you, definitely. Uh, you know, the thing, then, people can still come whether you are, you know, in terms of my Facebook page is evangelism. So yes. there is nothing there that he's going to find to even make him feel like, you know, but, you know, people just take chances, you know, that's why you have to find that the devil does not come to people who 
are you know in his field already mm -hmm. he wants to venture out <laughs> to the people who are in the light mm -hmm. so you have to just be aware that um you're going to find people are going to come but it's just how you handle them yeah definitely you have said something very right there uh, sister uh, kathy setting boundaries pastor kathy setting boundaries mm -hmm. you know uh men take advantage of women's vulnerability vulnerability and and his ability to push her to the point where she can eventually cave in yeah some men they know very well that you know a woman when a woman says no she really means yes <laughs> <laughs> i when think they watch too many movies <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling you and so they push they learn to push 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 because they know that once you just push hard enough after a year of pushing then the woman can say okay let me try mm. and then he gets his chance and then he does the maximum damage he's been waiting for mm. so you must have non negotiables mm. you must have non negotiables and set your boundaries well that beyond this i don't go yeah that as a christian these are my virtues these are my uh, uh, this is what i believe and uh, i'm not going to compromise that for anything yes and if a brother is in church is if a brother is in church number one, whether he's in church or not whether you meet in church or not you need to learn to ask a lot of questions mm. so many questions we have asked about children you need to ask a lot of questions to find out who is this person that is before me but you don't ask them all at once you know no, no. so you just ask based on how he spoke he's speaking to you mm -hmm. and then just show him you're not like a doormat that he can just you know but but you need to be confident too bold and ask some difficult questions uh and it's important to include your your your, your senior your senior leadership your church leadership your church pastor mm. i would say find a woman that is married in your church that you can you can you can be so comfortable with to go and ask for advice as a as a single lady have a woman that you can go to for advice so that whenever you need help on any quick matter you can always run to that person you can confide in them and say oh there is this this brother uh Matthew from where 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 he's is texting me what should i do how should i do this how should i you know help me here i don't know what to say so so have have seek for help from your uh pastor and from a very very trusted couple that can give you input that can give you wise advice over a period of time yeah uh, be, while in your in either in your premarital period i mean before you even get into any relationship before you get into any relationship let there be such a person that always go to and discuss and um share some personal issues that you need <clears throat> advice on and when i say ask questions really ask questions if you don't ask questions you'll be biting your fingers later you'll be wondering oh i mm. wish i had known i wish i had known but there is no way to know until you ask yeah. and we just said some men they don't like to reveal a lot about themselves Mm. He has one child in uh, in China and he has come back home for study from his studies and he's all by himself here and he looks like a perfect guy Mr. Right in church. Yeah, if you don't ask questions you'll be surprised <laughs> now you are married and you are and you are seeing pictures of children on his phone. <laughs> But pictures of a child on his phone and you're like what is this? Oh, ah, this one is just my son in in china before i came to the lord <laughs> <laughs> so we need to ask questions mm. and learn to ask the right questions yeah i cannot teach you how to ask the right questions really but uh don't be naive and don't be ignorant do not be naive don't be no i'm not saying we should not read our bibles but as we read our bibles we should also be aware of what's happening around us <laughs> amen one of the reasons why mm. unbelievers can come into church worship in the choir for some time 
and then go to the keyboard and while he's eyeing you and then after two years he's patient enough to wait for two years before he asks for your for your number the reason why they can do that and walk away with it is because the people are ignorant they don't know that the enemy is doing this the enemy is sending people into the worship team onto the pulpit to preach but they are there looking at you eyeing for you just eyeing for you say i want this sister hmm? Some guys, they, they can go to church, clean themselves up, pretend very perfectly. Mm -hmm. Good pretenders. So you have to do your homework. Don't be naive. Naive and ignorant. Ignorant means not, not knowing. So teach yourself. Yeah? Educate yourself. Understand, you know, read read um, uh, material on different topics yeah so that you get to understand find out i like to watch for example i like to watch documentaries and you learn so much from watching documentaries histories how people um histories of people falling you know looking at examples of people that have fallen and and examining what are some of those mistakes that they have made that i should that i should avoid um Yes, asking questions, involving your pastors. Uh, th this is now my advice to the sisters. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know what what uh, what can be added to this. What do you th What do you think? What else can we add to this? Um, pray. Pray and fasting. Yes, and ask the Lord: Is this the man? Whether you are infatuated with him or not, whether you, you your, your feelings for him are strong or they are not there. And the Lord does not answer you when you want. So you also have to be, you have to be patient. Definitely. Don't be pushed or forced into accepting anybody. Mm. <laughs> there, there is no specific method to say if he comes at 1 a.m., then he's the one. If he comes wearing white shoes, then he's the one. <laughs> if he comes to you while you are praying, then he's the one. You know, you hear, you see all these kind of advices on YouTube. Um, some <laughs> Christians, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I pray that he'd wear this kind of a suit, mm. shoes, and I'm like, hey, the devil can just make him wear those things oh, yes, that's for asking true. for. <laughs> so I'm like, those kind of things that people are asking for, it's like, you're actually asking and the devil is listening and he's taking notes. Yeah, mm. it's like you're ma making a loophole for the devil. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And, and you need to have, we talk, when we talk about uh, uh, non-negotiables, we need to have qualities. You need to, have to know what qualities will I look for in a godly man. Yeah. Uh, of course, non-negotiables must be born again. Yep. Must be truly born again. You have to spend time in your prayers and fasting. Is this person truly born again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, like some people, someone who has just joined the ministry within a few months maybe one year and uh, wants to marry you aye, aye. Is that possible? Aye, aye. that is a joke <laughs> such person is joking come it's come <laughs> yeah they got they, they got back again. again and then after a few months they want to marry you no no uh -huh. uh, you have to be perfectly huh? compatible or or they see you and then after three days four days then they decide you are the one they just see you for the first time and then after three days they decide you are the one that i want to marry you can see all you want <laughs> <laughs> I think, take um, your time and pray I'll and remember. does he fast or he's the one who's always having excuses of why you cannot fast <laughs> or oh, my job is really hard you know I, I cannot be able to fast, but I'm praying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but how do you know if, if the Lord has confirmed someone? Uh, I think you will. When, when you pray, the Lord, <clears throat> the Lord, the Lord, I, I, can, I cannot say he will definitely speak in a particular way. Yeah? No, the Lord speaks in, a, in different ways. When you pray, you must have specific prayer points yeah it must be specific in your prayer points and in your fasting when a man comes when a man comes uh you must take time to pray i would say 
take, I would say take a year to pray. Now you're like, take, one year is too long. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Bishop, like now, for example, we are in the ministry, and you know, we, there are different people in different countries, and like someone comes to you, and will you just say no because you you are maybe someone is in another country, or or you you take your time? You know, someone may not tell you directly, but what if someone comes and asks for your hand, or maybe just like show some interest in you? I would say. Well, I will not say just dismiss somebody just because they're in a different country. Yeah, I know the world, the Lord works in different ways. That's why I'm not prescribing, a, you know, to say do this and then after that do this and then I pray for two days and then the Lord will speak to you on the third day and then I I I, I cannot say such things. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's why you have to be patient with the Lord. Yeah, we apply general principles because they protect us. They help us to avoid making the wrong decision. Mm. Uh, when 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 we say ask questions what does asking questions have to do with finding the right person it helps you to see all the red flags yeah you ask questions and then you find out that this person um uh, was a is a robber <laughs> <laughs> will you proceed i cannot tell you he's a robber though but then you find out you, you know, when you ask questions, you connect a lot of dots. Mm. And that's where also yeah. seeking help comes in. When you're speaking to your pastor, you may find, pastor is saying, my daughter, pray for one more month. I think the Lord, you know, when, when, when you're involving your spiritual leaders, then you are not left to your infatuation. <laughs> because our infatuations, they blind us. <laughs> they say love is blind in different ways. And one of the ways they say love is blind is because when, when you say you are in love, you don't consider anything else. Mm -hmm. yes. He's so perfect when he's in that suit, like mine, this one. When he's in that suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Bishop. <laughs> when he's in that suit, like mine, and he has shaped, he has cut his hair like this. And when he's speaking scripture, <laughs> when he's quoting <laughs> scripture, <laughs> You, you feel like you're already in the Holy of Holies. But <laughs> oh, God. we are saying to be so that you are not deceived. <laughs> so that you are not deceived. Don't rely, you know. It, it's so easy to, mm. to be infatuated, to be carried away. You are like, he's so perfect. There cannot be any fault in him. Uh, no. <laughs> There must be something. Of course, there must be something, definitely. Yeah, it is not true that is. And, and to remember that all men are fallen. So there is no such thing as, uh, uh, as, uh, uh, as, a, as, an, as a perfect man who's so angelic, there's no, there's no fault in him. But our infatuation makes us feel like that. Mm. You know, uh. look at the way he's walking. Just look at the way he speaks. You know, I can't wait for our <laughs> I can't wait <laughs> for the next yes, yes. So this, is, this is how it's happening, eh? Yeah. And the brothers feel the same way too. Yeah. I like her perfume. Oh, did you see how she was worshiping mm -hmm. in church? Or did you see how she was uh, collecting the tithe? Whatever. So, mm -hmm. you know, all the infrastructure takes over. <laughs> what tithe? Oh, no. <laughs> <What's> tithe? <laughs> so, infatuation makes you, it's you, you just, all you see is perfect. Everything is perfect. Everything is so perfect. Yeah. But now you pray so that the Lord can reveal all these uh, nonsense that need to be revealed. And mm -hmm. ask help. When you go to your parents, when you go to, let's say you go to pastor, bishop. Say, bishop, you know, there is a, number one, no man should ever ask for your hand in marriage if he does not see your bishops or your pastors. Mm. Yeah. True. No man. <laughs> Just to say, I, I, I would like to ask for this woman's hand in marriage. Mm -hmm. Because if they don't do that, and they're trying to go, you know, know. This, then you know that uh, this guy uh, is up to something else. <laughs> Why doesn't he want to see my bishop? Yeah. Then but if the bishop is in another province, then how do they see them? There must be a way. You know, they say, they say, you know, you know, call? 
Where there's a will, there's a way. He'll get into a bus. Have you seen? Perhaps he does not know. Maybe he will ask you what is what is what is who is your bishop. For example, you know, I I'm not saying people should go into debt, but you find people they are willing to go into debt because he's in love with somebody. Mm. <laughs> yes, he's willing to go into debt so that he can get the money to impress her by you know by flying over to where she is, or by buying her some expensive things. So where there is a will, of course, there is a way. How <clears throat> will they be able to connect? I don't know. You know, we have different circumstances, yeah. Mm. But we have, of course, we have, we have, we have phone calls, we have uh, online meetings, we have face-to-face -face meetings. But whatever the Lord is going to help you with, don't say, "Ah, my bishop is too far." He has my my this Mr. Handsome, Mr. <laughs> Prince Charming, Prince Charming cannot cannot see my bishop now. Uh, so I think we can just go ahead and. If he cannot see him, he cannot see me either. <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> Remember, this is a fallen human being just like you. Mm. Mm. No, no matter how well, how handsome they look, eh? how innocent they look, they are still human beings. Mm. That innocence one day will look like hell on earth. <laughs> 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 if you don't, if you try to skip some, some, <laughs> some steps, eh? If you say, ah, Bishop, why should I ask? Why should I bother? I don't want to bother Bishop. I don't want to bother my pastor. That innocence you are looking at, that handsomeness, will one day torment you. Will one day be hell on earth. Ask before any, any concrete decision. Yes. Yes. So you let him go. Why doesn't he want to go and see the Bishop or the pastor? What is he afraid of? Go. If he doesn't want, then that's a red flag. Yeah, then go back into prayer. Lord, why is this? You know, maybe this is not the guy. Maybe he's not the one. Yeah. Um, and the way we said before, the Lord communicates in different ways. Mm -hmm. you, know, you should know from your relationship with God how the Lord normally speaks with you. Yeah. So sometimes the Lord can speak in dreams. Mm -hmm. He can speak like, for example, your blessed wife, um, mm -hmm. Bishop. She says the Lord now when he speaks with her, he speaks her through scriptures. Mm -hmm. Um. Sometimes the Lord might speak through somebody, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and obviously with that one, you'll also have to just get now confirmation within yourself also mm -hmm. from the Lord. Mm -hmm. But the Lord speaks in many ways. Definitely. You know? So you just have to identify how the Lord speaks with you and wait until he speaks something to you before you jump the ship. Definitely. I, any I, important decision. I'm not sure if I shared... <clears throat> Uh, uh, my one of my examples here, but one time I was praying for about somebody, and I saw in a dream. Yeah, I saw a dream, and in the dream I was asked to choose. And the person I was praying for was one of the people that I was asked to choose, but when I chose in that dream, I chose somebody else. Mm. And when I woke up, I was so angry. Why didn't I choose this one that I was praying for? <laughs> <laughs> Then I started binding and, and, and you know, rebuking the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> because, because I wanted this person. But you see, I prayed because I wanted God to speak to me, isn't it? I wanted mm -hmm. God to show me which mm -hmm. person, whether this is the right person or not. Yeah. So the dream came and it turns out this is not the right person, but I didn't understand. I thought the enemy was playing a trick on me. <laughs> But looking I back, this dream. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I did my best to get the dream reversed. <laughs> but, but looking back now, looking back, I'm like, wow, thank you, Lord, uh, yeah. for that dream. Because now I understand the Lord was telling me that this is not the right person. Yeah. Now, is the Lord going to speak to you in the same dream like me? No, he may not speak to you in dreams. Yeah. yeah? Uh, but however he speaks, he will help you. Mm. Uh, scripture says um, uh, we should uh, commit our ways unto the Lord and he'll direct our path. Mm. Amen. Amen. And uh, then the other one is you know sometimes when you feel uncomfortable but you're not sure why you're uncomfortable about something? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's also another way the Lord is like, is like no. 
But if you keep speaking to yourself and like, no, I feel this is right. Mm -hmm. I feel this is right. Then, you know, there's a point the Lord just allows you to oh, yes, that's go with what you want, you know? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you're praying about something and you're like, you are, you trying to comfort yourself. I think he's the one, you know, he does this. He, he's really good at this. He's, and then you're like, but I feel something, but I'm like, no, I think maybe that's the devil. I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. if you're afraid and you're feeling this uncomfortable, yeah. uncomfortable um, experience, mm -hmm. you know, that, then, then... that could be your answer. Definitely. You know? And it's important to ask questions. Why do I feel this uncomfortable? Uh, why do I feel uncomfortable about this man, about this mm. woman? Uh, why? Why? Mm. What is it about him that I'm uncomfortable about? Mm. Yeah. Mm. And answer that question. If you try to brush it off, then you are walking into a trap. Because ask after you brush it off, like it goes away, you know. Yeah. And then you'll have yourself to blame later and say, "Oh, no wonder I was feeling uncomfortable." Mm. <clears throat> um. Do not do things in secret. I like to say, when you are ready for marriage, tell, we're talking about telling our pastors. Yeah? Tell your pastor, tell your parents, pastor, mm. please pray with me. I want, uh, I want to get married. Mm. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not saying you should announce it on Twitter and Facebook. But <laughs> your spiritual leaders, spiritual leadership here. <laughs> Facebook has no... Facebook has no business knowing whether when you want to get married or not. Twitter has no business. Yeah? Yeah. So this, these are personal matters that must be between you and your, your trusted counselors, your pastors, your spiritual leadership. Mm. Yeah. And when the man comes, then you go back and say, but go and talk to my pastor. Pastor, there's this man that has approached me. And when you don't do things in secret, it protects you also. Mm. When you do things in secret, you never know where you'll find yourself. Mm -hmm. You'll find yourself in some corner, in some dark street, <laughs> <laughs> meeting, meeting in a hidden restaurant somewhere. <laughs> in some hidden <laughs> restaurant because you don't want your parents to know. You don't want your bishop to know because if bishop finds out, then bishop is going to give you a lecture for an hour and maybe he will preach about you on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reason you're not supposed to do things in secret. <laughs> and when you do things in secret, uh, you put yourself in danger. You make agreements that are ungodly also. Mm. You find this mm. man gives you things that he should never give you mm. because you are doing things in secret. You make agreements that are to your detriment, that are to harm you. Uh, and so, and when, and when the truth comes out, it's going to be even more devastating. And nobody will be there to protect you because you've been doing things by yourself. And so, do not do things in secret. Otherwise, the devil will pull you into that dark corner too. And, and, then, you'll, and then you'll find saying, you'll find yourself saying, I didn't know how it happened. <laughs> It was so fast. Yes, it was so fast. I didn't know what happened. Yeah. I, 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 just, I just went to visit him at his house. Did anybody else know? No, nobody knew that I went to visit him. <laughs> so oh. be careful. Be careful. You never even go visit somebody alone. Exactly. Exactly. So Especially the opposite sex, you know. Mm -hmm. You could be raped, could be molested, and then who will you have to blame? That's it. Is this person born again? Truly born again? If the answer mm. is maybe, then probably uh, not the one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if he's not born again, is, is this person a new believer? And you're thinking to yourself, the Lord wants me to marry him so that I he, can can help grow, him. he can grow in the faith. You're lying yeah. to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so I can convert him. Yes, or, never, mm -mm. Or, or so I can convert him. He's not yet born again, but you know, they call it missionary, yeah. missionary yeah. courtship. Missionary. That's the worst mistake you can actually make. Yes, definitely. Is he a new believer? No. Because now, a new believer, he has so many things to be delivered from, so many things to learn. <laughs> and now he's in a, in a relationship 
that has a high chance of ending up in separation. Now imagine what will happen to him if this relationship ends, both to him and to you. Mm. It's going to be devastating. Mm. Very, very devastating. It can even ruin his faith. Totally. Yeah. Even yours. Totally. You know, uh, relationships, these love relationships have a potential of destroying your Christian faith. Yeah. You, know, you can lose your job and still keep your faith. <laughs> it is very easy to, to lose your car and keep your faith. But to lose your relationship and keep yeah. your faith, it's one mm. tough job. It's one you tough issue. You can end up in depression. Yes. And so many things. You're investing so much. Investing so much uh, spiritual investment, so much emotional investment. So emotional um, soul ties. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Emotionally connected to this person. Like, but you are so <laughs> nice. And all these things. So you must make sure that this is, if he's a new believer, I give him time to grow. Pray. Probably he's not the one, but let pray some more. And you are saying, but I'm already 35 years old. Don't uh, rush. <laughs> Don't rush. What are you rushing for? Look, if you rush, then you end up rushing out. So who are you trying to help by rushing into a relationship? Who are you doing a favor? You're not doing anybody a favor. Exactly. Yeah, you're not mm. doing anybody a favor by rushing into a relationship. Yeah. And by rushing in, your chances of breaking up are also high. <laughs> so you're just playing with fire. So mm. you need to take your time. First pray, seek help. So if it's a new believer, give him more time to pray. And give him more time to grow. If he's a new believer, you should not even be getting in a relationship. The only relationship he's supposed to be getting into is relationship with God. Yes, definitely. To get to know the Lord, his God, and not be disturbed by, instead of meditating on scripture, he's meditating on you. Yeah, it's like I want us to share scripture. I'm like, for what? Yes. You go from sharing scripture to sharing other things. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> when will we get married? <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> oh, dear. A new believer. So what are some of those? If he's a, a truly born again person, very truly born again, is this a responsible person? Hmm? I, why am I? Responsible. Is this a responsible man? Or a and woman. Does he take a woman? Okay, my focus has been on, uh, on on women now. Brothers, we didn't even talk about brothers. How do you how do you before before we look at the qualities of the of the woman or man? For the brothers, you also must pray eh? and fast. Eh? Mm -hmm. You know, brothers, it's so easy for a brother to be attracted to a woman's be beauty than a woman to be attracted to a man's handsomeness. Is that not true? It is true. And and for the brothers, you know, it's so quick. It even takes just seconds. He, he, all he needs to do is just look at you. <laughs> 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 all a brother needs to do to get attracted to a woman is to look. <laughs> look for, 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 even, for, even sometimes even just to it, sometimes even by hearing a voice. Yeah, sure. that's it. And and he's like, wow, I like that voice. Yeah. Oh, boy, that's it. See you. Finish. <laughs> he's done. But for a woman is different. A woman, women are different, isn't it? Yep. Uh, you, you respond it's differently. It's more than handsomeness. Yes. He must impress. You must, you must, you must impress in a particular way, in some, in some way. <laughs> That's why some guys, they learn how to lie now to, to make up for that void. And they know that they cannot impress you well, so they put a facade. <laughs> but anyways, mm. uh, so the brothers, uh, we know that it's easy to fall in love with a woman. So when you find yourself being attracted to women, just rebuke it already. <laughs> <laughs> just start rebuking and binding the devil. I'm not saying you, the woman is the devil. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying you, your focus, the focus is you. It's so easy for you to fall for, for a woman just by looking. It doesn't have to be a, a, an unbeliever. It can be an unbeliever. It can be a believer. It's so easy for a man to just look and then he, he, he falls, he, he gets attracted. So prayer also. When you pray and ask the Lord, Lord, please guide me. You, you, it, it becomes easy to overcome 
infatuation to overcome you know, these quick attractions that are not substantial. Or you're attracted to somebody who just, just because of their looks. And the Bible says beauty is vain. Beauty is vanity. Um, and then when you want to marry somebody, approach their pastor, approach their families, as we said before. Uh, if you're not willing to do that, then we have a problem. Yeah. If you think the Lord wants you to marry this woman after your prayers, uh, then go and approach their pastor. Go and approach their father. You know, some in this in this day and age, people, guys don't even know how to talk to uh, parents of, uh, of of the woman that they want to marry. They don't know how to introduce themselves. It's really just in the church where this introduction happens. In the world, they they have nothing to do with introductions. All they need to do is see each other on campus, and then. They're already meeting for ice cream. And then before you know it, they're already re living in the same room. But I think the culture, in like African culture, the, the man has to go see the woman's parents for the hand of marriage. The ones, they only, they only see the parents when they want to marry and not at the beginning of the relationship. Yeah. I'm talking about the worldly people now. They don't, yeah. they, they don't recognize the parents at the beginning of the relationship. They can literally live as married people who are unmarried, impregnate each other, as long as there is no talk about marriage. They can impregnate each other, buy things for each other, divorce each other, separate, come back together, separate, come back together, and whatever. <laughs> and the parents will not even interfere. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's dangerous out there. Yeah. It's very dangerous. Um, and and, and you'll be surprised how many people have, have abortion. But it's the devil who has placed that, you know, out there that you have to test the waters before you come. Yeah. And so we don't want to, to have that in the church. We mm -hmm. want responsibility. Is this a responsible man or woman? And then if they are responsible, uh, you need to, <clears throat> are they, are they, are they, of course, you should look at their humility. Is this person, focus, is this person, I'm writing humility here. <laughs> <laughs> is this person purposeful? Yeah. <laughs> Where is this man taking you to? Where does this guy want to take you? To the farm. <laughs> Oh, whoa, 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 please. Some of us are red farms, Sister Catherine. <laughs> why do you want to marry this person? Or why does he want to marry you? Yeah. He must have, as you've said, purpose. To yeah. To serve the Lord. That's it. That's it. Uh, uh, he must, there must be a purpose. A man, you know, there, there are a lot of reasons why people want to get married. One. Populate the earth. <laughs> Not populate the earth. <laughs> populate the earth. Uh -huh. What capacity? Sorry? <laughs> no. Populate the earth to what capacity? I'm telling you. <laughs> I, my typing today is on another level. <laughs> Companionship. Uh, companionship. Populate the earth. <laughs> I'm telling you. Poultry. Now you are going to write poultry. Oh, populate. Is that right? Did I write? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, money. What about money? Inheritance. Unless your parents die, you're getting nothing. Why get married for money? <laughs> status. I'm telling you. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Status. I'm a doctor's wife. I'm a lawyer's wife. I'm a what? CEO's a, wife. CEO's wife. I'm a, I'm a princess. <laughs> of what? <laughs> of the future, of the future king. <laughs> um, very, very few people, of course, I know, but hey, uh, uh, they also have to weigh their reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, status. Mm -hmm. Um. And people are willing to pursue marriage, yes, to gain respect. Uh, 
to, 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 to gain status. People are willing to do anything for status. They can go mm -hmm. extra mile. They can cross the oceans to gain status. So these are people in the world of, actually, even in the even church. Even in the church. Not oceans. Uh -huh. Even some, in the church. Some for, some for citizenship, probably. Oh, yes. Lord. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Yes. It's true, but it's a, it's a crazy reason, though. The man comes to your country, and then he, he knows he knows that if I marry a woman from this country, then I'll get citizenship. But to get a better woman, I must go to church. <laughs> oh, Lord. Because I know church women are faithful. So even if she finds out that I married her for citizenship, she will not leave me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you said it right. Mm -hmm. oh, manipulative people. Oh. Yeah. You have to be careful. Eh? You have to be on higher alert to satisfy sexual appetites. Some people they think that just because the Bible say you better marry be rather than burn with right. lust, eh? they don't realize that now, if you get married to, satis to satisfy your, your your lust that is burning, it is insatiable. You cannot satisfy lust. Mm. If you get married because lust is burning, then your wife gets to a point where she cannot satisfy you anymore. Mm. Or your husband cannot satisfy you anymore. And then you begin to look for somebody else to give you the novel experience. Novel. Eh? Some people, they jump from relationship to relationship because of how it makes them feel. Yeah. They don't stay too long because if you stay too long, then that that excitement, that novelty wears away. <laughs> mm. They jump into this relationship. Then they stay for some time. They get all the chocolates and then they get all the sweet letters and all the phone calls. And <laughs> then they get all the uh, whatever invitations for dinner. And then, ooh, and then when it's beginning to weigh, weighing down, then they jump from this relationship. They jump to another one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And there is no perseverance they don't know how to persevere immediately you argue about something the relationship is over and then in, in the next two hours he finds somebody else maybe that's what happened in that marriage for one month novel it was, experience it was like this is not what i signed up for mm -hmm. that's it that's it i thought you'd be cooking in the kitchen and i thought you'd satisfy me you know and yeah. it's not working out they didn't realize that there is work, work in marriage. <laughs> work. Consistency and consistency. Yes. He didn't realize that clothes need to be and washed yeah. and, you know. <laughs> and the toilet needs to be cleaned. Yeah. And the dishes must be washed by. Both of you. By both <laughs> of you, somebody. So he, he, whoever it was, has been disillusioned. We call it disillusionment mm. and the food does not just get cooked on its own they but, need you need somebody's hands to go and chop the veg and everything <laughs> so they say i want to satisfy sexual appetite um, once i get married i can have all the sex i want and then reality scene i'm telling you <laughs> they cannot have all the sex they want so now they are disillusioned disillusioned Their reality, it does not match with their expectation mm. because they have an expectation that is unrealistic and um, uh, that is not, um, what's the word? Not practical. Yeah. yeah. Um, reasons for why people marry. Some want children. Of course, we say populate the earth. Um, some is just for fun. I'm telling you. Some, they were pushed. Family influence. Family yeah. demand. Yeah. You're getting old. You need to get somebody. Another one says, oh, my pastor told me. What? Oh, pastor, pastor said, I'm too, I think this woman, this woman is the right one for you. Or this man is the right one for you. <laughs> but then, you know, at the altar, they usually say, is this the woman that you have chosen? So yeah. you cannot be saying, it's, are you not the one who told me she's the one who's good? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it. So you need to weigh your, your reasons well. Why do I want to marry this person? Yeah. Hmm? 
Is it because of his Lamborghini or his cars? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because of the house that he has? Perhaps. <laughs> Is it because he travels and I want to travel with him on I those uh, business trips? Yeah. So the you... company only caters for the, the one person. <laughs> so we need to weigh, you need to put all these reasons on a balance. But all these reasons are all the wrong reasons for marriage. Yeah. All the wrong reasons for starting a relationship. Mm -hmm. Wait, the first reason is not all the wrong reason. It is. Companionship. Yeah. Then why do you get married? Yeah, that's a good question. So why do you? <laughs> what is marriage for? Why are we getting married? That's a very good question. That's where I wanted to bring us. <laughs> Why? For the glory of God. I mean, everything that we should do, we, I guess we do it to glorify the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, but you have to have companionship. <laughs> yes. Companionship you need is to, secondary. You need to want to be with this person, right? Yes, you need to. You need to want to be with this person. person. Companionship will come in. Friendship will come in. Children will come in. Money will come in. Even if children don't come. You know, that. you should be able to, to be together and happy in the Lord. First and foremost, number one, beyond, above all these reasons. Uh, what is that? What did you say, Pastor Saki? Oh, to glorify the Lord. For the to glory glorify of the Lord. Lord. Mm. To glorify the Lord. You know, it sounds so redundant. It sounds so cliche, yeah? just the right answer to give as a Christian, but it is not. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a serious danger with, uh, what's that word? Um, uh, familiarity. Let us mm -hmm. not get too familiar with the glory of the Lord and with God's reasons, purposes. <clears throat> marriage, if you get married for the sake of companionship, look, with the way the enemy is fighting marriages, companionship can easily be uh, 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 be tempered with. But of course, when you say companionship, it's not fast in the least. No, no, no. no. But it's, it's, if it's for the glory of the Lord, you might have, you can stay single and just serve the Lord, and you will do it mightily. <laughs> Definitely. First things first. The first thing is for the glory of the Lord, and then everything else must find its place in that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that's why we're saying, Lord. What is this the person that you want me to marry? Yeah. Not because ultimately I'm, I'm going to finally have a companion. No. No. What is the re reason of having a companion who's leading you to hell? Hey, my <laughs> God, my God, stay alone. <laughs> yeah. So companionship has its limits. Mm. Children, what if, if you get married so that the person can give you children? What if this person is, as we're talking about infertility, cannot give birth or does not want to give birth, does not want to have children? Yep. Hmm? Mm. Or you got married because of money and then one, one week after your marriage <laughs> wedding, then all the uh, all the uh, all the cash, all yeah. the cars. Yeah, get lost. Get liquidator. lost. The liquidator comes for them for all the money you owe. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, he owes. <laughs> I'm telling you. So the the, the only unshakable reason for getting married is mm. the glory of the lord because when amen because the lord then is the one that satisfies our relationship mm. yeah? i'm not saying we mm. we go into marriage blindly when we say for the glory of the lord that doesn't mean we go in blindly yeah no mm. uh, 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 it is the lord that gives us meaningful and satisfying companions it is the lord that gives us the strength to get wealth isn't it yeah. It is the Lord that gives us the ability to have children. Yeah. But he mm. must be first. If he is not first, then it will be easy to break your companionship. It, it will be very easy. It will crumble like the biscuit. Yes. Definitely. When the storm comes, the st <laughs> <laughs> your hearts will just sink. <laughs> and 
just at the at the at the sound at the at the hearing just to hear that the storm is coming you're already running out of energy so uh god first yeah and so when you are sure that i want to marry so that god can be glorified in my life in my marriage of and course and we pray the lord to get us in like mm-hmm. you know the mother in law <laughs> that will not give you hell on earth also yes god will make sure that he he helps you not to have hell on earth from your mother in law <laughs> your relatives that you are not accused of witchcraft from these unbelieving uh, uh in laws and all these things all right so examine your motives examine your motives well and examine this person's motive that mm. is trying to seek your hand in marriage what what does he want to get out of me mm. yeah what does he want uh, uh to get out is it is it is it is he being pressured by his mother is he looking for a wife because the mother said my son it's now time for you to marry and that lady i've been looking at her she's so nice you know she has studied she has done all these things you need to go ask her before somebody else snatches her yeah and and the guys now is talking about the guys too are you are you trying to get there before other guys get there <laughs> are you trying to snatch her before the other guys snatch her mm. because if that's your reason then <laughs> your is your reasons are short sighted mm. yeah after you snatch her then what you will get tired of her soon <laughs> <laughs> you get tired and that's why that's why it's also very it's also very important for it's it, it makes everything easier when both people are believers yeah because yeah. if it's only one yeah. it, uh, it's, it's it becomes very tough Oh it will be you will find this person is saying I don't want you to listen to that prophet I don't believe in those prophets mm-hmm. so you, you must make sure you're on the same page when it comes to scripture it will be very mm-hmm. well as i said as a woman you have no way to guarantee unless except to say yes or no to a man yeah you cannot walk up to a man and say it is you that i want to marry you can but You know people have been doing it these days but you know yeah, it's the it same way the men come to the women and be like no nope. the brother will just run away mm-hmm. <laughs> ah me as a man I will run a woman approaching me <laughs> I, will, I will look twice <laughs> unless, unless unless if he begins to say to himself <laughs> finally he says he began to is is saying uh the the what i have i have a chance of a lifetime as <laughs> if he began to say i have a chance of a lifetime let me not waste it let me say yes to her and you know i've noticed oh. that these days the ladies are like approaching the man mm-hmm. and um, it's 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 termed like maybe the man is not confident enough so so well, the woman is stepping up and he's like hi and the man is like oh finally there are a lot of contributing factors eh? one is generally in our culture today globally women in their early age 20s 30s they they don't want they don't want to be disturbed by men they want to study and make it big before they can settle down in their 40s by the time you get to your 40s and you've been rejecting all these guys the guys are afraid <laughs> some guys are intimidated by very educated women it's just some some guys some guys don't have the courage to pursue a woman who is well educated more than them uh they feel insecure uh that if i get married to a woman who is more educated then she may um she may what she may try to control me or she may seem to be smarter than me all right so examine these motives why do you want to marry why does he want to marry you uh is this person purposeful what is he trying to achieve in life um responsible is he responsible is he a man of respect mm. um the word what is his knowledge of the word of god is he a believer if he's a believer how is his service of the lord does he serve is he is he a faithful servant is he a save servant leader yeah and i cannot say he must be 50% responsible 100% humility humble and i cannot tell you what combination of factors that are coming we are different yeah i cannot say the man must be tall or short or whatever <laughs> we are different but these are just questions to ask mm-hmm. questions to ask 
to probe, to examine. And as you seek help from your pastor, from your, from your spiritual leaders, these are some of the things to bring before them that they are also going to ask you. Yeah. yeah. And, and when you see a good, if you see a good indicator, if, if, if he's having good indicators on these issues, then probably maybe he's the one, maybe he's not. He can have all this, he can be a man or a woman can, uh, can, can, can have all these qualities and uh, for a man now and not be attractive to you. It's possible. Yep. Or a man can have all these good qualities, but for you as a woman, you feel like he's a, he's a perfect guy, perfect church guy, but uh, I don't want. <laughs> it's yeah. possible. That's why prayer is necessary. Yeah. Yeah? So you don't just marry somebody because he looks perfect. But according to the standard of church boy or church man, he fits all those qualities. And so I just have to marry him because, you know, he's from our church. I know. <laughs> so you don't want to marry anybody uh, uh, in, in that way. Yeah? So you put this. You don't together. have to settle. Huh? You don't have to settle. Yes. Ah, that's a good. That's, you just reminded me of one thing. Is this somebody that um, stays with their parents? Or somebody that is staying by themselves, uh, staying by their parents, <clears throat> and their age can also tell you a lot about their responsibility. What if they moved back so that they can save up for something? That is possible. It is totally possible. One hundred percent possible. Isaac was living with his with his father, uh, um, and but it's still something to. To, to, to examine mm. yeah it is it is still something to examine so he must have like um a purpose you know the way you said he must have a purpose. a purpose yeah so he's probably maybe like if he's of age he's probably staying in his family his parents home mm -hmm. while he's building or preparing something which is good for you know because sometimes you know when you are renting you cannot be able to actually set aside um yeah funds to start something so sometimes you have to move back mm -hmm. um gather yourself and then now venture out a man living with her, with his or her parents seeking for a hand in marriage that uh, the fact that he's living with the parents is not a disqualifier yeah. in my view it, it, is, it should not not be a disqualifier mm. uh, and it depends on what he's doing not just staying at his mama's home <laughs> yes is he staying home because he wants to be yeah, playing games. They are trusting in the Lord. Yes. Doing nothing. Can he keep a job? You know, there are some guys, mm -hmm. they are called, uh, what are they called? Uh, kid adults. Have you heard that word? No. Kid adults. Kid adults. Oh. <laughs> kid adults that behave like kids. Yeah. Kid adults. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, yes, that's very true. Wow. This is now talking, we're not talking about maturity, spiritual maturity, level of spiritual maturity. Is this mm. person an adult that behaves like a kid? Or they, they say a kid in an adult's body. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, you see, we have to do a thorough analysis mm. and uh, examine well. Our situation is a frustrating person. <laughs> Just playing games. They want to play Fortnite. Video games. Oh my gosh. <laughs> They're coming from church. Come Say, with a saucepan and knock it on the back. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying he wants to be the, the, the champion of the next <laughs> computer game championship. <laughs> Not champion. If somebody is a video game player, you can imagine what time they have for prayer. Definitely. So, mm -hmm. so spiritual maturity. The man must be spiritually mature. These are complex things. You cannot learn this in one day. That's why I advise if you have a six months to one, one year of prayer and fasting and seeking help, you'll be able to understand all this. How much, how, to what level does this guy? measure up to yeah mm. one week 
and you want to understand all these things <laughs> one week or three weeks <laughs> then you'll be able to understand all these things in three weeks supernatural wisdom and he can come to you and say all the right words so you need to measure weigh him weigh him weigh him weigh him until you you make up your choice your your mind you make up your mind convinced that the lord has spoken to you within the past one month maybe the dream or whatever in that one month well if the lord has spoken then it must be tested it must be tested let him wait yeah <laughs> there's no rush yeah if the lord the lord, has spoken, it will happen yeah if the lord has spoken then as a man then that gives me great confidence that I don't need to try to haraka haraka here and there. <laughs> <laughs> Is haraka haraka a uh, Namibian or? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't have to rush. Mm -hmm. You know, as a man, if I see a dream, if I if 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 if, if I feel like the Lord has spoken to me that this is the woman, mm -hmm. then I'm I'm so I have confidence. Now I have confidence. I don't even worry about other guys. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can I will take all my time to pray to make sure I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I know that then nobody will take her. Yeah. Because nobody. sometimes if you go and rush and tell her and the Lord has not spoken to her, mm -hmm. that's when you have the conflict. You yes. know? Mm -hmm. So that's why when you are praying, you, even you get the Please the speak. timing mm -hmm. of when to approach her because also the Lord will have communicated with her. Definitely. So it will just it will be, you know, mm -hmm. ordained by God. So it's just going to flow. Yeah. I think one year should give you uh, just just on, on average. One year should really help you to pray enough <laughs> and get to study enough about somebody. Uh, Pastor Sagi, what are you saying? Blessed be you. Yes, I have a question. Um, as you, as you, as you question just popped up as you, as you spoke about um, you know once you pray about this person whether it's the men that prayed for the women and the, the women vice versa and then you get confirmation that yes they are the right person and then you said okay so now we just it's just going to pray for you know for the Lord to prepare you as an individual you know for this person that is putting you on hold so now what happens then maybe in the six months or fifth or whatever before the whole year end, the person that um, made, made you wait ends up falling into sexual immorality, like, um, uh, like the physical sexual sin. With somebody, you still continue praying for this? In sexual immorality with someone else. With someone else, yes. Hey. Then that means this is not the person, no? That's the confirmation. Yeah, that's your confirmation there. What, what, more, like, what more prayer do you like. But remember, but remember, in the beginning when you were praying, mm -hmm. you got you got already the conviction and the confirmation that this is the one. Probably. Yeah, can it can it happen that in that manner? Because and remember, we are still so under the flesh. When how when you, you know pray, that confirmation was from the Lord. When you pray and you and you feel like the Lord has spoken, yeah? Mm. And you feel like the Lord has spoken, that doesn't mean you must marry today, today, today. Yeah? Now, because of our, <clears throat> because of our fallen nature, there is a possibility that maybe we misunderstood what the Lord is saying. It is yep. possible. Mm -hmm. It is possible that it's just your infatuation that is leading the way still. So... <laughs> So you need to test. That's why you still need to bring to, to put to test. The Bible says test all prophecies, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, so now let us also test this. Your it is the Lord has told me you are the one. Let us also put it to a test. Mm. Is it true? Mm. To what extent? How is it true that the Lord has spoken? If the Lord has spoken, then we'll know. If the Lord has not spoken, we will also know. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember I used to pray such prayers as, you know, when we pray for somebody and, and I just know that Lord if this is the person then you'll keep him for, for me for whatever period of time mm. yeah, if he's not the one then he's snatched by somebody if, else if they fall into sin that means yeah. it's not for you yeah for that, me yeah that basically is an answer from the Lord just telling yeah. you mm. not the almost one. kind of like something that happened to me 
Mm-hmm. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. And uh, and in that sense, you should. What happened to you, my dear sister? Sorry, brother. What did you say? He what wants... happened to you? Is it the story of, of um? Yeah, yeah. I was. What happened? I was engaged. Um. We had gone on for like three and a half years. Long time. And then he got someone else pregnant. Hmm. Oh, and, yes, I remember the story. And I found out. Mm-hmm. And then later on, he told me. Mm-hmm. And then I just, it was, it was um, a, a horrible experience. It is. And I had to cut it off. But in my mind, I was conflicted. I was like, am I making the right decision? Mm-hmm. Because traditionally, we are told you will not find a man who is faithful like that, right? Mm-hmm all men do these things. So I was, in my mind, I was asking myself, did I really make the right decision or it was really just a mistake like he says? Mm-hmm. But in... Sorry, Sister Marjorie. You have gone. Yeah, Bishop. Yes, uh, Meke? I have a question, please, while you are discussing this thing, of how do yes. I know this is the right person? Yes. I think we should start with this thing of, uh, that we found. It's mostly in the following churches where we find people are saying that who um, the Lord revealed that who, who is, is the right woman or the right man for, for this person. I think we should start with this also. Yes. <laughs> also, might also the pastor. Be found, yes. Because it can, also be found in the, it can also be found in this ministry. Yes. Well, it should match make you. It is, and in the end, it is your choice. Yes. Yes. The, as a pastor, as a bishop, there is a, a serious uh, uh, danger in matchmaking people. Now, if you are not a prophet and the Lord has not spoken to you, that, uh, um, whose name shall I use? Me. My name. <laughs> <laughs> if it's for male, you must use my name. <laughs> I already said it first. Yes. So if you're not a prophet and you are saying, and you are, and you are saying, Catherine should marry who? Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor Catherine should marry Thomas. And, and then things go wrong in that marriage. Guess who's going to be responsible? That you. Yeah. You'll be responsible. <laughs> yes. And you know what they will say? Those churches that match make people, yeah, that, that, that match, uh, uh, they, will call, they will even call, call them hellish, hellish marriages. Mm. As, as a divorcee from that marriage, you begin to question this pastor. Mm. Has the Lord really spoken? To what mm. extent did the Lord speak? Mm. Yeah. If the Lord really spoke, then why did this happen to me? Mm. So which God is in this church then? Yeah. <laughs> and, and all those things. So you do not want to presume God, God's, you know, God's desires upon anybody. Mm. Mm. Uh, so to match people and say, I think you will go well to this. And you know, your words carry weight. Eh? If somebody comes and asks for your advice, yeah, you may give your advice. <laughs> that. Uh, I think brother ABC, a brother so and so is like this. Brother Saki is like this. Brother, uh, who else is here? I feel it's like this. But uh, to 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 come up and say, knock knock. Uh, I think you should go and marry this guy because just look how wonderful he is. <laughs> and they will say, perhaps the pastor will say like, I was praying, then the Lord showed me that sister who belongs to who, something like that. People will end up getting <laughs> married. Then the Lord Please come the and pastor. Me as well. Yes, the, yeah, definitely. If the angel of God has not spoken like he spoke to Mary and Joseph, then and the pastor is speaking, you will find people are getting are in a relationship, but they are forced in. They are trying to please others. They are trying to please the pastor. They are trying to please whoever it is that pushed them together. Or maybe mm-hmm. they go into it thinking the Lord has spoken, and when things are very hard, they're like, but. You know, 
-hmm. I thought, you know, the Lord has spoken that even if you're going through difficult you should, you're supposed to overcome them. But this one, it seems like we're all going down to hell. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> it's a hellish, a hellish marriage. Let me say that, for instance, if, if, if your pastor tell you something like that, that oh, maybe, you, maybe you belong to this person and you deny, sometimes you might think that maybe you are this, or maybe the pastor will think you are disobeying the Lord's voice and so, so. It only takes courage for you to stand up for yourself and say, if mm -hmm. the Lord has not spoken to me, if I don't think this is the right person for me, mm -hmm. it's not, I will not go for it. Yeah, but I think that's in the other church, right? Is it happening in this church? I have not seen it it's in this in church. In foreign churches, but it, sometimes it can, it can be found within this ministry. A pastor telling somebody you and you could be too nice together. It's not a pastor, necessarily a pastor, but it can be, for instance, a member in the church or something. Ah, a member, you just disregard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> like you're not going to make me leave hell on earth no thank you it's okay <laughs> never enter a relationship out of pressure mm. you pressured you you feel pressured you just have to perform mm. it will end bad yeah it mm. will end very bad nothing can ever substitute god's leadership yeah mm -hmm. yeah and our seeking god's leadership in our lives for our future marriages yes. I would say the secret is don't rush. Because if you, if you rush, then you will not have time to, to, to understand, to learn and understand. I would say the time frame, uh, it's not fair for a man to keep a woman for 10 years before they get married. I think that's years. torture. That's torture. 10 years. Mm. 10 years. That's By the time you are, you are ready, you, she's, you are like... <laughs> You know, age is, is even so five cool. years. I think five years is torture. Even two years. What am I waiting for? Like you should. If you are getting into a courtship, then you must be ready. It's like it's already time. That is the season for marriage. It's not. I'm getting into mm -hmm. courtship so that I see whether I really want to get married or not. Oh, mm -hmm. so you're wasting your time and somebody else's time here. So mm -hmm. two years. I believe two years are sufficient for courtship to both to get to know this person. Once the Lord has confirmed, get to know this person before you get married so that you know what's coming. <laughs> One, two, to do your premarital counseling and to do your wedding planning. Those three things, wedding planning, premarital counseling, and you know, getting to know this person. I think two years. I will not advise going beyond three years. Uh, I think that's really stretching it. And I will also not advise uh, six months, anything less than a year. Because less than it's a year. Too quick. Yeah, too quick. Too soon. Very, very much. So two years, I think, is a good time. Because then you are not rushing and you are also not dragging and dragging feet and postponing. Mm. Like somebody who's scared. You know, some guys are so scared of marriage. <laughs> they, they get into courtship. And, and because they are not purposeful, they don't know where they are taking to, you to. They don't know where they are taking you to. And they are afraid. They are scared to death becoming husbands. <laughs> yeah. They want to be in court. They want to be with a woman. And, and they have all those nice feelings that come with it. <laughs> but they don't want to be committed as to getting married because then the responsibility is too high. <laughs> yeah. So they just want to have this, 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 this hard, this hard thing. They want their hearts to be making somersaults all the time. Their heart every time is. <laughs> <laughs> but I think even for the woman, because you're like, do you trust this person or I'm going to be a punch box for somebody? You know, it's yes. a lot of factors. And, and, and talking about boundaries, as a woman, you should make it very clear that you are not going to waste your time in some indefinite period of courtship. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yes, you are afraid that the man may leave you, but if the Lord really sends you somebody, how, uh, he will not send you somebody who will come and have no regard to what you have to say. Yeah. You should be able to listen. But more than three years, I'm not going to 
to be mm. kept for mm. five years waiting. When are we getting married? You're even scared of asking when are we getting married? I know a lot of women are scared to death. They, they don't want even to ruffle the feathers. Because if you ask about wedding, it's like the most horrendous question you can ever ask a man. Well, if that's the first thing I'd ask. I don't even think I'll be going those five years. Five years, you're wasting my time mm. for a while. It's a total waste of time. There must be a clear purpose. Why are we getting into this courtship? Mm. Marriage. Then it must be clearly defined. Two years. At the end of the next plan year. Already. Forever. Yes, finish. Plan already. Begin to plan already. I think the one who stay five to ten years is because they're already living the married life without the marriage mm. for the Lord. Mm. For the ones who I are not engaging in those sexual immorality, you, if you keep me for that, you will not even keep me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, are hold, they keep you holding an, a stone. Oh my gosh, no. Empty promises, no. Don't, don't, don't stay in such indefinite period of waiting. Yeah, ladies, don't wait. Don't let somebody keep you there as they are maybe searching for somebody else. They're keeping you pending and then they're like scanning, you know. They just, they don't want to lose you either yeah. and they, they don't want to miss an opportunity. <laughs> so Definitely. they're like keeping you there, no. And, and it's easy to do that when there is no accountability Mm. And when things are being done in secret also. Yeah. That's Doing true. things in secret. Because um, um, you don't want other people to find out so soon. Or maybe Bishop, you know that Bishop has talked about sexual immorality and how that you should try your best not to, uh, you know, get somebody who's a new believer, get into a courtship with a new believer or unbeliever. Okay. And then... Lo and behold, you are in a relationship with an unbeliever. Unbelief. <laughs> 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 that's, that's death. That's just death. An unbeliever. Oh. Darkness and light cannot meet. So. That, that is just pressure. I believe that would just be a lot of pressure upon the believer. We have to trust yeah. the Lord. Blessed people. You should never lower your standards just for the sake of a small little pleasure and then that is going to bring you hell on earth. There's no point. Mm. We, should, we should not allow fear to mm. dictate our decisions. Mm. Oh, I'm afraid. Mm. I'm afraid in this church there's nobody else that can come to me if I don't say yes to him. I'm not saying we should say yes, no to everybody, but you have to Think, yeah. Think, 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 and don't be naive. And take time. Think, think, think. Yeah. If you don't think, uh, and and you are leaving things to chance, you are not doing your homework. You are just waiting for chance to take its course. Let's see how far it goes. Let's but as for the woman, you don't even need to be searching. You just need to seek, continue with your life with the Lord. Mm -hmm. What I say for, to myself is that you don't even need to be, like, I don't even think about marriage. My time is not wasting on thinking about marriage. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, my time is, um, is used in, you know, just doing the will of God. You know, if you keep yourself just thinking about marriage, who it could be, it's like that is going to be preoccupying your time when you're supposed to be using that time to seek the Lord more. Amen. Because in the end, you don't know when the Lord is coming back. Mm -hmm. So your focus is supposed mm -hmm. to be heavenly focused. Indeed. And if the, the man does come, that's when maybe you begin to pray about, you know, that person. Mm -hmm. But don't make, don't let your focus just be on marriage. Mm. It should not be your focal point. Your focal point should be, or just growing more in the Lord. And even for the men, let the Lord guide you, you mm -hmm. know. If you keep thinking, oh, the woman, oh, when am I going to find her? Blah, blah, blah. You're just wasting your time and you're going to reduce your, your focus, uh, you know, on the Lord. Mm -hmm. I, am not, I cannot say, to be honest, I cannot say I, you'll be finding me here praying about my husband to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hardly even pray about husband, you know. My focus is you just want to be in the right standing with the Lord. Do the will of the Lord. 
let let the person find you working you know let the lord make your your cross your ways cross you know Amen. you know instead of just you know thinking about it let it consume your thoughts because it can take so much out of you you know mm -hmm. um if mm -hmm. you just think about relationship 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 it will just take too much from you and that time is supposed to be really about the lord it takes a lot it takes a lot of uh, emotion and spiritual investment too mm. and because if you grow in the lord even a lot of things will be clear to you you know you won't even be mm. having to pray so much about a relationship because when the person that does cross your path even the lord is the one who's going to be alert in you she's the one <laughs> you know so you have not really wasted so much time in almost looking at the girls and kind of trying to assume could she be the one could he be the one maybe maybe you know yeah. and if those kind of thoughts just come just you know shut them down and just keep your focus definitely if we go by the example of like isaac you know um he was like 40 when rebecca was brought yeah so you know the lord just causes your paths to cross you know because obviously for us you know we nobody's going to go and bring somebody to you but i know the lord just makes the the cross cross or oh, crossroads we just pass you know lord makes things easy when you yeah. when you have a habit of prayer if you meet somebody somebody that world unbelievers can easily fall for mm. you as a person of prayer the lord will protect you will keep mm. you from lasting after people mm. it will keep you from uh, what's the word uh, being caught up in infatuation over people that are just waste waste time wasters yeah yeah uh, so and the lord gives you discipline because yeah. we need a lot of discipline in, in this uh, journey and you will not find yourself wasting your time on the wrong stuff yeah so with the, nothing can ever substitute that prayer prayer we sound like uh Broken records. Broken records. Prayer, 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 prayer. Bishop, can you help me? Pastor, can you help me? <laughs> prayer yeah, but, and fasting. Not, but don't make it like, don't, let it not be the focal point of every time it's just prayer about husband, prayer about wife, you know? Mm -hmm. That cannot be, you, you know, your focal point all the time, you know? Even the Lord will be wondering, hey, is this person, you know, like the one... All the time it's just, I want, I want, I want this person, you know. But you say, the Lord says, seek first the kingdom of God and all his, and his righteousness and all these other things. So that's actually how the Lord works. Once you seek him, all these things will just fall into place at the proper time. So don't be praying and it's all focal about husband, 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 or wife, wife 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 you know that's why sometimes we get diverted you know if that's all you are praying about mm -hmm. so even as you seek advice let it not be the one consuming your time my husband the, the, definitely we, we need to grow spiritually yeah uh, it's now to be sure to be sure uh, scripture says pray and keep on praying mm -hmm. seek and keep on seeking knock mm -hmm. and keep on knocking and uh as, as it has to do with your future, your marriage, your future mm -hmm. husband, your future wife. If you don't pray, if you don't spend whatever amount of time in prayer for your marriage, you cannot leave that up to somebody else. Nobody can, can do that for you. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Nobody can, can, will take one year of prayer to just pray for you. Maybe your sp spiritual leaders. Yeah? Our spiritual leaders, when they remember us in their prayers. But your future, number one, uh, 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 is in your hands in the sense that you must be concerned about where you're going, where you want to go uh, and, and to seek the Lord's leadership and mm. the Lord's guidance. Uh, as I like to say, marriage unlike uh, our jobs mm. it is one of, the, one, of this, one of the things that we don't need a qualification, a special qualification really to get married. Mm. Anybody from anywhere can get married. Yeah. And, and it's such a tragedy 
that whereas we spend years preparing to become doctors, years to prepare to become engineers, marriage, people enter marriage just after a few months, after a few years. <laughs> and, and they don't spend time to prepare themselves uh, very well. Mm -hmm. And so we need to seriously take responsibility and take um, um, and, and take responsibility for our future, for our future marriages and pray. Pray for ourselves, pray for our future husband, pray for our future children. You know, um, why? Because you never know what's coming. You never know what's coming. You know, re most recently, I began to remember prayers I used to make when I was in high school. And when I used to pray for my future wife, mm -hmm. I used to pray in high school. Why, why did I begin to remember these prayers? It's because uh, two years ago, my wife and I almost died in a car accident. And when we were driving together from uh, Swakop to Vintuk, and a few years before that, I almost died from another car um, accident in Moscow, the car bumped me <clears throat> and in a cold winter morning <laughs> on, the, on the road, really, the car was accelerating and it hit me. And I survived really with just minor scratches. I look back at the prayers that I used to make back then. And then I look, then I examine how, how the Lord has been protecting me and helping me in my marriage. And I begin to thank God that I had spent time to pray back then. I was in high school. I, didn't, I was not in any relationship at all. But I remember we, used, we would pray. You know, let's pray for our future families. Because you never know what is in the future. Yeah? You, you are praying into your future. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. And those that love it, they eat the fruit thereof. And so you are making a lot of investment. Of course, we hear the teaching of the Lord about uh, fasting and how fasting is an investment. And so you need, as you, as you pray for your future, you are investing in, in ways you cannot imagine right now. And how the Lord is going to protect you and keep you from the wrong people or even protect your life in your marriage. So uh, it's absolutely necessary uh, that we spend sufficient time in prayer, really. Um, now we have to remember that God, marriage is God's plan. Not the devil's plan. It's not our own plan. Marriage is God's plan. And, and he wants us to do it right. Amen. He wants us to do marriage the right way, according to his way. So we need to seek his will and his way and his leadership. Amen. I think we have handled this topic in, uh, in very clear. Uh, I don't know if there is any question that is left from this. The next topic, then we can discuss it next time. The one on uh, Mama Bishop has just joined us. Um, she's with a baby in another room there. <laughs> uh, I, I mentioned that because we are about to leave just soon after she joined. Ah. <laughs> <Aww>. Yes. <laughs> um, but but she was. So so we have handled three topics so far. Uh, but let me go back to this question that was asked by somebody. 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 Somebody said, how to overcome youthful challenges. Okay. In this last few, let's say 15 minutes, in the next 15 minutes, Sister Meke asked, how to overcome youthful challenges? Okay, of course, the one in everybody's mind. What's the other one? What other challenges? <laughs> oh my gosh, we, we we sound as if we left that time ages ago. Um, we are just, we're still in our youthful stage, but. Uh-huh, let me say uh, this. I like to call it peer influence. Some people call it peer pressure. Mm. I, I, I call it peer influence because nobody can um, make you do anything. Yeah? 
Yeah. Uh, when somebody keeps telling you something, keeps uh, saying something to you that makes you do something, or somebody does something that inf- that, that that leads you to do something, that's just influence. Mm. Uh, pressure, uh, probably you can call it peer pressure, but it, I think influence is more appropriate because nobody is pushing you really and say, go ahead and do this. Sometimes they do. <laughs> yeah, they do. Sometimes especially, they, use, they do pressure you. Especially when you cannot stand for yourself. Yeah. That's you have to know the role of you as a born again Christian. Yeah. You have to set boundaries. Because um, mm-hmm. I know, okay, in terms of when I was still in high school, uh-huh. um, I remember at that, when you're in high school, you want friends, mm-hmm. you know? You want, you sometimes you want to be part of a group, you know, mm. and um, and the, the people, you, you always have to find people who have the same values, mm-hmm. especially outside school, because mm. sometimes in school, um, people most, okay, maybe from here, because I grew up here, most people are not born again in school, mm-hmm. you know? So you, you have to make sure that you surround yourself like in your personal life, mm-hmm. that you have people who share the same value yeah. and that encourage you to grow in the Lord, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and the other one, like the people you have as friends in school, mm-hmm. um, you have to stand your ground, you know? Some- <laughs> some of the things that they may suggest for you to do yeah, because they, they will challenge you sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. and especially when you're just in high school, you are ignorant about some things. You are naive. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. in so many things because you're still growing, you're still learning. Mm-hmm. So they would invite you to like little birthday parties mm-hmm. or things like this. And then you have to learn to reject those kind of invites. Yeah. because those um those little gatherings are those the ones which actually put pressure on you to to <clears throat> compromise in your salvation yes you know because it will feel like it's normal you know mm-hmm. that's where you find people try out a bit of alcohol mm-hmm. it's not so bad you know mm. you know this one base doesn't even have that much alcohol <laughs> look it's like zero percent, but it's mm. is an alcohol still, you know. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is they, you know, they kind of play it down because you are, they, they, they you know, they know that you are a Christian, mm-hmm. so they'll be like, oh, this is not so. It is not so bad, you know. Mm-hmm. They just know you have to just know how to stand your ground. Amen. Um, yes. Need to know how to say no. Yeah. Need to know how to say yes when it's necessary. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Because the the talking about bullying or let's say yeah, uh, the peer influence. Uh, sometimes when you need to say yes, they there's this influence to say no. When you need to say no, there is the sort of influence to say yes. So you need to know when and how to say yes and no. To let your no be no, let your yes be yes. Mm. <laughs> and, and to be able to have, to let your yes be yes and your no be no, you need to know who you are, your identity. Identity crisis, eh? But that's when you're actually beginning to know yourself, you know, while yes. you're in high school. Yeah. Mm. You need to be able to Get a good grasp, a good grasp, grab. What is the word now? Grasp. Grasp. <laughs> <laughs> you need to have a good grasp mm. on who you are as a child of God, as mm. a Christian, mm. as a born again Christian. If you don't know who you are, then it will be very easy yeah. uh, to be influenced yeah. into wearing the mini skirts, uh, the, 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 what? the makeups the to to participate in all these contest contests of mrs mrs what mrs what 
um, and and all such and all such uh, ungodly things. Mm. So you, at the at the center of overcoming youthful challenges is to know who you are as a child mm. of God. Who am I? Mm. Yeah. And what does God say about me? Mm. What does God's word say about the path that I need to work on, to walk on? Yeah. What is that purpose that I need to hold on to? What is that hope to which I am called by God? So that when the enemy comes trying to bully me or trying to make fun of me, because they, they, they sometimes make fun of Christians. Yeah? They will call you pastor, they will call you whatever. As a, as a child of God in high school, they will call you names to, disc- to, 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 to discourage you. They will say things about your identity as a Christian, say pastor or bishop or prophet. I don't know if they call others prophets, but maybe they will call you such names to demean you <laughs> uh, and, and to make you feel ashamed of being a Christian. You need to be confident in that. Yes, I'm a Christian and I'm not ashamed of it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we should we should not seek to want to be accepted. Now, of course, I know it's easier said than done. It is easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> Wanting to be accepted is a big thing. I uh, uh, I I suffered from that too. I could say back in high school. I think uh, most people suffer with that. In you know, and and you want to fit in. You want to do things that other people are doing so that. Uh, you can also receive some accolade, you know, <laughs> so that people can look at you as a normal person or as the most handsome guy around or whatever. But uh, we have to, again, come back to our identity crisis. When you know who you are, you don't seek validation in other people. Yeah. You stop seeking validation in, among your peers. And there are so many things young people do. Oh man, the, the youth can be so mean. Mm. I dealt with them, man. You know, being like the only black person and then being like a Christian, yeah. and they thought they could joke with me. Mm-mm. It didn't work. <laughs> you need to put your feet on the ground. Oh, I did. I I remember when I I was just new in the school, and um. Um, you know, as a kid, we used to still go to the movies and we didn't even have mobile phones because they had not been really, I think at that point, they were not out yet. The days of so, telephones. So they said, okay, we will, um, this particular group of girls, they were like, oh, we'll, we'll call you and then we'll go to the movies on Saturday. So I gave them my mom's number so that they can tell my mom and then um, we can go. So they never called and then they tried to make fun of me, like when we went back to school on Monday. Mm. And then they were like, oh, did you go? And I was like, oh, you know, you know what you are doing. Mm. And, um, you know, they like, I just stood up to her. She thought I was going to be like, oh, and um, yeah. I was like, obviously, you know what you're doing. Obviously, I didn't go. Yeah. Um, and then after that time, oh, my gosh, did they not try? genuinely this time to ask me come and play with us i was like i will not waste my time but thank you for the offer like they tried Mm. even until we finished high school and we graduated Mm. that group of friends they tried even trying to come and tell me oh you did so well in that i was like thank you I i literally just quashed them you know when you're just new in school and you're just trying to to know people yeah hmm. i was like played once you're not playing me twice finished we are done <laughs> Kaput. finish you just now even in school you have to just choose who your friends are going to be you know definitely um use your right and, choose the right company and actually from that they respect you they have no choice and you, you have know? to learn how to to say no and also to be confident in your being a Christian. Yep. When you say I'm going to church, I'm going to church. You know, especially if you're in the hostel and you're with your friends and they want to, you to do certain things. Oh, here we don't really have boarding schools. Ah, uh, that's like enough. Africa. So, Africa. so ours is day school. <laughs> Majority of the schools are day school. Uh huh. So you need to 
uh, you have confidence in your Christianity and say, yeah. I'm a Christian, I don't do A, B, C, D. Yeah. Yeah. Finish. I don't care how much you make fun of it. Yep. But that's what it is. And, and in the long run, <laughs> the benefits are yours because they respect you. Yeah. They will, you know. They will know not to not to play with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like back away. <laughs> and rather than you begging them, they will end up begging you. In fact, mm. not that we should want people to beg us, but <laughs> <laughs> but they will do it if you stand your ground. Stand your ground. Loneliness. Uh, yeah. What is it that leads to loneliness? You've been uh, left alone. You don't mm -hmm. feel like you're part of a group. You're not fitting um, in well. Uh, and I think that's where you kind of have to bring scriptures that empower you. Definitely. And yeah. uh, and then you can also pray for the Lord to 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 help you make friends with somebody who's going to help you. You know. Well, thinking about my days in high school, <laughs> there was a time. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when it's lunch break not lunch break but break time at school mm -hmm. my best friend was my bible I took my small Gideon bible the new testament with psalm and proverbs and I'll literally read <laughs> my bible throughout the whole break time <laughs> and, until I was shocked I was shocked when the break time was over I was like, oh, break time is already over because I was so consumed in reading my Bible. I didn't care about who came to keep me company and who didn't. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. that, and that really helped me a lot. And that was really the time period when I was transitioning. When I was new to this school, mm. fresh from primary school, you, 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 you want to fit in, you want people to accept you indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, but then with time, then... I began to, I became born again. And then I began to read the Bible. And, and it really just helped me so much. Uh, and protected me from so many things. While my friends were busy drinking in the, uh, drinking and getting drunk. And coming back to the hostel drunk. I was enjoying my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> enjoying my sleep and enjoying the word of God. Mm. So, uh, as, as Christians... Just know that God must be your, your best companion. Seek God's companionship. Mm. You know, in, when, when you are young, seek God's companionship because that's where you begin to build the foundation. Also. You build mm. the foundation of um, focusing your eyes on the Lord and seeking the Lord when you are so young, when you're in high school, whatever, university. When you focus on the Lord in that way, then um, it will not, it will be so easy. You won't feel really lonely. Mm. You know, I know I didn't grow up with my, my parents, really. I know they passed away. When I was in high my mom passed away when I was in high school. But looking back, I don't feel like I was lonely. I don't feel like I was... Uh, I don't feel that uh, experience that some orphans feel, yeah? Like, oh, I'm so orphaned. My parents are, are, are dead. And, and you can really see that I'm an orphan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and oh, nobody's supporting me financially. Oh, nobody's helping me in this way. Mm. When, when, when you seek the Lord, all these things will be, will really be nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> will be nothing. Uh, and all your challenges that you will face beyond what we are discussing here, the real challenges when they come, <laughs> when the big challenges come, uh, it will be so easy to overcome. Mm. When you establish your identity, establish a close relationship with the Lord, you establish a, 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 um, a good uh, knowledge of the word of God to, uh, to, to establish your understanding and to give you wisdom. You draw on the word of God for wisdom, everything. But nobody is going to shake you. Be it uh, sexual sin, peer influence, uh, bullies. Uh, yeah. no, nobody will shake you. Yeah. Nobody will shake you. The Lord has helped me. From, from the days of high school, looking back, I'm like, thank you, Lord. There is no better course to follow. Mm -hmm. yeah, there is no better course to follow than the Lord Jesus. Even in university, when you have so many, you know, attractions, you have some, some, 
some Christians, they want to be popular in university. They want to go into some band to sing in some, you know, to sing and be famous on TV. And, and, and. No. Yeah. I think uh, I think bullying is so common, and it's in um, at our time because I remember one time I was traveling from the north in a bus to Gorris Bay, and uh, there was these two guys in the bus. Every time the bus stops, they are always calling me, "Hello, church! Hello, church! Hello, church!" <laughs> I don't know what was going on because I think it's because they never maybe seen somebody traveling with long skates or something. <laughs> They were like they were just going on until we reached Swakop. Every time the bus stops, they are saying hello, church, hello, church. <laughs> I, I like taking advantage of such people. When somebody when somebody comes out like that, that that's a good opportunity. If they, if if anybody does that again, that's an opportunity to open your mouth and preach. <laughs> because they have opened their mouth to bully you, then that means they are ready to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> so you take authority they are trying to intimidate you isn't it they're trying to intimidate you to make you feel timid to make you feel defeated so you take that opportunity and maybe just ask them are you born again or whatever hmm? are you aware that uh, the messiah is coming whatever you're going to say so it's a very powerful opportunity it is better sometimes it's better doing that than than approaching a stranger complete stranger <laughs> here i think they'll call you different names they won't even say hello church <laughs> some, some some will mistaken you for being a muslim <laughs> no no i mean the vulgar names they can call you if really they, they feel um what's it called if they feel threatened or they just feel like they want to bully you you know yeah. they're not going to be calling you some ni nice you know it's like the vulgar languages that you continually hear on the films yeah we cannot even repeat those words no my mouth is not <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah i am i think for africa at least they're more open to christianity even if they might bully somebody at least mm -hmm. here it's a different um okay not that they do it so often because of your rights <laughs> amen antidote to youthful challenge now we have the answer in this ministry let us pursue righteousness and holiness mm. uh, you pursue the lord in righteousness and holiness all these things all these things will mean nothing they the lord will no empower you yeah they will have no effect on you and even you though sometimes they might you know because you are still in the flesh so sometimes some things people say might hurt you but that's when you you run and cry to the Lord to empower you Amen. to deal with them. Very true. All right. I think we have achieved our objective then today. We've, yes. we've managed to wrestle with the four topics and we wrestled. Uh, Mama Bishop was saying to me that we may end up at six hours. I thought we'll <laughs> end up at four hours. And lo and behold, we are already at six hours. So we need to end it here. Did you discuss the property and whatever? The properties and? No, we didn't. Next meeting? Properties yeah. and marriage, next meeting. Yeah. But um, let's see. Now, I know we didn't tell somebody exactly um, how the Lord is going to speak to you when somebody comes seeking for a hand in marriage, but... We already said there's other dreams things you that can get. Um, yes. Scripture. Yes, you did. You said that, Sister Catherine. The Lord may speak in a dream. He may use a scripture. He may speak through your pastor. He may speak through a friend. He may, you know, give you a vision. He may confirm a word. Yeah. So there are different ways, uh, and the principles we lay down will really help you to identify any red flags. Any red flag? Yeah. Okay. And we also said that um, we talked about family planning. I hope that is clear to everybody. Yeah. There are there are there is there are information that we don't share here, that we only share in other platforms. When you are in courtship, and you are you are pre preparing for a wedding, 
and children, how they affect marriage, children out of wedlock. We talked about that. Mm. We talked about uh, both sides. When you are mm. the one who has the children, we also talked about when the other person, your partner is the one who has children, and we talked about the dangers of sexual immorality before marriage. Mm. And yeah, we talked about quite a lot today. Yeah. So let we me... trusted everything. Yes. Let me ask two, three people who want to uh, say their last words before I ask somebody to pray. Let's see. Uh, we have been joined by a lot of people that, that I should acknowledge. Uh, Mama Bishop, thank you. Mama Vasya Jacob, thank you. And okay, many other people that uh, I think they are not here anymore. All right. Anybody who wants to have final say, Marjorie? <laughs> Marjorie. <laughs> Please, please. I yeah. just appreciate you. Whoever I just wants, appreciate whoever everyone who contributed. Don't. I was, I was about to say. Sorry. I will give it back to you. Final remarks. Please don't thank me. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Nobody should thank me. Let's have our final remarks. <laughs> yes, Sister Marjorie. Back to you. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll skip that. Yes. Um, I just, I've learned so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has been lots of information. Yes. Um, so, yeah, let's see. Let's see what the Lord does. But regardless, thanks to everyone who contributed. <laughs> Except the bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to everyone who has uh, Amen. who has been here till this time. Deal. You know. So thanks to the Lord for that. Amen. And I'm so appreciative of the knowledge I've got. So thank you. Hallelujah. And I think it should be a, a homework for everybody. Yeah. That, hmm. that try to identify somebody that you can uh, go to for that uh, guidance yeah? when, when you are ready for marriage or somebody that you can always confide in, especially now for sisters, when a certain brother is trying to knock your door. Uh, <laughs> identify somebody that can help you on that journey. Yes. All right. Thank you, Marjorie. Uh, sorry, I, I cut you short at the beginning. I, I really just forgot to mention it. Um, because I wanted, I wanted, I wanted uh, myself to be to fade out, so that uh, people can have their final say. Yeah, final say. Thank you so much, Marjorie. Amen. And you have stuck for the six long hours. Wow, amazing. <laughs> I have. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing. Yes, Pastor Kevi. Well. I've actually learned in this session, <laughs> mm -hmm. not to say that I've not learned in the other sessions, but um, um, the session on family planning also was enlightening. Yeah. And um, kind of getting to see the different methods and how it affects, even though I know you do not delve deep into it because obviously I'm the nature of this group. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I have really learned that and I, Thank the Lord for this wonderful session. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, it has been great. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the, um, for the notes and for these single sessions. At least we are being empowered or being enlightened for the things we didn't know. It has been a wonderful session. Amen. Atlichna, Asante. That mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Carry you. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Mary Matas Nobis. Do you want to say something? 
Ok. Uh, Sister Meke? Amen. I say thank you to hear all this today. Amen. Amen. It's really marvelous. Amen. Bless it is helpful for the young people. Indeed. Amen. Amen. Uh, Esther Blessing said, the meeting has been very educative and helpful to me. Thanks to everyone, more so our senior bishop. Amen. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, Brother Saki. Or oh, is it Sister Meke? Sister Meke. Amen. Yes. I would like to appreciate the Lord so much for this very wonderful fellowship that we had today. Mm -hmm. I'm learning new, new, new things every day. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to our, our next meeting. Amen. Hallelujah. Wonderful. We are here together, Sister <laughs> Justy. Okay, great. <laughs> Sister Justy? Yes, Brother Senior Bishop. Yes, what do you want to say? I thank the Lord so much. I'm always learning. Amen. That's and I'm always ready to learn. Mm -hmm. And I hope from here we will never make the mistake anymore. We will be praying, we will Hallelujah. be fasting, we will be asking the Lord to guide us. Indeed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Pastor Saki, what about you? Yes, amen. Uh, Blessed Bishop, here by uh, the dangers of sexual immorality before marriage, uh, uh, there's, there's something, there's, I, I just thought of something, entanglement. Mm -hmm. Does that come maybe uh, here by the dangers of sexual immorality before marriage, or does that, can that go um, under um, youthful uh, challenges? What entanglement uh, are you talking about? Week. Which entanglement? Like entanglement in, 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 in cases of, um, I think it actually falls under soul ties, probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like one, one is maybe they decide on one, wanting to go into courtship, but yet they are still attracted or having this entanglement with their previous... Um, they, they have not um, broken off the other relationship. Work. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, besides that, uh, oh, just one question. On the, can, can be, Bishop, please just scroll down to the, to the challenges again. Way, way on the last... There. Yeah. How to overcome youthful challenges. So these ones, since we've noted down the challenges, sexual sin, useful lust, in the next session, are we going to magnify them on how to overcome this? Or is it just going to end here? Uh, <laughs> as I remember somebody said, we should talk about overcoming sexual sin. Sexual sin, peer influence, and all this bullying, Oh, I remember bullying. We discussed it actually in one of uh, the social system. Is it, was it naked? We were saying about the skirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. She was talking about the guys in the car who were calling her. Yeah. What are they calling so some her? of them we actually covered. Yes, we have. The only thing we didn't cover there was probably resistance to the word. Resistance to the word. People who. Mm. But that goes along yeah, with bullying, sort of. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, no, besides that, I'm, I'm happy. Um, There's a fruitful, whoa, way motivating, and I'm, I'm, I'm inspired. I'm motivated. I was taking, though it was being recorded, I was still taking notes in my Amen. notebook. Here because it was very powerful. I knew that this session was going to be very powerful. So, I don't know about <laughs> anybody else. <laughs> For me, I really took out what I needed to take out. Amen. That will really help me in eternity and also in preparation for, for future marriage. Mm. Um, I don't take this for granted. So I took my part. I hope everybody else took their part as well. Amen. Um, with that said, I can't wait for the next session. I just hope it's not going to be three months, uh, three <laughs> weeks again. Can we, I'm going to vote for it. <laughs> Can't it be earlier? 
Um, our boy is growing. Uh, let us see how it goes. Um, our our son is growing. Uh, uh, things are changing, but we'll monitor the situation and see if we if we can move from uh, three weeks to four weeks. No, 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 no. I don't mean that way. I mean, we <laughs> <don't know>, sir. <laughs> Okay, okay, to two weeks, eh? <laughs> yeah, at least. But if you sit in two weeks, then we have to cut the sessions, the time. We do, we do. We go far yeah. because we yeah. go far because of the, uh, uh, we try to make the max, to maximize our time together. Um, yeah, we will have to cut. The and we'll, we'll have to discuss fewer topics if, if we move the, the session closer. Okay. Yeah, so with that, we can discuss all as a group. It's, um, those, that's just my two cents. If a word I've, I've learned from our senior bishop, two cents. So anybody else can add on that and we can discuss as a as all uh, unified, then we come up with what's better, you know. Amen. Amen. Definitely. Uh, we would like to hear other people's input. Martha, Abby, Ash, Jacob. Uh, yes, what do you say? Thank you very much. I'm just concerned about the group. People are very silent in the group. They people are, are silent. Hard. So I think after in this period of three weeks, people should be active in the group, sharing something. Like yes. Did you hear me well? Definitely, you are saying people should uh, <laughs> contribute in the groups, yeah? So that the days run faster. Amen. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, yes, yes, please let us discuss these topics on the group. It's so much to discuss. There's so much we have not covered uh, on the topics that we discussed today. What topic do we want to cover next time? Good question. Let me bring up the other notes. Yes. What topics should we cover next time? Um, okay. Forgiveness. Uh, wait a minute. This is... Okay, guys, what is what is your suggestion? Next topics. Next topic. Anybody with a suggestion? Next topic. We could, since everybody is quiet, we could discuss the five language. Yeah, five languages of apology. Okay. Spiritual, eh? Sorry, five languages of apology. Mm -hmm. mm. Anybody who wants to add to that? That's a big topic, near Bishop. <laughs> it is. I agree. That's all. Does everybody concur? Amen. Yes, amen. All right. How to apologize? Five, five, five languages of apology. Why am I hearing myself in the background? And I'm hearing that, uh, it's, you know, the way the phone is usually connecting. Okay, is it better now? Yeah, go on. Okay. Yes, much better. Wonderful. <laughs> All right, five languages of apology. Esther Blessing says that meeting has been very educative. Okay, can't wait for next meeting. All right. <laughs> um, 
Five languages of apology. Good. Good. And then we talk about how to say I'm sorry. You know, that one is actually such a, it's such a good topic. You know, when you, you realize the importance of apology. Mm -hmm. Yes, we'll discuss them. Definitely. If uh, we discussed, was it on this group, we discussed words of wonder? Was it? No, you? no. We said one of the important words to learn how to say is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we had a list of them. Yes. Please, thank you. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And, and sorry was... Our bishop, our bishop was also present. Yes, it was before the baby. Before the baby. Yes. <laughs> actually, actually, I just remembered. Remember the topic we didn't finish today, that's properties and marriage. We, we'd cover that first. And if we have time left, and then we go to apology. Hey, yes. but if properties and marriage is going to be that long. I'm just, well, no, <laughs> no, it's not. It's property. If you have, buy. <laughs> <laughs> if you it's don't have, you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think when you enter marriage, you should just realize two becoming one. So you should not have this mentality of like, it's mine and mine alone, you know? Yeah. So. We'll handle that next time. Yeah. All right. Good. F language of apology. Awesome. Let me apologize. So in about six weeks. Yeah, in about six <laughs> weeks. <laughs> so no, 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 no. <laughs> next week. <minute. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the third of April is our next April, meeting. Yes. 3rd of April and then the 24th of April. Oh, that's Easter weekend. Really? Yeah. So is it possible? Yes, please. Okay, it's possible. All right. It's possible. Please think of more topics to cover that interest you. So we'll send them on the group. Good. Wonderful. Now I'm going to ask somebody to pray for us. Esther Blessing. Yes, please. Esther Blessing, please pray for us if you don't mind. I don't know if you can hear me well. I can hear you very well. All Wait. Right. Uh -huh, okay. Yes, please. Go ahead. All right. Let us pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, the creator of the universe, we bless your name. We exalt you, Lord. We love you. We say thank you, Lord, for the aid, for the five brought us. Thank you for you began with us till this far, my Father. We say thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Thank you for whatever we've learned, my Lord. I ask you, Jehovah, to sanctify us with your most precious blood and allow your Holy Spirit to continually minister unto us, my Father. Empower us, O oh Lord, and help us to stand firm in you and to use these words, this, 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 all, all that we've learned today, even to prepare and to give you glory at the, end, at the end. Father, we love you and we bless your name. We say receive the glory, receive the honor. Bless our senior bishop, my father. Protect it and every one of us, my Lord, and preserve us, Jehovah, so that at last we may give you glory and that when the rapture happens, we may see your glorious kingdom. Continually be with us, my Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray and believe. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. All right. The Lord bless you all. Amen. Thank you so much for your participation. Enjoy your evenings, your mornings, your afternoons. <laughs> yes. And for me, I'm going to eat something. <laughs> Please, Mama Bishop must greet Sorry? Mama Bishop must greet us, please. Amen. Mama Bishop, <laughs> they're asking for your input. For your, for your, they want to hear your voice. Yes, please. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Mama Bishop. <laughs> Amen, amen. It's good to see your smiling faces of those I can see. <laughs> <laughs>
Most of you I can't see. But <laughs> you all, I'm sorry I missed the session. I was busy with some visitors and with baby today. Oh, it's fine. We understand. As long as we hear, we hear, we hear your voice, it's fine. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, thank you so much. The Lord bless you all. Amen. 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 Asante. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank Bye. you. Thank Amen. You. Bye. Thank you. God bless you in Dublin and to Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you again. Bye bye. Bye bye. God bless you.